So think of them in different ways. There's all sorts you can do with these. Um, and then you've got these, um, the houses. You do a house layout as well, so you can have your house here. And have your little boy peeking out. It's really nice, these, with the little boys peeking out from, from the door of the house. You can put some trees around. Maybe not there. So some work, some don't. You just... <laughs> yeah, just carry on playing. Carry on playing. Yeah. Can I show you a little tag that um, Heather Mitchell made? Uh, as well from the design team. So this is using um, the, the Butterfly House uh, set. Also Quattro Fiori being used as the stencil there in the background. And she's also used Little Love. Oh, is that the, is Little that the background the, No, that's here? the, I think that'll be, hmm, don't know what that is. She's used, it might be in the background. It's very sweet. It's, it's made of MDF, actually. It's really, really cool. Let me show you some others while we're here as well, because then I, I would have shown you pretty much everything. Love this one by Kelly. Yeah, that's um, fabulous. That stenciling in the background really gives you that feel of maybe how a, how a city walls used yeah. to work. It's got that it's nod really nice. to so it. I think that's it? probably alcohol ink on a, on a jelly plate. It's Kelly's um, into that sort of thing. So fabulous. Lovely Gorgeous. Effect. Now, you've got, and I forgot to mention, we forgot to mention that in uh, one of the stamp sets, in the Peekaboo stamp set, I think, is it? You've got the word cuckoo, and cuckoo, you might be looking at yeah. that and thinking, what does that mean? Because uh, we've done French lessons already in this hour, <laughs> and, and that means basically hello, doesn't it? Yeah, in, hi, yeah, in it's French. Kind of, it's kind like of, a greeting, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's an like, informal cuckoo. greeting. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not quite what it means here, because you, you would only say that word for different reasons, you wouldn't do, you, here? Yeah. Um, that's really, really lovely. By, uh, oh, so that's that's the one. Joe, that was Joe, actually, yeah. So she's put three sets of wings on the girl there as oh, well. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that's quite cool, isn't it? That yeah. looks like they might wrap around her yeah, as a, a gorgeous, yeah. glamorous shrug. Uh, here's one from Joe Elliott here using that uh, number wall, isn't it? So that's it? the number the wall, but also the, yeah. the tree is from Bipasha. So, oh, yeah. Um, so she's used the, the tree from Bipasha. So With a cheeky peekaboo. Yeah, yeah. And I love this because, again, you know how we sent. Trois Fleur into space. I must find that sample again because that's a nice one to round off with actually. Um, it's gorgeous but this has that same kind of um, starry night feel about it doesn't it? It's really really gorgeous. Let me find that sample again. Watch me not be able to find it now. <laughs> it's definitely here somewhere. Hang on, please hold. Where are we stockwise on the one day special now? Let's check in um, on that shall we? Uh, we're at limited stock, so uh, well done everyone. You now have just over one actual hour. Obviously this is the last live... Uh, here they are! Trois Fleurs in space, I found it. Debbie Martin, I love that. I think it's really, really cool. Don't Brilliant. you? Yeah, fantastic. Janet, thank you so much again you. Uh, for your wonderful talent and uh, your time as well. Oh, thank you. And we're going to see you again see you on Friday <laughs> on Friday night at six o'clock. Friday night at six o'clock for a new one day special. A new one day special. Janet Klein stamps. Yeah. Any clues you want to oh, give us? Oh, I'm not surprising though. You okay, that's good. No, that's good. No, that's good. We just we just leave it <laughs> hanging there in the air. That's quite good. An air of mystery. Yeah. So could I could I just say thank you to everyone? Um, I, you will absolutely love the stamps when you get them home. But thank you for supporting All and Create. Thank you from Abs, I'm sure. Thank you from Janet. Um, and go to the All and Create Fanatics page and you will find loads and loads of inspiration on there um, once you get your stamps. There'll be loads of samples and things on there as well. Yeah, because the, uh, the design team share their we samples. We do, we all share, but also the, the, the uh, customers share. It's, it's open for everybody to be able to share their, their work. So. so it's All and Create Fanatics. Fanatics. Remember, yep. there's two A's and two L's in yes. All. Because sometimes you go, oh, All A-L-L, -L, and you're like, Oh, nothing's coming up. But it's A-A-L-L. -L. I know. It's all on the website. It's explained how the company name came about. It's a very interesting story, actually, if you've got time to go and have a look at it. Uh, 629935 is your item number. That's the final time I'm going to say that to you today. Um, and that will expire in an hour's time. So it will revert back to its regular price in an hour's time uh, when we start a brand new one day special. And that's all about dressmaking in an hour. So you must be here. Janet, thank you. Thank you very and much. Thank you. Make sure you check out your baskets. So, embroidery next with the Little House of Victoria. I've never seen that before. I shall be avidly watching. And then I'll be back with a brand new one day special with Rosella with the adjuster form for dressmaking at six.
Hi, my name's Barbara Gray from Clarity Stamp. And uh, how did I get here? Well, when my children, Grace and Mark, were born, I left the corporate world and I took up crafting full time. If you like my style and you like what I do, then please join me, Barbara Gray. Hi, I'm Gina Barrett from Gina B Silkworks. We're a family company specializing in traditional crafts for the modern maker. I'm looking forward to being able to take time and demonstrate some of these techniques and share new ideas. I hope you'll be able to tune in to the Gina B Silkworks shows. Hi, I'm Ali Reeve. I'm from the company Stamps Away. Stamps Away is a family-run company with my husband and I. We create all things crafty, especially with a passion for mixed media. So I hope you won't miss the shows with Stamps Away. Hi, I'm Katrina from Rowan Dean. We're a small family business that design embroidery kits. Embroidery has always been my passion and I'd love to show you how to do some of the stitches and some of the kits. We're based in Derbyshire and I'm really inspired by the landscape and flora of Derbyshire and I think other people will be too. Our kits are really easy and I hope they inspire you to have a go at stitching. great time. Everybody's been really friendly and really good. We've met loads of people all around the country who watch and find it really inspiring. Don't forget to join me on my own Dean shows. Hello there and welcome back. Well, we're in for a treat this hour. Well, I certainly am, because it's the first time that I've worked with our guest for this hour, and it's the lovely Victoria, and we are talking about beautiful embroidery. It's the first time that we've had you in the studio here as well. Yes, I'm very excited to be here. Um, yes. Now, obviously, you have done shows before, but they've always been via Skype. Via Skype, yes. So if anybody's not caught any of your shows, and obviously it's the first time I'm working with you as well, tell me a little bit about um, yourself and how you come to be here today. Yeah, sure. Well, I sort of came from a background of paint and paper crafting. Okay. So this is quite a new thing for me. Um, and I did a degree about 10, 11 years ago. I didn't do anything for a while. Okay. So there was years where I didn't produce anything, which is quite strange to think that now. Um, but then I went to do a night evening class in okay. textiles. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and I was hoping it would kickstart me to do things. Yes. And boy, did it, because <laughs> I've not stopped. Well, I have to say, I mean, you've got a real talent for this, some beautiful oh, kits you. that you've brought to us. And I did, I did a master's degree, and oh. then I did embroidery all the way through the master's degree. So, oh, yeah, okay. a bit different. Ooh, I yeah. love it. So fabulous teacher mm. there as well. Now, do jump onto the website and have a little look. We've got loads that we can share with you. So there's all sorts of different kits there. You'll see that there's additional elements that you can add in to kind of further extend. Um, we've got also the opportunity for you not only to work with some fabulous uh, walls, but also if you want to go down the DMC route, then we have got the opportunity for you to do that with the kits as well. Now, there's some kits there that we have seen previously some fabulous templates as you can see as well some wonderful reviews so if you have been involved and you have purchased any of the little house of victoria kits previously and you've stitched out your piece and i'd love to see what you've created you know how you can get in touch studio at the and this is something that you work with very well because we've got some fabulous online classes that you're going to be doing as well and yes. lovely tina's been involved with yes. tina barnett she has she's brilliant at stitching yeah and i've run past some of the wool kits past her as well and she's done them and like them and yeah i've seen her and stuff on social media it, it's amazing it's good to have that tick yeah. you know yeah Very she liked so. it yeah and it was brilliant what she did i love it and i know we've got some pictures from tina that they're sharing with everybody oh, a little bit later that's, on nice. well, so. that's good <laughs> so i'm gonna kick things off and show you some of the kits that we've got so we've got the details up on the screen straight away and this is a beautiful piece now within these you're going to have all the elements for you to create so you can see you've got your fabulous um piece there with your template on there 
incredible walls as well. This is so soft. Yeah, they're rowan walls oh. um, and they're all pure. There's no man-made um, fibres in there. So we've got mohair wool. The one you've got hold of is alpaca. Beautiful. And the brown one is mohair and silk. And it feels... Oh, so soft. When you see it, you think, Oh, that's too fluffy to stitch with, but it actually creates a beautiful padded surface. And it does, and that's the beauty of this one. And it, you were talking about your experience of actually stitching with walls. It was just an experiment to start yeah. with. And it was quite recently. And oh. I love my DMC threads, and I just thought, I'm going to try this. And then once I've tried it, I couldn't untry it. <laughs> it <was there. laughs> and I had to do these kits. I had to, you know, to show beautiful. people. The um, seed was sown, so it, to speak. It was, yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, of course, within this one, uh, you're going to get your hoop with this one as well. Six-inch hoop. It's Elbacy. Um, okay. It's a good, strong um, beechwood hoop. And, yes, and you get the needle with it as well, which is John James, Cruel Embroidery Needle. Fabulous. Redditch-based company. So, uh, yes. yeah, I can sing their yes. praises. <laughs> and it's quite a big, cruel needle, but... If you're stitching with wool, it needs, and I'll show you how to thread it in a bit as I well. Love it. So. Now, of course, you're going to get all your um, information that you need with regards to, obviously, your threads all included within this one. Um, and you've got your online workshop. So how do we get involved with the workshops? Well, how it's worked in the past is I put a little letter in with your pack, and it's got my email address on. And then um, if you just email me as to which kit you've bought, which class you'd like, and I'll fit in with, with dates and things. Oh, okay, so um, you're pretty flexible with regards to that. No yes. structured dates that it's got to be on such and such a date and no, such and such a time not at all i always oh. fit in and i try to get people that are you know sort of conveniently uh, available right, together I do. Yeah, um, yeah so there you go if you fancy getting involved with the first kit then the details are on your screen it's a similar sort of idea with the other kits as well so with regards to your classes and your workshops um, you will have that little note included within your kit and then just contact victoria and she'll organize that for you as well but if you're wanting your first kit 904374 now incidentally these particular kits that we're sharing with you are exclusive to us for the next seven days you can't get them anywhere else so if you'd like to get involved then the details are there on your screen just 21 pounds and 99 pence will enable you to create the most incredible piece as you can see there and that one is called constance now the next one we've got for you is ruby i love the names is there kind of a structure yeah. or they're just names that you like it's names from my family so constance oh. was my nana so she was Connie oh, for sure. But, oh, lovely. And I just love it. It's such an, a nice sort of vintage old fashioned name. And Definitely. I don't think she liked it actually, but oh, I, I do. Turn this one around because um, I get excited. And, and this one's Ruby. Ruby is um, my cousin's granddaughter. Oh, yeah. It's and a I don't name. think she knows I've done this. Oh, <laughs> surprise, Ruby. <laughs> and she's this recently got good. into stitching when oh, she's seen she? me do it. Yeah, so I thought that's. that's oh, nice. that's. Oh, she's yeah. going to be thrilled to bits. Yeah, absolutely. Now this one again, beautiful wools with this one, and we can call them wools because they're one hundred percent wool. What we've got within they're one hundred percent well. wool. Yes, they've all got different uh, colours in there, and some have got um, uh, you know the finer wool in there, yes, and some haven't. Yeah. But it's just what suited the design as I was designing it. But they're all pure wools, and they're all rowan. Beautiful. So I wanted to keep that quality. You know, usually DMC threads are in the packs, but yes. I thought I wanted to keep that quality there. Now, if you do like your yeah. DMC threads, then don't worry. We'll be showing you ways that you can actually stitch these out using DMC threads in a little while. But the template, there's a good size piece that you've got here. It's really generous, actually. It's um, A4 in size. It's, well, it's bigger than A4 in size, so I thought it'd be easy to put in a frame okay. because I very much see these in somebody's home in a frame or yes. as a gift. There's room to stitch initials on there That's and things nice like idea, that. That's a nice idea, the personalisation yeah. idea. Yeah. Um, so, of course, you've got your fabulous fabric there. Of course, you're going to get your cool needle included with that one and your little hoop. And, of course, the final project that you're going to be creating is this beautiful piece, as you can see here. And, again, you're going to get your tuition if you want to get involved with that all you need to do is contact Victoria when you get your pack through you'll have all of the contact details there and she will get you involved with your class and she's a fabulous teacher as well so you'll learn everything that you need to know during that session it'll be about three hours long so a really good session good morning or afternoon I think you'll find it a, a nice way to spend the day isn't it? so the next one that we've got for you that one was Ruby 063619 but the next one we've got for you these work so well together you could actually get a series of these together really couldn't you now this one of course course you've got that gorgeous looking with the kind of pastel tones with this one this one's called saffron so who's saffron saffron's my cousin's daughter oh she's lovely yeah beautiful 
Beautiful names. They're gorgeous, aren't they? they are, I just had to. Very lucky that you've got such pretty names to go with these wonderful kits. Could have been very interesting otherwise. Now these pieces, I suppose with them you could have them portrait or landscape, depending on how you want to work with them. Definitely, yes. Definitely. Gorgeous. And I love these lovely kind of almost vintage tones with these, very soft tones. I think I've gone for vintage all the way through. Yeah. yeah. yeah so I'm a big well. fan of vintage. It never goes out of fashion. It, oh, no, it's it, so yeah. true. And it's beautiful, beautiful way to actually use those different walls again and again. They're just gorgeous. They're so soft. And it's the fluffiness. We were having a chat before the show and you were saying that that fluffiness is very forgiving when it comes to stitching. Yes, it is. And it's brilliant for beginners. You'll really get your confidence up stitching with this. Um, it, it was difficult to go back to threads. <laughs> and I imagine because it's quite a full um, way of stitching, as in like a, a full thread, that you get kind of instant gratification with it, especially if you're doing like a, yes. a fill it, filling in an area. Yes. Definitely, they're brilliant for filling in. Some of the, the thicker ones are, are sort of the satin stitch filler in us, <laughs> if, you, if you might call it that. And a lovely fabric to work with as well. Tell me about the fabric that we're stitching onto. That's linen fabric. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's about 220 GSM weight, so mm -hmm. it's a good sturdy weight to take the wools and um, it, they have a lovely thickness to them once they're stitched. It's got, yeah, it's got a really good feel yeah. to it. It doesn't feel flimsy at all. No, it's not. No, I didn't want it to pull when you put wool through it. Gorgeous designs. These all work so well together. So incidentally, if you do want to go for multiples, you can do. And of course, the beauty of Flexi Order means you can spread the cost at the same time. So that particular kit, if you want in that one, is saffron. Of course, saffron is going to create a beautiful dusky pink and dusky blue version of this wonderful piece that we've got here. We have got more of those panels available for you. You've probably been keeping an eye on your screen and notice the details changing. So if you do want more of those panels or you want to work with your DMC threads, then you can get can get the pan, um, panels by themselves we've got some fabulous bundles of dmc threads which i'll tell you about in a few moments but i need to tell you about the last piece that we've got here again another gorgeous design mm -hmm. and again so much detail with these now this one and i love the name of this one she lovely does lovely dove <laughs> <laughs> yeah that Cute. one's come from um, a family of birds that we have in our garden <laughs> okay. that's where the inspiration came from Beautiful. And again, you can see all those different stitches coming together um, to create that gorgeous design. And the stitches, we're learning a, a whole range of different stitches with these. There are a lot of different stitches in here. I've put videos on my website of each oh. individual stitch, and they're very short because that's how I learned them. Okay. So I thought they're all in one place. It's easy. You've got your kit in front of you. You can because it might be not overwhelming, but there are a lot of stitches, but mm -hmm. they are simple to do, especially with wool. So it. it's achievable. <laughs> and we're going to be learning some of those stitches mm. in the demonstration as well. So if you fancy your a lovely dove, um, this one, again, pinky tones, lovely berry tones in here. And again, so, so soft, those fabulous walls that you've got. And again, you've got your hoop there. So the minute this arrives, all we really need is a pair of scissors. And away you go. Yeah. Love it. Um, five on five, eight nine zero. So there you go. All four of those brand new kits that we're sharing with you, and again, all stitched with wool. But as I mentioned, we have got the ability for you to work with your DMC threads in a few moments. Now these are actually a couple of other kits that we've got. This time working with your DMC threads, but this time you've actually got a panel that you're going to be uh, well, it's already printed and stitched. Two different options. Now is this your gorgeous artwork? It is. Yes. <gasps> Beautiful. I've, I've gone back to painting with this for the first time in a long time and I really enjoyed it and I thought it'd be really nice to combine the two. Very so much. that's that. an acrylic painting and I in love fact, blossom. It's even better if I hold it the right way up. It look perfect <laughs> to me. It could go either way. <laughs> well to be honest, that is yeah. true. You could do because it yeah. is very forgiving. I kind of went with the, the text at the bottom. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> very pretty. I love that kind of mottled backdrop that you've got with that. Very forgiving as well. Nice look. Yeah and that's actually got a diamante grand metallic thread in the pack Ooh, and gorgeous. that's amazing um, to sew with it's not rough it's coated DMC oh. have coated it so I've it's not come across that before it's mm. on the little spool there so it can be difficult to stitch with metallic threads yes yeah, but they're usually kind of wrapped aren't yeah, they? yeah yeah but this is they've coated it Ooh. so it's really nice the sparkle and there. it sort of adds daylight to whatever you it yes, adds yeah. you know the light into a piece beautiful yeah. I like that yeah. now of course you're going to get your panel again you can see the details on your screen there 24.99 very affordable and I have to 
to say, very generous with regards to the threads as well. You'll have some left over, I'm sure. Loads left over in that particular one, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely loads. And it depends how much you want to populate it. So you could actually populate all of it or just a bit of it. That's so. a good idea, actually. Yeah. It's up to you. As little as much as you want to. But knowing that you've got the threads there, if you do want to do more of a coverage on there. So there you go. 948095. Again, a beautiful piece. Again, everything including the hoop. But I promised you two options. So that one is your blossom. The poppy, absolutely beautiful. And we're going to see the um, poppy in action in a few moments. But let me show you your base that you can be working on. Absolutely gorgeous. And again, very generous with regards to the threads on this one. Your artwork's beautiful. Oh, thank you. That's a watercolour painting, that one. Very effective. Which I've got, actually, to show you. have got the original. Have you? Oh, yeah. look at that later on. <laughs> Love it. So again, you're going to get your panel. You're going to get, I mean, look at all these threads. You can see there, you've got way more threads that you're going to need for your project. Um, again, you've got that fabulous hoop in there as well. Are we looking at kind of like a pearl thread here? It's pearl cotton number eight. Oh, so that's okay. a, um, not the smallest, but nearly the finest pearl okay. cotton uh, thread that DMC do. Beautiful. There you go. And more than enough for your project. So if you fancy getting hold of that particular one, that one's called Poppy. They're both on the same item number, which of course means if you want to go for both of them, no additional post and packing. So 948095. Now I promise you the opportunity for you to get hold of your DMC threads and also to get those panels. So the panels that we've been looking at are a part of a pick and mix. So this is where you choose, and we've got three different options depending on which of those you're wanting to go for. Oh, it's a set of two, sorry. So it's, yeah, you choose whichever you're wanting to go for. So you've got um, Constance and Saffron coming together. So these are your first two, and I'll show you these stitched out with your DMC threads in just a few moments. So you'll get those as bases. Now, this is brilliant because if you're going to have extra of those walls left over, or maybe you've already got some in your stash that you're wanting to use, then you can go for more of the panels. So details on your screen for those two if you want. And those two, Saffron um, and Constance. And if you're stitching them out with the DMC threads, absolutely beautiful. I mean, look at this. Isn't that gorgeous? And like you say, some people like their DMC threads. Yes, and in that one, um, in the instructions, I show people how to make their own variegated thread. Ooh, because okay. I've mixed the thread colours, so it has a real vintage feel. It, I wanted that, it to look yeah. like an heirloom that had already been around for Beautiful. 100 years. <laughs> well, it looks amazing because it yeah. does look like a vintage piece, even though mm. it's just very recently been stitched out. Now, of course, that's your panel, but if you're wanting your threads, we have got the threads available for you as well. They can so beautifully packaged. And again, way more threads that you need. So you can get hold of the DMC threads. Now we've got a variety of these and they are kind of named after the colour schemes that you've got with this particular one here. So this one that we've got here, this one is... Ruby. Uh, Ruby, this one. Have I picked this one up from the wrong pile? No, that's correct. That, yes, that oh, is correct. That, yes. The Ruby's yeah. over that way, isn't it? I've picked up the wrong one, I think, there. So I've got, oh no, it's because it's all on the same one. It's just I put it in the same case. Don't worry, just confusing myself. So this one's called Ruby. So it's one of your options if you're wanting to go for this one as your thread. So you can see there, your thread's there beautifully packaged. Also, you do get the needle in with the thread. Oh, wow. Because I wanted people to experience... Um, I've done a lot of research into needles, and they're John James needles, which I think it's are really fabulous, good. Yeah, when it comes yeah, to embroidery. Yeah. Amazing. So I wanted it to be the combination of the thread with the fabric with the needle. Beautiful. Yeah. Now, we've got another combination for you with this one. So again, if you're wanting to go for this particular one, again, this one's got a lot of stitches on it when you, we've got that infill with this one. Yes. Yes, there is a lot of infill. Yeah. Um, they are leaf stitch and there is closed um, closed fly stitch. Sorry, I nearly forgot the name of that <laughs> Oh, <one>. well, <laughs> to be honest, I'm... There's a lot. <laughs> I've got a very small glossary when it comes to um, embroidery. So with this particular one, is this one the saffron one? Yeah, that one? is the saffron one. Lovely. And that is more saffron coloured. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Makes sense. Just yeah. those yellows in there. Now, of course, the details on your screen are going to get you a package of your threads, as you can see there. So $14.99 for all of those threads in there. And, of course, you've got your needle in there as well. But if you're wanting your panels, and we have got those at the bottom of your screen. So that one's your saffron. Next one that we've got, for, oh, this is pretty. Oh, look at this one. That is gorgeous with those beautiful blues in there as well. Um, and again, more of that fabulous variegated thread. And this one's Constance, I believe, with this one. It is, yes. 
So and you can it, see how different it looks from the wool to the DMC very much threads. So, yeah. so if you use your own threads, it can look completely different again. That's a good point, actually. So if you're wanting your panels, then of course your panels at the bottom of your screen. But if you're wanting your threads, then there you go. You can get hold of those. And those ones are called constants. Um, so I'm going to pop that one on my little. I've got a little system going at the back here, and <laughs> folding them and wrapping them up so that I don't get myself confused. This one is so pretty, and this one is your lovely dove. Straight away, I, I love this design. Love the colours of the DMC one as well. Yeah, they're lovely. They're very Gorgeous. cheerful, but yes. they're, on, they're on trend as well. I wanted them to fit in with people's homes yes. and the colours that they might have in there. So, Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. So you can see there, obviously, your package there with all your different threads in there. Again, very generous supply of those threads. But again, if you're wanting those, the details are on your screen, 097604. But if you're wanting your panels, then the details are at the bottom of your screen. Of course, I've just covered the ones that you're adding your main stitches to. The printed panels are also available within the details at the bottom of your screen, should you want those. But we're going to see some of those in action in a moment. Website's probably the best place for you to see everything laid out. It makes it nice and simple, and you can click on those to get some additional additional details you just need to click on where it says quick look and it will explain further you've got a description there telling you everything that you've got within your kit and sometimes it makes it a nice simple way for you to actually see what you're going to get within those kits these ones are those are DMC threads that we've just been looking at so each time you click on those you will see you've got your different color combinations and of course they've been entitled alongside the designs of the panels doesn't necessarily mean that you have to go with those panels you might just like that color grouping the way that Victoria's put the colors together and that's not a problem at all you can take advantage of those so it might be that you're going for the ruby and the lovey dove panels but choosing the saffron threads it's entirely up to you those combinations are your own little combinations that you're choosing to make but just make sure that when you've got everything in your basket you check everything out and of course the beauty is if you want to spread the cost then you can do we've got some of the original kits as well so returning favorites with some fabulous reviews as you can see there so by all means do pop those into your basket as well and then you've got some very useful tools there things like your needle minder it's magnetic which means you're never going to lose that needle you can actually use it on your fabric while it's sitting in the hoop as well no more pinning that needle to your, ju uh, your jumper and then suddenly finding it when you're in the middle of the supermarket which has happened to me before now then you've got your hoops there so if you do want more of those hoops and if you do want a seat frame we've got that available for you as well as a lovely selection of additional threads should you need them so there's a lot to choose from isn't there it's all there on the website for you to peruse but I want to know how we get started, if that's okay, Victoria. Yes, absolutely. So these are suitable for beginners and intermediate and advanced, really, because you might already know the stitches, but if you don't, it's all explained in the guide that will be in your basket when you actually check out. So you'll have that before anything else immediately. So when you get your hoop, sorry, I was separating it. I'll just show you. So this tightens and loosens this okay. screw here. So remove that so it's a smaller hoop without the clip and I'm going to show you a herringbone stitch and that is all the way down here so I'm just going to show you this bit for now. Now do you need to worry that you're just using the hoop on a certain part of the design so you're re-hooping as you go I guess? You do re-hoop all I do is leave the French knots right to the end because okay. if you um, do your French knots as you go you could squash it so right. just be careful when you're actually repositioning that you make the hoop very wide yes. so that you're not over the top and That's squashing it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but tip. yeah, French knots to the end. But also it's a very good point that because I tend to work in small areas that are isolated. So I will do all of that flower. I actually start with this bit. So I'll do that bit, then I'll do that bit. And the reason I do that is to show me that it's working, that it makes sense and it gets your confidence yeah. up. Rather than saying I'm going to stitch all the berry colour and you end up doing a bit here and a bit here, you're not quite sure whether it's working so you haven't got the incentive to, you know. Oh, that's good so. advice. Right, so you push that down, you just saw me push that down quite firmly. The important bit is that you tighten it as much as it will go. So just finger tight, you don't need to get a screwdriver no, or anything like that? just finger tight. It okay. will loosen as you sew, so over the hours as you're sewing, it will loosen, but just keep tightening, just keep pulling your fabric away from it. And if it's drum-like, that's, that's good Wonderful. to go. So that's good to go. Now, I'm going to stitch with this, with the thinner of the threads, which is uh, the fine lace range, um, which is a fingering weight of wool. And... 
especially when I started to stitch with these wools, I thought, how am I going to get them through the needle? Now, this is quite a generous needle that's in here. This is the one that's in all of these packs, okay. apart from the embroidery kits, that is. So, I haven't ever used what you might call a traditional needle threader. Okay. Ever. I shouldn't probably admit that, should I? <laughs> well, if it hasn't been necessary, then I think that's okay. Well, there's always some scrap paper about, isn't there? So, it's so is this your own kind of little... Victoria yeah. style needle threader. <laughs> it is, yeah, okay. it is. So you just cut a strip of paper and just make sure that it goes through the eye of the needle so that when you pop the wool inside, like this, it just passes through. That is so clever. <laughs> And it, you've always sort a brilliant of idea. got paper that you recycle. Oh, there's always some around. Or even the little envelopes that the needles come in, you could use that. So I just wanted people to be able to do it quickly. That's a and game easily. changer. That's brilliant. Thank a lot, you for that. A lot <laughs> of the things I do are about working um, simply and so that you're enjoying what you're doing. You're not battling with the okay. materials. So what I've done here is I've threaded this needle and I've knotted it at the end and I've doubled it over. Now, you don't double over the thick alpaca walls, you just okay. double over the fine walls okay. to make it a bit thicker. And we're going to do a herringbone stitch, um, and that's all the way down this stem. And it's a sort of crisscross over stitch. That's the only way I can describe it, really. So okay. I'm going to start here, and I'm going to work this way. Now, normally I work on a frame. But with this type of stitching, you do have to twist it around. So okay. I tend to hold it, which is quite nice with the wool because mm -hmm. it's nice to hold it. So to start with, you come up at your starting point on one side of the line. The next stitch, the next two stitches are just starter stitches. So they're independent. So I'm going to go slightly to the right of this, only slightly along that line there. I hope you can okay. see that. That's the first stitch. Lovely. The second stitch I'm going to place here, and that's an independent stitch. So it's not going to touch any other stitch. That's your starting point. So you've got a little crisscross there. Okay, so they're not dissimilar to a cross stitch. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and the next one, the next stitches that I do, are all going to go through the points where the threads come up. Oh, okay. So, so is this like a weaving style stitch? It is almost, yeah. Okay. And it can vary the amount you space it out. It can look mm -hmm. dramatically different. But I'm going to keep it very closely populated because I want it to cover all of this up. So I'm going to go from the top to the bottom. I'm going to go through the hole that's already been made. And then I'm going to go from the bottom. So it is like a cross stitch. So I'm going to go through that hole where that came from. And you might want to practice these on a piece of um, scrap fabric first if you, you, know, if you okay. want to practice them. But you can see there that it's quite a sophisticated looking stitch. And it quite works very quickly. It does. And it gives it substance as well because of course you're working with that, that thicker wool. It does, it gives it a surface of its own. It looks amazing. And I've actually got the, um, the, the piece, the finished piece um, here. And you can see that fact, it's, a, it's almost like a plaited stitch. It's a beautiful stitch. And you can see that it kind of working its way from the flower there, going round the arc there and obviously down the stem. It's a very pretty stitch. I like that one. It is. I try to vary the stitches in all the kits, but I love that one and I keep coming back to it. So it's in quite a few. <laughs> it's like a signature stitch, yes, that one. <laughs> it is. It is, actually. I couldn't pick a favourite stitch, but that's one of them. Now, this is a five-inch hoop that I'm working with just because I'm not working on my frame and I want to try and keep it stable okay. for you to see. But you do get the six-inch hoop in the packs. Oh, I see. So the hoop in the, the pack is just very slightly larger. And 
There is a reason for that as well. I okay. didn't want people to feel that they had to stitch all of the design and that they could display it in the hoop. So you can get enough of the design if you wanted to just pop it on the wall in the hoop. It's a nice size hoop, that one. And like you say, they're perfect for a display as well. Um, the stitches that you've got are incredible. I mean, obviously, we were learning that fabulous herringbone, but you'll notice you've got little things like your French knots in here, a little bit of chain stitch going on as well. And because you're working with the walls, it's remarkable how thick that it gives that design. When you feel it, can you, you know, it's when you sort of... It's soft. I mean, it's... Yeah. it's Sometimes you think when you're working with something that's um, quite thick that you'd almost have like a, a, not a starchiness to it, but you wouldn't have the flexibility, but you can see that, I mean, it's still very fluid, the design. I suppose that's down to the quality of the wool. It is, yeah. definitely. That is on the prototype fabric, that particular one, because I've developed these so quickly. But the saffron one that I did that's just by you there, that's on the same fabric that comes with the template. Oh, they're gorgeous. So it was these. just, a, that's, that's the first one that I did of that. Now the saffron one is proving to be very popular actually um, and that's the one where you've got those gorgeous dusky tones. So the stitches that we're learning, are there different stitches in the different kits? Yes, okay. they do have crossover, some of them, but yes, I try to, so that you're upskilling each time you do a kit basically. And it's amazing because within the actual um, uh, stitches that you've got there, you can kind of see how they come together and almost give that almost, uh, like you see with a, a leaf, the vein area coming from the centre and going to the outside pieces. But absolutely beautiful. It's so soft. I wish you could put your hands through the TV and just stroke your thumb over the pieces because they're absolutely beautiful. The wool does do the hard work for you. <laughs> Looks amazing. From honest. <laughs> Oh, bless you. And it kind of gives it a padded look as well. I'm going to hold it just to the side there so as you can see. So it's actually giving it quite sub um, quite amount of substance. So with these, if we are going to be displaying them in, in frames, are we best to leave them without glass or do we put glass in front of them? I, if you can, I would leave it without glass okay. because, uh, but be prepared for people touching it. Yeah. <laughs> because it is really tactile. Um, so if it's not in a heavy duty area, um, you could probably take the glass out of the frame, then you wouldn't get that reflection. Put them eight yeah. foot up your wall so nobody can yeah. touch them. <laughs> <laughs> or with a do not touch sign on there. <laughs> but absolutely beautiful. Oh, here's me putting my fingers all over it as well. <laughs> um, now, this particular one is the saffron kit. Now, the saffron kit comes, um, as all of the, uh, the different kits do, they've all got different item numbers with them. But what you're going to get is you're going to get your panel with your pre-printed design. It features the fabulous artwork that Victoria has put together for your particular design. So you'll have that on this fabulous fabric. It's almost like a, a half panama style fabric this particular one lovely feel to it it's a heavyweight linen yeah, yeah. yeah, it's yeah. A beautiful beautiful fabric and um, you're also going to get your walls and you're going to get a selection of different styles of walls dependent on the design you go for so within this particular one you're going to get those lovely dusky tones those pale blues in there the lovely dusky almost lilac-y pinks featuring in here as well and you've got that lovely kind of fleck running through these so when it comes to sourcing your, your, your walls I mean I mean, gosh, you must be sport for choice when you're looking for walls. Uh, yeah, definitely. And I went for the branded name yes. and uh, Rowan are part of the DMC group. Oh, so I've I not see. moved that far away from DMC. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, a brand that everybody knows. Yeah, Rowan. yeah. yeah. Definitely. Yeah. So that particular kit is your saffron kit. Now, if you like in the design, but you are a DMC um, embroiderer and you prefer to work with your silks, then we have got those available for you as well. So you can find those. The panels you can get hold as a pairing. So two of the panels will come together, different designs, but the saffron will feature within that one. And you've got kind of different combinations. But I'll tell you more about that in, uh, as the hour progresses. But if you're wanting to go for your DMC threads, then you have got the ability to get hold of those. They come to you beautifully packaged. So this particular one I think is the one that we've got um, the lovey a dove um, version because you've got those gorgeous pale tones in there I love the packaging that you've got with these as well they're Amazing. really handy those bags I I bought them for the kits the bags and I've started using them to organize my threads they're <laughs> shouldn't be. <laughs> It's going to be a pleasure when you actually receive your order, isn't it? So different variations of the DMC threads. The website's still probably the best place to go because you'll see all the different combinations with those as well. Uh, but they're all on the same item number. So we've got Constance. So go by the colours that you like the look of. And, of course, Constance does work alongside the um, fabulous panels that we've got at the bottom of your screen called Constance. Ruby is another one, though. There's gorgeous rich tones, as you can see. Um, the next one that we've got for you is your saffron. So lots of yellow tones, as you'd imagine, with the name saffron. 
and then finally you've got the dove with those beautiful cool blues and soft gentle greys in there really pretty combination of threads that work and complement each other so so well 14 pounds and 49 pence will get you those threads you've got way more threads than you need for your designs and the beauty is they're all on the same item number so if you want to go for more of those then you can do 097604 and of course we've been featuring these fabulous projects that we've got here which do include your online workshop and the beauty of this is you can sit at home you can stitch alongside Victoria and other like-minders um, my did individuals like our lovely Atina who is an amazing um, stitcher she's actually sent some pictures in her some of her work and here you go you might recognize this one because this is one of the panels that you've been sharing with us it's better than mine oh <laughs> it's a bit, well I don't like saying one person is better than another it's a different slant on it equally yes. as beautiful though. yeah and she did it super quick she she's really? such, such a fast sewer and she did yeah yeah so that was that was lovely to see that now i know she's worked with some of your previous kits as well i think we've got some imagery of those as well yeah. these are pretty yeah. oh the dragonfly that's the dragonfly kit oh we've got yeah. these kits as well yeah. oh okay yeah yeah yeah, yeah so and she came on the workshop for that that was lovely oh. i've met some lovely people through the workshops it's really nice. That's a really nice yeah. idea that you know that when you're invested in any of the kits, uh, that if you've got access to that workshop, it makes it very easy for you to, to learn. And of course, if you don't want to take part in the group, there's lots of uh, kind of tuition via Victoria's YouTube channel as well. So with this one, you've got loads of different options. Bee, Dragonfly, Dandelions, Blackbird, and Blossom with those ones as well. Got another image though. So this is a beautiful, oh, this is pretty now. This is the butterfly with the needle keeper there. This is this is actually the moth. Oh, so is it? This is oh. part of the two templates that are moths. Right. And oh, I see. this is how it stitches up. So oh, yeah. so it's just to show people. But I've had lots of students stitch this template in all different colours. So whatever stash you've got, it's going to go because there are millions of moths, and they're all That's true. They're all different. And butterflies, because it does look like a butterfly. It does look it? like yeah. a butterfly. Very pretty. Now that's actually the dragon. Design fly needle minder but it matches it's lovely it does isn't look it? good yeah. yeah wonderful and then we've got another one to share with you oh look at this i think i saw this one on social media it looks amazing this is one that Tina did, isn't it? Yeah. I've just realised it's not the one that I did. These are all <laughs> Tina's pieces. Yeah. Um, and thank oh, you for yeah, sharing the you. photographs, Tina. These look amazing. She obviously enjoyed herself with the kids. Yes. Yeah, she did. She did. She's super fast. And, and as you say, I work on social media. It's beautiful, isn't it? Absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. of course, those kits, if you wanted to get hold of any of those kits, the details are on your screen. Now, of course, you just taught us a fabulous herringbone stitch. Did you want to teach us another stitch? Yes, I do. I'm just going to finish this one off. I mean, obviously I haven't finished but just to show you what I what I do when I've finished I pass it through to the back quite simply and I don't worry about the state of the back okay. <laughs> nobody is going to see it I just go to a stitch maybe one next to where you've come from just pop it through pop it through again and just cut it off so a lot of people ask me that it seems yes. quite a simple thing to say but a lot of people are, are interested to how they might finish them now if you're leaving your work for any um, period of time do you take it out of the hoop or do you leave it in the hoop does it matter i leave it in the hoop okay i don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing but i do iron them when i've finished okay. um, because quite often you'll see the circle a bit of a mark there okay. but always cover it and iron it from the back do yes. not do not do all that work and have your iron attached we to you. squash it as well can't you that's yes. the thing if you bring it from the front let alone cause any damage to it so, so yeah. i put quite a textured towel on top so i sit it on a textured towel and then you've got that padding with between that's the iron tip. yeah that. Okay, okay, okay. right so we're going to do chain stitch i'm just debating which part of chain stitch so i could do this bit which so is with chain stitch um is it a chain stitch a nice one to kind of follow an outline or is it another infill because the herringbone i'd say was more yes. of a kind of infill stitch well the chain stitch is as well so you can use it for an outline so if you look at the lovely dove wool one that you've got your hand next to yeah um you can see the berries are chain stitch in a circle oh these are areas here oh so they are yes. almost like a little spiral going on there yes and the flower next to it the pink flower is is an outline if you oh, like so, so yeah it's very versatile it's a good point actually it is isn't it you I'm should stitch to know i'm trying to remember which color i've done this one yeah it's this one it's okay. the salmon <laughs> the salmon wool so um i have done something wrong here i'm just going to snip it i'm not going to double this over okay 
quite a thick um, don't know why I did that. to pull through, I'm <laughs> guessing. <laughs> it is. You don't need it to, unless you want to do a really chunky, which you can do. With regard to the actual length as well, That's how long should you have your too piece long. that you're working with? <laughs> so, usually it's sort of the length of your arm, but I'm oh. a little bit of a lazy stitcher, so I do a little bit longer because I don't I'm want to keep... like that. <laughs> and there's a bit there as well that you can pull through when you've... I'm uh, admit, I am very much like that. <laughs> so, uh, but yes, the length of your arm is a comfortable um, length, so you're not sort of going like this. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to do this outline and chain stitch. I won't get through all of it, but I will show you. So you start by coming up from the back and your first stitch, you put your needle back where it came from. Now I've seen lots of people do this slightly differently as to where they position the thread, but I'm right handed. And if you can get in this position, this is a really good way to work because my thumb is going to control this. So my thumb is on here. Obviously, if you're left-handed, do it the other way. And then I get hold of the thread and I wrap it underneath the needle. I've still got my thumb on there, so it's still controlling it. So it's not going to go all over the place. And you see, I just let it go at the last minute. Oh, OK, yes. Bring the thread back over to the left and go in that loop that you've made. So inside it, again, the wool goes underneath the needle and my thumb is still controlling it and then thread back over to the left and you kind of keep that that travel as I'd, uh, I'd call it between the two stitches the same sort of length keep quite balanced yes keep them balanced um, and you can do big stitches you can do little stitches you can pull the wool tighter you can do a longer stitch which I've just done there probably not uh, intentionally but you can see it creates a, a really nice line it does and I suppose you don't have to kind of look at it and think oh they've all got to be exactly the same mathematically because when you're doing a curve I imagine naturally you do smaller pieces smaller stitches to get around the curve Definitely, yeah. The smaller, that's absolutely right. And especially even with stem stitch and thing like, things like that. If you're going round anywhere, smaller stitches are easier. Otherwise, they do pull. And if they do pull, a whipped stitch brings them back into line. So ah, <laughs> a good tip there. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, so you just keep going through the previous loop and put the thread underneath. You can see I've got to a little bit of... Now, this is the reason it's not in a frame, because you will... As you go in, you will turn oh, your hoop yes, yeah. quite naturally. That goes underneath. Now, I've not kept my thumb on that one. That's a bit naughty, isn't it? But it's worked out. So you can see it's very forgiving. And you can see that. I mean, you've only done, what is it, about half a dozen stitches, though, and you've moved halfway around that petal. Yes. It doesn't take long at all. No, it doesn't. I won't do all of it. It might get boring. <laughs> Not at all. It's but, fascinating uh, to watch. But it's nice as well because if you've got anybody that's a, a bit like me who maybe has a short attention span and wants instant gratification or just doesn't have an awful lot of time, then yes. it's nice to see the results so quickly. Yeah, definitely. You can build them up quite quickly. And they are a generous size, so there's a lot to go at. So yeah. it's, you know, so but it does come together quite quickly. If you wanted to include the stitched out panel into something else, say if you wanted to make like a cushion, not a cushion that you'd actually use on a chair, you know those display cushions, could you do that with it? The ones like when somebody's about to sit down and your hand Whip goes down. Away. <laughs> <laughs> I've got those. <laughs> um, I think they'd be lovely on a cushion and I must admit if I'd had more time I was going to put one on a cushion oh, to show okay. you. Yeah. So that will happen sometime soon. And sometimes it's uh, nice not to just have them up on the wall, isn't it? Yeah. Well I've got one in a frame as well at home. Oh, nice. So yeah, so they're nice on. Also I thought they'd be nice as a book cover, you know if... Oh, yeah. You know when you go to a wedding and they pass a book round and everybody writes comments? Yes. I thought nice how nice idea, that yeah. would be, especially the heart one, the ruby one. Yes. If you covered an A4 book because it's A4 in size. Oh, of course, yeah. And then you just put a back cover on it, you know. Perfect. Um, but yeah, lots of uses. Good idea. Good idea, I like that idea. And of course, as you said earlier on, there's a little of open areas as well. So if you wanted to personalise, like you say, as a wedding gift, you could be putting the, the, the couple's name on the, the, the day of the wedding. and yeah. the day. How lovely yeah. would that be? And then if you're worried about it getting dirty at the wedding reception, you just put a clear plastic cover and take it off afterwards. That's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want red wine on it, do you? <laughs> oh, gosh, definitely not. <laughs> 
sorry, I'm just getting a bit tangled there. So yeah, so it's just it's as simple as that really. And then when you get to the end of that pedal, do you, you kind of tie off your threads as you showed us before and then rejoin and start again with the next pedal? Um, I don't. If it's a sharp bend, um, so if it's a very sharp curve, what I might do, I wouldn't knot it off and start again, okay. but I'll just show you here. So say if it was a very sharp bend that I was going round. Oh, so you're coming up from the base of the next petal, right, yeah. I would just secure it, so I just anchor it. So okay. through to the back, turn it over, and just like before when I was knotting it, just pop it through a close by one. Right. Back through the same hole that you came through. Okay. So you know you're in the right position to start yes, again. No gaps, yeah. And it just means that it won't pull it if it's going around a sharp bend. So anywhere you're a bit worried that you, you're mm -hmm. going too steeply or too sharply, just anchor your thread. It means it'll, it'll stay put. Brilliant. Now I can understand why the online classes are so popular. How amazing these students are a teacher. I mean, Victoria is brilliant. And of course, with any of those kits, you can see there you are going to get your online workshop that you can get involved with. And Victoria will be in touch. So if you're placing your order for any of those, she includes her contact details. And then, of course, you can organise that class alongside her. Something else that we've got that's proven to be very popular. Now, these are always popular. You can understand why. I mean, look how beautiful that design is here. Now, you're actually getting all three of these. So you can see you've got your beautiful dragonfly there all printed ready for you to add your stitch detail then in addition to that you've got your little blackbird very very cute design and again a very sizable piece that you're working with here so very generous amount of fabric with these and then finally oh look at that you bumblebee how amazing is that piece so all three of those come to you for just 14 pounds and 99 pence and that gives you the opportunity maybe for you to use some of those threads or yarns or wools that you've got in your stash already so if you're wanting those 998 499 very affordable i have to say at 14.99 but of course the new kits that we've been talking about today we've got those available available for you as well. You've got them in the kits with the walls if you're wanting to or you can go for them in their pairings if you're wanting to and these are brilliant because you've got these that you've seen stitched out and obviously being worked a few moments ago with the different designs but then these ones will give you the opportunity for you to use your own threads. So these two pieces that you've got here are Constance and Saffron. Now if you like these designs but you want them with your walls then you can get hold of them but if you're wanting to use perhaps some of your threads from your stash then you have got those available. Now we have I've got some um, um, DMC threads in the combinations to work alongside these and just make sure I've got the right one. So you can get hold of them. They are the similar sort of names, so you can find them. Loads of different options. The website is the really the easiest way for you to get hold of them because with this particular one here, you've kind of got those blues um, and those gorgeous yellow tones coming through. But it does explain itself way better on the website than me holding them up. So do check those out. Then you've got your ruby and you've always, um, oh actually well, let's go to the printed ones that we've got because these, you're going to get these as bases. Now again, these are available as your kit as well. So if you want them as kits, then do have a little look on the website. There's two options on the same item number if you want these with your DMC threads in there. But if you're wanting to stitch them again, utilising your own threads, or maybe you just want these beautiful panels. I mean, they look absolutely gorgeous just as they are. Both of them, again, coming to you under the same item number as the one that I shared with you a few moments ago, 363729. And again, £13.99 for both of those. Um, and uh, the original painting, I know Victoria's got, I'm going to go to Victoria in just a few minutes. Can I should very quickly show you the final option on these and we'll go and have a look at that painting. And this one is your ruby and your lovey dove. So the lovey dove we just saw being stitched out utilising the kit but equally so you might have your own threads, your own walls that you're wanting to use. So this gives you the opportunity for you to get hold of the two panels just as they are to utilise your own threads. Equally so if you're wanting to do your DMC versions of those we have got um, like-minded packs that are going to work with those as well. So again do check those out at the bottom of your screen but 13.99 will get you either those two your beautiful two pieces there with your poppy and your blossom or of course the saffron um, and um, Constance I had to think for a moment. <laughs> I was thinking of your family members there. <laughs> so there you go. Now, the artwork for the gorgeous poppy, you've got that there. Yes, I just thought I'd show you some of the process oh, that yes. I do. So this is the original watercolour painting and it starts with a drawing. Okay. And, well, it starts with photographs. So I've not been going very far just lately, but 
I'm lucky enough to live in a place where my neighbour's gardens are beautiful. Oh, so okay. I take a lot of photos on my phone. And then I think about how they translate into stitch and where I want to place the design. This, this isn't a brilliant drawing, but it's just me thinking about how I, what I want to be in the composition. And from that, I will produce a drawing which is on vellum okay. paper, which means I can then transfer it quite easily. So it's my original drawing that I can keep using time and time and time again because it's on there. And then I transfer it to, this is just canvas paper actually, okay. and it's watercolour paint. So, so that's the process. And I like to leave a lot of texture in so you can see on the lavender um, this, there's a lot of the original pencil marks. Could I just refer to the original one? Is that okay? This piece that yeah. I've got here. Do you, oh, do you want me to pass it down to you? Is that I'm, okay? I'm knocking everything over. <laughs> Let me pass that there. There you go. Just to thank you, just to show the difference. So, yeah, so you, you've got gorgeous. choices here, really, as to how much of it you populate now you know when i said i keep using these bags for my own stash yes. <laughs> i thought i'd show you this so these are the pearl cotton threads and i start with full skeins of everything okay so that so i know just as everybody receives the kit yeah so that okay. i know how much it's going to stitch up and how much you're going to have left and this is what's left after oh. i've done this one so Gosh, if you loads in there. if you went for the kit, you could get the templates and have enough to do another one That's and the cherry blossom. Point. Yeah, yeah, because there's some cherry blossom colours in here as well. So That's a good idea. So that would be taking the details on the screen and then taking that um, item number that we were talking about the, the pairings of the panels a few moments ago. Yeah, um, and pop so, them all together. Yeah, so good be idea. quite a lot of stitching there. So yeah, you've got a choice here as to how much you populate. And when I received these templates back I thought oh my gosh I'm going to stitch on those they're so nice I don't want to disturb them. <laughs> it's quite a thing. Like them they're as they are. And yeah. I like the texture and as you know I've got a paint background so this lovely texture that you can see I thought how am I going to disturb that but the more I started to add thread the more it became something else okay. and I thought yeah that that's a relief actually so as you can see I've placed um, like for light colour on some areas but on dark areas I've put paler uh, threads and, and vice versa so to get that play off um, and there's buttonhole stitch here and I've left this here with the choice of stitches so we've got uh, chain stitch and we've got it in a doubled, doubled over thread here we've got it in single thread and we've got a sort of random satin stitch that just picks out the colours. So you've got a lot of choice and, and uh, as to how much. You might find that once you start, you don't want to stop and you just yes, do all yeah. of it. Um, but yes, nice simple stem stitch just picks the highlight down there. And this is the buttonhole stitch, which is beautiful. I like that stitch. And it's nice because uh, I've used a buttonhole stitch on a plique and I've never thought of it as an embroidery stitch in this sense, but it works yes. really well. It's on the leaves as well. It's on some of the leaves in the DMC kits as well. So it's, uh, it's a stitch that I've recently learnt. So it's the ones at the bottom of the counter with the uh, oh. DMC packs, you know, the constants with the... Oh, I can sorry, see it here. So, I'm going so in the wrong direction. <laughs> I've gone a bit overboard on the choices. <laughs> I'm just blown away. But, You've got all the French knots on there. I love French knots. Um, and again, so many different stitches. The herringbone again. Can I just show the herringbone? I love that stitch that you showed us at the beginning there. That's the buttonhole stitch that you can see as well. That's oh, on here. that leaf. Yeah. Oh, on the leaf. Sorry, yes, yeah. of course, the leaf there. And sorry, it's I was looking at the stem, yes. And it's got a split stitch running down the spine. And it's edged. See that? I Sorry, didn't it's not recognize edged. that as a buttonhole yeah. stitch. I, I was thinking it's almost like just a little straight stitch. But yeah, you can see it's almost like that um, blanket stitch, I used to call it as well. It's it the kind same of thing. moves across and moves one in. Yeah. It's like a blanket stitch, but on a horizontal surface, not okay. on an edge. Did you want to show us how to do the buttonhole stitch? I can do, yes. Ooh, okay. Yeah. Um, and again, it's, it's kind of maybe extending your range of stitches. This is the thing. Quite often we'll hear French knots being utilised because they are such a useful stitch. Things like stem stitch, brilliant as well if you're wanting to kind of outline and travel an area. But sometimes things like the buttonhole stitch you might not have come across. So I think it'd be useful for us to see that one in action. Um, and of course, don't forget when you are going for any of the kits that we've been speaking of um, with regards to the walls, you've got that tuition, you've got that 
online class that you're going to be able to get involved with. So as you've seen, I mean, Victoria really does know her stuff when it comes to embroidery. So she's going to be able to obviously share that knowledge with you. And it's going to be a fabulous little group, not oversized. Quite often, Victoria said that it's come up with little groups of three people alongside her. Um, so very, very kind of personal, which I think is nice as well. But of course, if you don't want to get involved, then you've got lots of information within the kits. And of course, you can jump onto her YouTube channel and see her classes there. Just to give you a bit of a time check, um, we've got about six minutes or so left, Victoria. Yeah, sure. Okie dokes. So I'm just going to thread up the pink thread. It's got a knot at the end. Now, a lot of my students struggled um, with this stitch. I struggled with it at first, and it made me question why I struggled. If you imagine it like a back to front capital L shape, it helps. Okay. So I'm going to go round this area here. So I'm going to come up from the back, first of all. And this thread is a little bit too long, but never mind. Um, so if you imagine an L shape going along the spine and downwards, it makes it easier. So all you have to do is you imagine the L shape and you put your needle in at the end of where you imagine the L shape to be. And you have this loop here. And then you just go to the corner of where you think the L shape is the actual the actual corner <laughs> okay yeah and as you pull it through like the just like a blanket stitch it holds it there like that so you get this little Oops. kind of squares it off a little bit doesn't it yeah it does yeah so again it's an l shape so i'm going at the end of where i imagine the l shape to be keep hold of it and again use your thumb there to keep the tension on the thread yes and as you can see the L shape there, you would put your needle in the corner of the L. So it's kind of on the edge of the petal again. There we go, you can see it properly. Oh yes, yeah, so you've moved across. Yes, and you just keep going round. And mm -hmm. it creates that lovely little um, I mean, it's lovely, because as I say, I've, I've often thought of it, or used it with a plique, um, and I've got a similar stitch on my sewing machine that does that kind of design, but never thought of it using it. On the flat surface, yeah. yeah. Very yeah. effective. Thank yeah, you for that. so I hope that helps. Oh, very <laughs> much so. Um, so there you go. Um, working with those fabulous printed panels, I mean, you're going to get some absolutely amazing results. And of course, you've seen with these kits that um, so much generosity within these kits. You've got your panel, which of course you can add as little or as much stitch to as you want to. So it might be that you've got a favourite stitch that you like utilising over and over again. Well, you can do that if you want to. It's almost like you're painting with the stitches. So you're going to get your panel beautiful panel just as it is to be honest even if you just want to use it just like it is then you can do but of course you are going to get your beautiful skeins of those gorgeous threads in here way more threads that you're going to than you're going to need and you've got that gorgeous sheen to these as well i mean look at that rich purple isn't that beautiful yeah just to say when you get these open them up and cut them <laughs> that's a good point actually because they're yeah. kind of twisted aren't they yeah. yeah so i make a length like this which is perfect because you can yeah. either double it over or you can cut that length in half to make a manageable piece Again, that length. yeah yeah Love it. Both on the same item number, incidentally, those two panels. So again, if you want to go for them both together, you can do without any issue at all. Now, we have been busy for those panels that um, I showed you earlier on with your little bumblebee on there. Um, now, with regards to these ones, we've got these oh, upside down. It's never good, is it, when they're flying upside down? Never a good sign. Um, and these are brilliant. Again, some of those packs of threads that we've been looking at, you could utilise with these. Well, I'm looking at the Constance wool pack um, oh yeah yes yeah. and it's yellows and browns and pale pink and terracottas that that would be lovely oh. with that actually yeah so yeah they mix and match that's it and incident we have got the thread um, the packs of walls if you want to go for those by themselves these don't have to be a dmc thread we obviously have got those available but if you want your wool threads at the bottom of your screen they're just nine pounds and 99 pence very affordable way for you to get more of those as well and of course the beauty of that is if you're wanting to go for the kits that we spoke of and you want to go for more maybe to work alongside and have kind of like a, a series of pieces then yes you can get your panels whether you're going for them this way or whether you're going for any of the other panels and get hold of your wool threads separately kind of make your own little combination your own little kits really with these yes the templates are organic um half panama cotton so you'll see that they're thicker yes so they will take yeah the they wool have got that as well you. as the yeah, threads I got a little confused earlier on when, yeah. it, it, with the, the half panama you've got the weight there but as you say with this one they are yeah. weightier than the linens that was just looked at yeah. and they're so 
suitable for the wool as well. Yeah. So, yeah, so they, they do, Perfect. you know, cross over. Lots of choices. Spoiled for choice almost. That's why I keep mentioning the website because on the website you can kind of pick out the elements that you want. Go for those panels that you want. Go for your walls. Go for your DMC threads if you're wanting to. It's your combination. It's your choice. But equally so, we have got kits available for you that you can utilize that way. If you need that little kind of bit of support, that bit of help because you're just getting started and you don't really know where to get started, but you know that you like the design and you want to learn. Well, that's where a kit comes in useful. Then, of course, you've got additional threads as you can see here so you can go on and kind of extend your range of threads that you've got but don't forget those templates especially if you've got threads already maybe you've got threads left over from some of Victoria's kits before because she's incredibly generous as you've seen with these ones and you can see there's some wonderful five star reviews um, and I have to say check out social media as well so we've got your YouTube channel we can visit you on social media as well yes and there's my website as well where the videos are so Perfect. if people need to see how to you know the stitches are demonstrated they're short Love it. uh, it's been videos. a pleasure really thank enjoyed you. Yourself. yes thank it's been you. lovely thank you for all your advice and all thank the education you. as well so the key thing is if you've got anything in your basket now is the time for you to be checking that basket out and i will see you a little later on bye for now Oh, now settle yourself down because we've got a brand new one day special launching and it's a cracking one. Then we're back with more marbling from 35 Design Space and then we're back with a one day special. Have you heard of Freedom? Did you know that as a Freedom member, you could be making savings on every order you place? For just £7.97 a month, you will benefit from selective Freedom member discounts and complimentary standard delivery on every order you place. You will also receive our exclusive Freedom members badge, giveaways and crafty updates. If you shop with a craft store more than twice a month, then Freedom is for you. Don't forget, your Freedom membership is flexible, so you can pause if you're going away or you can cancel at any time you decide. So what are you waiting for? Give us a call or go to our website quoting the item number 888888 and join Freedom today. Hi, I'm John Lockwood from John Next Door and Crafts 2. My crafting journey has taken me through all different types of crafting from stamping and die cutting to colouring and inking and loads of different things. I've been working with Crafts 2 now for over three years and they produce the John Next Door brand, distribute it and make sure that everything is perfect in that. This allows me to work with the fantastic Crafts 2 tools and products as well as some of their other amazing brands such as 2J Stamps, Press Cut and the Craft Artist range of glues and consumables and inks. I really find that this partnership is extremely strong and helps me bring out the best of my products and all the other products within the Crafts 2 stable and the ones that I design. Catherine and I'm the guest presenter for Zuri Designs. Zuri Designs are based in America and they bring to us their exceptional quality silicon moulds. Zuri Design moulds are used in all areas of crafting, not just for your clays and your resins, but also their food grade silicon as well, so used for your cake decorating designs. Zuri excel on the detail in their moulds and the designs range from animals through to fantasy and much further beyond. If you watch the Zuri shows, I will share with you lots of hints and tips. I will show you how to use different mediums, ranging from your clays and your resins through to things like even your hot glue. So make sure you don't miss the Zuri shows. Uh, welcome everyone. What an exciting one day special for a weekend. This is brilliant. Uh, lots and lots of people want to do their own dressmaking. And of course, when you are dressmaking, you are making either for you or a specific person. Um, so although you might have their me measurements, you can't keep them there for the whole of the dressmaking process because they could be stood there for days, couldn't they? Wait, are you finished yet? 
Are, are you done yet? And that's why you need one of these. Um, and actually, I think there's there's a way one of these makes you feel as well. Actually, so if you want to, you know, you want to feel like one of those contestants on one of those fabulously fabulous sort of reality shows, you kind of know what I'm going with here, uh, then I think you're definitely going to love this. I'm not on my own for this one day special. Right the way across the next 24 hours, Rosella Cottrell is here. Hello, hello, well, hello. hello. Oh, sorry. There you are. I don't know. <laughs> behind, behind you. Um, you know that when it comes to working with fabric and, and, and dressmaking, because you are a dressmaker yourself as well, aren't you, uh, that actually if you're making for either you or you're making for someone else, then it's, you know, you can get their measurements once, but you can't have them standing there for the whole time. It would just be crazy. Yeah. Um, and also, something like this just allows your creative juices to get flowing as well, doesn't it? Definitely. I mean, ultimately, you're creating a body double. Yeah. So you're, you're making yourself there. Or, indeed, if you are um, creating for someone else, you're also creating a double for them too. Yeah. Um, but then, yeah, exactly that. So it's to, to make the dress to look at the dress but then how does it flow yes maybe you want to add embellishments it's very of course you can add it flat on the table but yeah. actually if you are pinning you're seeing exactly how it looks yes now one of the great things about this of course Derek is is that because it's really hard to yeah. see the back of you yeah you know you Absolutely. can do it in the mirror but as soon as you do that hem drops doesn't it yeah. so it means that you can turn it around you can look at your dress from the back how does it look even on you know how does it look on certain parts of it yeah that may be uh, and, sticking out and that's the thing we're all so beautifully different aren't we um, actually it just so happens that uh, Rosella and, uh, and I are both on the slightly more petite size in terms of height and that makes clothes buying very very difficult how often you might be that shape where you feel like everything you buy needs to be adjusted well actually being able to make your own um, garments actually means that you truly make for the size and the shape that you are because we're all beautifully different uh, so what this form allows you to do is uh, as Rosella says create a body double and adjust that to the size that you are because you've got 11 points let me just show you you've got 11 points of adjustment on this form now the one day special let's just talk to you about that and then we'll talk to you about what this does as well now it's not just for making dresses for making blouses for making jackets for making full length as well uh, you're going to absolutely love it whether you're making for yourself whether you're making for someone else as well now this one should be sold at $149.99. It is a Millwood product. Millwood are absolutely amazing, as you'll know. Any of you that quilt or dress make or work with fabric at all, you know what a trusted brand Millwood are. We have got this 24-hour window of opportunity to not sell this for $149.99. We're going to take a third of that price away for our one day special making it just 99.99 and you might think okay well what's so special about that Derek well it's a third less first of all of the price that it could be but secondly what we have over pretty much any shop that you go and shop with right now is this your ability to split that down into three payments of just 33 pounds and 33 pence interest free hassle free it means you can order it and we've got the stock right here it's not coming from anywhere else there is no delayed dispatch right now um 3333 and this goes straight out to you right now which i think is absolutely brilliant now let me go through the sizes that this one day special will cover now dress sizes it will fit sizes eight to six but then let's talk about the other measurements on this as well so bust measurements you can go from 33 to a 41 inch bust on this and even more as well as I will avert my eyes later and Rosella will demonstrate how you could make a fuller bust if you want to go even fuller than that the waist measurements that this will adjust to and from 26 to 35 inches uh, for you and your hip measurements um, 36 to 44 inches but again even with the hip measurements what you can do is if you're even fuller in the hip than that is you can actually add layers of wadding to the outside pin it to the actual form itself and make that slightly wider 
And how this works, well, we'll talk about how this works uh, in a wee while. Um, we have actually two different configurations of this as well. So this runs size 8 to 16. Now, can I just suggest that if you want one of these and you've probably done your homework and you've probably seen the prices that these kind of things do retail for, I did a very similar product on television about four years ago, and I think the price was around about 140. The price that we should be selling for here is 149.99. Um, we are saving a third of that price, but only as the one-day special. So between now and six o'clock tomorrow evening, or when the stock sells out, whichever comes first, and it will be gone. And we'll take you through the whole concept of how these adjustable dress forms work a little bit later. So let me show you, first of all, the, uh, the image for this, shall we? And then I want to show you the other size that we have available uh, as well. So if, if you want one that runs to a slightly higher uh, dress size, then we absolutely can them for you, not a problem, because there are two versions um, of this. Oh, thank you, Molly, darling. Oh, you're amazing. You're amazing. She was so ready for that. Uh, right, you can adjust it up and down as well, by the way. And you can also extend the body, because uh, actually, if you like me, I, I'm five foot three and three quarters, the three quarters being very crucial, but I actually feel like I've got quite a long body in relation to a very, very short inside leg. Um, so what you can actually do is you can actually raise the bust or lower the waist, whichever way you want to describe it. Now this is the other option that we have available on the show as well. So this is the slightly fuller version. So this will fit a size 14 to a size 20. And again, let me talk to you about the other crucial measurement, measurements um, that this will cover for you. So in terms of your Oh, hang on. Have I got it? Oh, I'm not sure if I've got it actually on this one, have I? Um, right, let's go. So bust is what, darling? Sorry. 39 to 47 inches and the waist 32 to 40 and the hips 41 to 49 inches. But of course, as we've mentioned, you can add to the bust. You can add to the hips. Can I just interject as well there, Derek? Yes. If you are sort of in between, maybe you're a 14 to 16, you're thinking, oh, OK, which side am I going to go? Go for the smaller. We can add a little bit of padding, but yes. we can't take it away. Yes. So if you are on that cusp, go small. Yeah, absolutely. Um, OK, so the price tag for this one uh, is 109.99. Again, you can see our price tag should be 158.99 for this. So you've got those two different choices. But can I tell you that the availability of this is much scarcer than our one-day special. We were able to negotiate a big stock for our one-day special for our primary option, uh, but we only have a tenth of the stock available of this option. So if you want the 14 to 20, which is the slightly fuller sizes, um, OK, 10% of the stock of this has already um, sold and gone. And um, we have a minuscule stock of these in comparison to our main one-day special. So if you want this, again, I would say sooner rather than later. 771851 is your item number for this one. Here's the picture of it. Um, and they are brilliant. And we mustn't forget as well, you also have a way of being able to mark the hem, Rosella, as you go round as well. You do. And we'll look, we'll look at that in detail, exactly yes. how we do it. But that's a really, really great feature, which you'll know if you've ever made any clothes at all of your own. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Brilliant. Um, the other thing about that, of course, is if you cut straight from a pattern, assuming what the, um, what the hem will be, if you are slightly fuller in the bust, then that brings the hem up at the front. That's and could leave you longer at the back and shorter at the front. And, and what a to-do that would be if you've used a lovely fabric. Talking of which... Oh, <laughs> nice bridge. Nice bridge. Now, um, something else. Obviously, our main focus will be on the dress forms in this hour, but I've got to. I, I just could not not show you these fabrics that we have because the deal that we have and the quality that we have and the choice that we have right now and remember this is the first of live of the one day special hours over the next 24 hours we have this amazing fabric freedom drape fabric a three meter length of your choice of fabrics here for just 13.97 for three meters in length of this incredible fabric. Here are your options. We've got the spot fabric here, which is, I think, did you say this would, there's the most limited, Kirsty, or have I just made that up? White spot 
chiffon. We have the pink carnations. We have the navy and pink wave. We have the, sorry, which one? Pink floral chevron. We have the bumblebees, which we think is going to be massively, massively popular. And we have the white floral chiffron. Forgive me, sorry, I tried try to repeat uh, Kirsty's words there. Uh, try and keep up with the names on as well. So one, two, three, four, five, six different options. Whichever one you take, and you take multiples if you want to. OK, pink floral and bumblebees, massively, massively popular already. Um, so be as quick as you possibly can. I can't believe that. Three metres, Rosella. That's well, crazy, it's, isn't it? It is. And, you know, it's absolutely beautiful. And um, it's just so fine, this drape as well. If, um, if you want to sort of open one out to yes. have a look at it, because I think you really, really need to see this fabric. This yeah. is just the most gorgeous, gorgeous fabric. You're going to really enjoy playing. An enormous, enormous <laughs> amount. Oh, I've just wrecked the set, as always. Uh, but, yeah, you can see that actually is quite a, a lovely, a lovely um, medium weight drape. It has got some nice weight to it, actually. Yes, it this, has. It? So I'm thinking blouses are yeah. going to be particularly beautiful in this. Maybe you want a lovely long flowing dress for the... Because we're going to have another week of summer at some point, aren't we? Yeah, of course we and are. And you're going to make something very, very beautiful with this. It's easy to stitch as well, and we'll, we'll be doing some stitching over the next few oh. shows. Um, it's, it's just a beautiful, beautiful, fine fabric. It's going to go really, really well with the patterns on the show as well. Um, I'm just under there, Marcus. We're just about to get to it. Hang on, there it is. Bumblebees. <laughs> Bumblebees are limited already. The bumblebee fabric is limited already. We didn't, we didn't have a lot of that, and you've gone straight in and grabbed it. Now, listen, we have got some other fabrics on the show as well, but, again, just remind yourselves here, we've got three metres of your one, two, three, four, five, six different um, colour options on that drape fabric there for you for 13.97. Now, that's uh, for, uh, 14. What's fours into 14? Four, eight, 12 and a bit, isn't it? So it's about £3.50 a metre, it works out, something like that. That's ridiculous. And it's fabulous quality as well. Really, really nice. Um, OK. Is it? Four, eight, two, oh, OK, £4.66 a metre. Still, that's really, really good, though. Absolutely brilliant. Um, OK, so grab that while you can. The other fabrics that we have on the show are these lovely um, cotton lawns. And they are... <gasps> oh, I love them. I love, love, love. Now, this is a one metre uh, this time. The quality of these lawns is just tremendous, let me tell you. Um, I love the two florals. I, I do love this one as well. When they sit next to the other two, they might, this might push this into the, into the shade just a little bit. But as a standalone fabric, it's, it is absolutely beautiful. So that's the baby pink floral. And then you've got the fuchsia floral and you've got the uh, pink a cobalt floral as well, so uh, the blue or the fuchsia, and I think those two are going to be the first to go out because um, there's a little, there's a little slight nod and suggestion to um, <laughs> something rather grander there, don't you think? Uh, Twelve pounds and ninety-nine pence. Uh, it is, I believe, it is cut from the bolt as well. So if we order more than one unit you'll get it as one continuous length. So if you order two metres of one or four metres of another, it will come as one rather than uh, pre-cut one metres. They are amazing. Right. OK, very, very quickly. Uh, now, Rosella, when we were in our um, prep meeting for this show, looked at, and she knows everything that's in, the, in this bundle. This is a, a Millwood bundle. It's a sewing essentials bundle. And looked at the price of it and said that, it, that can't be right. Like, it simply cannot be right. Like, how can all of that be just fifteen ninety nine? 99 um, You can buy the pieces individually, but you're making extra savings by getting it all together here. And when we say essentials, my word, um, your tape measure here will cover all possibilities, let me tell you, because it's 1.2 metres long. It's... It's enormous, isn't it? it? It's, it's, I believe it's... That's a longer than that. It's, I think it's uh, a lot longer than Hang that. Hang on, let's, let it's, me just... I'm just going to pick this up, Marcus, sorry, just for a second. It is. 300 centimetres, it's yeah, three metres long. three metres. Sorry, I beg your pardon, yes. Three metres. That is an awful long tape measure. So if you are creating curtains, <laughs> anything like that... Yeah, it'll be it's fine. It's perfect. Absolutely. Instead of that 
and moving along. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. Do the whole thing. Three metres long. That's handy, isn't it? See, that's future-proof for you. Uh, what else do we have in our bundle? Uh, well, we've got our seam ripper is in here. Um, you've also got... You've got your tracing paper in there. Uh, your chalk pencils are in there as well. Can I just show you the overall? Because the overall is, is, I mean, it's it's stunning. Because you get your machine needles in there, and don't they say every new project, new machine yep. needle. Um, you've got your dressmaking pins in there. You've got your big pack of tracing paper. Uh, you also have your marking pencils. You've got your shearing elastic as well, which is brilliant for gathers. You can also use that in jewellery making as well. Um, that's a real big bundle, actually, if you're just starting out in your dressmaking. Um, just as useful for you if you're a quilter or do anything with fabric, quite, fr uh, quite frankly. Frankly, uh, plique anything you like. Uh, 388483 is your item number for that at 15.99. Right, we're talking um, patterns now as well because we can't talk dressmaking without having some um, some patterns to go with. You will have seen the Emporia patterns um, on shows before. I think I've I've been on. I think it was with Sasha recently. Our oh, Sasha Fancy uh, making these, and they're all named after lovely ladies. Uh, so we've got Alice and Cassie and Frida and Sienna um, on this show here. And you get all four of the patterns. Here they are. Have a closer look, why don't you? It's beautiful. Um, and you can get this bundle on flexible payments as well there for you. So you're making a nice little saving there. Uh, break it into two flexies, £27.98. Now, the Emporia uh, patterns are brilliant, Rosella, if you are just starting out in dressmaking. They do take you from zero to hero, don't they? They, they certainly do. They are yeah. really easy to follow. We'll have a good look at them, but um, you've got great instructions on that. And these are paper patterns. They're not tissue patterns. They're really good quality paper yes. patterns. They are. They're really, really beautiful. And they make lovely designs as well. You might have seen of some of the, um, of some of the designs before because they are super, super beautiful. I love them. 559417 is your item number for those. We do have other patterns on the show as well, which I want to show you. Um, and these are sort of um, considered sort of premium um, patterns. They're absolutely beautiful. Now, these are the Avid Seamstress patterns. Um, and they are lovely. Look at that sundress absolutely perfect for this time of the year this kind of outfit as well isn't it it's absolutely beautiful 278463 is your item number again for a pattern to run sizes 6 through to 22 um, is absolutely tremendous isn't it so that's 278463 there are other patterns on the show as well we've got the day dress oh that's very glam isn't it that's very glam is it that's very summer holiday I like it. Um, 015504 for that one, again, £16.49. and pence. You can see as well, all of the fabric requirements are actually on the patterns and all the pictures from the front and the back of the packaging um, should be on the website as well. So if you want to match that up with the fabrics that you are actually getting as well, it is tremendous. I love it. So this one is the coat pattern. Oh, I love that. Actually, you know what? Now's a good time to start thinking about making coats, isn't it? Uh, getting towards that time of the year. It won't be long. It won't be long. 847837 is your item number. OK, next one. We've got the line dress, the A-line dress. Well, that is really smart, actually. <clears throat> and that's where having a dress form will really come into its own, actually, uh, for something like an A-line dress. Being able to mark out that hem and it match your bust size, your waist size, your hips and everything else, I think is really, really good. 864769. Now, you know we always find you needles in haystacks here at the craft store. Get yourself ready if you work with fabric. 612150 is your fusible sew iron-on white natural interfacing. Now, this is a whole 10-metre bolt of this that you are getting, which is ordinarily 29.99. Today, 19.99. Now, I'm hoping that we have got enormous stocks of those, but I think with that kind of deal, however big the stock is, it ain't going to be around for long. So if you want it, 612-150, the whole 10-metre bolt of that fusible um, iron-on. Yeah. 
It's brilliant. 612150 at 19.99. Right, let's go back to our one day special then. And this is this wonderful, um, this wonderful body double. It's just the br <laughs> most brilliant way of describing it, Rosella. Um, so let's start at the beginning. First of all, why do we need one? Okay, because it is a, uh, sorry, a body, <laughs> be careful with that. It is a body double. Yeah. So what you're going to do is you're going to recreate all your lumps and bumps and curves and dips on this particular body double. Okay. And you're not going to be embarrassed about that. It doesn't matter what size it is. It doesn't matter that actually I'm going to have to pad up here because I have lots of underbust here. Yep. Th this is going to be me and what it means is that actually when I do create a piece of clothing it's actually going to fit me and that's going to be great because that's exactly what I want it to do. So where do we start? Well the first thing we've done and I've actually just done this is as much as you can make it your height because we've, we've got the great, and you mentioned this, Derek, we've got a hem marker on this, mm -hmm. but unless it's actually at the same height, then we're never going to actually know. Yeah, it's no good. Well, absolutely, exactly where it is. So, um, it's very, very adjustable. You can see it's in panels, so our chest is going to adjust sideways, because the other thing is, if you measure yourself, and you measure yourself, you don't know all the way around how big your back is, how big your front is. Yes. So if you've got a fuller figure at the front, yep. you, you need to measure from there forwards, not from there forwards, because otherwise all you're going to do is end up with clothes then that are really saggy at the back Absolutely. and tacked across the front and they're not going to fit well. Yep. So you've got to start measuring yourself and you need to make a note of these measurements. Um, and, you, and you're going to be very brave in these shows, oh, aren't you? Yeah, you're going I don't to care. I'm going to measure do your myself. Own measurements, aren't you? <laughs> Bless you. Um, this particular pattern, the Abbey Seamstress, and all their patterns, all of our patterns on our show are really great. They're all paper patterns. Mm. You can see this is one of mine. <clears throat> I love the fact that you've got gusseted um, envelopes for these. If you've ever had patterns in the past and you try and force them back into the packet, they never go. Yeah. But what it's also got on here, that's the bit I want, is there's a little card on how to take measurements. So it shows you how to do the measurements, but then it's also got a little area for you to make a note of those measurements. So you need to do this. Now that's your measurements now in time. Do remember that because actually if you do lose a little bit of weight, maybe you gain a little bit of weight, mm -hmm. that's the great thing about having an adjustable mannequin is you're not then re-strapping lots and lots of wadding back on it. All you're doing actually is turning a little dial and it's like, okay, yeah, yeah okay. That was the Easter eggs. That's yeah. fine. We don't mind about that. Yeah, I can that. deal with that. Yeah, we can deal with that, can't yeah, yeah. we? So the first thing you want to do is measure your bust. So <laughs> forgive me for touching parts of me. And well, I'm going to do that I'll for the next day. I'll avert my gaze, I think. <laughs> <laughs> now, ideally, you need a friend to do this. Because... And we are friends, Rosella, but well, I mean... There's, we're not there's, that close. There's, there's, limits. there's <laughs> limits to uh, friendships, aren't there? So you want the fullest part of your bust. Yeah. The apex of your bust, mm -hmm. which is basically your nipples. OK, <gasps> we've said it. It's, got, it's out there. That is where you, you need to measure. You're allowed to say apex at this time of the night. <laughs> <laughs> Now, what you do need to do, and I'm just going to turn, is it needs to be straight. So if it's hanging down, yeah. you need it, which is why if you've got a friend just for the measuring, then that's really great. So you're going to measure that at the fullest part. Yeah. You need to measure it with your favourite underwear on, or the underwear that you're planning to wear for the dress that you're creating. Right. So maybe it's, you know, lots of oomph. Do you, pl do you, pl oh, do you plan those kind of things? Do you? See, yes, boys don't have to we, do any of this, do they? <laughs> sort of thing. Well, we, we have a selection of favourites oh. and it's likely to be one of those. If okay. I'm going to go for this lovely drape and I'm going to go for that pink carnation, I'm not going to wear a black bra. No. Ideally. No. Probably. Possibly. Who knows? Um, I'm going to perhaps go for a skin coloured bra. Yes. So I don't know which one to go for. Oh, blimey. So it's a minefield, isn't we it? Measure, well, you see, now you see that's already moved because I'm already two inches bigger. Perhaps I'll just keep with that measurement. That's fine. <laughs> so this is like me, me wish list. All right, we'll go for 38 on that. That's fine. Now, this is in a top. I didn't think you'd want to see me in the underwear, to be fair. The other thing you need to do is your waist. Now, excuse me, just for one moment, I just need to pop and get my tape. So just have a look at the mannequin just for one second. Great. It's come yep. back yet. Right, I'm your scissors. OK, I'm back. So for your waist, if you get a piece of ribbon, yep, that should do. Tape measure will do it. Bit of ribbon, anything at all. 
you want to tie it around your natural waist. Now, your natural waist... Yeah, where is that? If we do this, we do our aerobics... Oh, where the crease... Yeah, it's where you bend. Oh. So, it's, it's <laughs> not necessarily here to hold our trousers up, and it's not necessarily oh. down there. It's actually there. So, what you're going to do, and I can't tie it around my natural waist, because... I've got mic, mic packs and things attached to my trousers. So, oh, um, yeah, so it's going to make you slightly it's, yes, higher I'm, waisted than expected. It is, or, or quite a lot larger than anticipated. But anyway, <laughs> but you want to keep that on for a while. So we'll say that's our natural waist. And if you haven't got anything attached to your back, ideal, go back to your tape measure and you're going to make a measurement there. Well, we'll hope that's not my natural waist. There you go. It's close enough. We'll say 32. Yeah. So you're going to make Considering you are fully clothed as well. <laughs> exactly. We don't yeah. expect you to get that far. No, I'm, ju I'm, I'm just not. <laughs> um, so, no, you, you, I mean, uh, Kirsty's just asking as well. You, you should be uh, in the privacy of your own home, in the all together when you're taking your measurements, Or, or in your underwear. Right, okay. Because, you know, certain age, with your underwear, things pop into place where they weren't before. I can't even say that. You know, I'm going to go straight onto hips before I get into trouble here. Yeah. Um, now, Probably... Probably there. <laughs> now your hips. Yes. So this has got to be the fullest part of your body. So measure it a few times. I've got a 39, oh, I've got a mic pad mm. there. So we've got right up to 41 on that bit. And we've gone down to 38 on that bit. Yeah. So again, go for the biggest that you can. 30, let's go for 39 on that. All right, so that's our, our three major body parts. Now we're going to fine tune it. We're going to do a neck. Now your neck... If I, again, I'm struggling to get that round because I've actually got wires around my neck, which you won't have, <laughs> or bolts or screws. So, comfortable. We're not trying to choke ourselves with any of these clothes. So, we've got 14 and a half. So, okay. I'm just going to write neck, 14.5. <clears throat> now, I need my back length. Now, this is going to be really tricky to do on my own. But you're going to do it from the nape of your neck. The nape of your neck is where you've got that bony bit at the back of your neck. If you're doing it yourself, maybe put a necklace on and then measure it from that necklace because that tends to sit, sit quite nicely. Uh, okay, right. And then it, what you're actually going to do is you're going to measure from that bony bit. And if I just turn, and you're going to then measure down, <laughs> still let me take measure, to your bit of ribbon that's round your waist. Uh, okay, so right. you've then got your natural... Your, your back length on there as well yeah. so this is why we have still got this bit of ribbon stand up as straight as you can that's as right well. and it's it's quite difficult to do this but on your own so yeah, if you've good. got a friend we'll go for 16 inches yeah um so that was um that was our back wasn't it okay um if you're doing cuffs around your sleeves you want your bicep nice no, <laughs> tricky again you'll want your bicep measurement won't you and you know Superman, get the largest bicep measurement that you possibly can. Okay. So we're now on 12, 28 inches. Oh. 12 inches. How many? How many? Check 12. out those guns, eh? <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> so, and you've got to add, just keep adding measurements whilst you're there with your underwear on and you've got a helper. Yep. Then get as many measurements as you can. So, underbust. We talked about underbust. A right. lot of people, me included, have a big measurement under our bust. So there's, there's not a massive amount of difference between my bust and my waist. Um, I, I sort of go for, you know, once upon a time I had a waist before children, but since then it just disappeared and never came back. So my under bust is 34. And that's also going to help you with cup sizes as well. So you, you're going to measure that. What you can also do then is sort of measure sides. You've still got this bit of tape here, so any measurements you can, you know, maybe from your low, your upper bust as well, just yes. under your armpits yes. as well, just so that you make sure that absolutely everything fits. I've lost the end of my tape measure now. Mm -hmm. It so is three metres long. It is, three, it is a <laughs> super tape measure, it That's really great. is. Especially if you're three metres wide. <laughs> You could take the measurements of the world's tallest man, couldn't you? I could, couldn't I? And breathe. 36, because actually you want to be able to breathe. So that, that's your, your upper bust measurement on there. Okay. So you've now got a whole string of these measurements, mm -hmm. and it's time then that you can then start adjusting your mannequin. Now, I did talk about from the sides to the front and from the sides to the back. Yes. Um, yes, you can measure, measure from the sides to the front yourself, 
the back yeah. might be a little bit more tricky on your own. We'll try it. We'll just try it with the back. So is, is that so where's that from then? It's your side seams, Derek. If you were stitched up the side. Oh, so where the so the middle of there. Yes. Round the back. Yes, round the back. Okay, so right. that you know which of your chest measurement yes. which is the back and which is the front. And ideally they should add up. So and then you're gonna measure Again. Oh, okay, right. So the combination of those two measurements, obviously the front ones and the back ones, stop you from having a, a saggy back in your clothing or, or a very a, tight a front. Tight yeah, absolutely. Oh, yes. <laughs> you know what I mean. Don't We're going to have so be... much fun with this. So I think I it's about a. It's the wrong show to give to a boy, isn't it? It's really? <laughs> than the front. <laughs> but I know how great these are, by the way, because <laughs> even if you feel like. Well, I just make the odd bit and piece for me. This is going to make things so much easier. Because if ever you've made a top or a blouse or a jacket or something for yourself, and someone you know has loved it and sort of said to you, oh, you wouldn't make me one of those, would you? To have their exact measurements and to be able to, you know, create it on the body double, which is what the adjustable form is all about, it means that you can be more confident in actually making it. And of course you can then turn into a designer because you can kind of go patternless then almost, can't you? Yeah, absolutely. If you do, if you want to do your own draping, you want to create your own patterns, yeah, yeah. then yeah, absolutely you, you can, can do that. Because you can pin fabrics directly That's to the form. one of the great things yeah, about yeah. this is if I just get some pins, that yes, you can. And you are going to be pinning bits to this form anyway because as you, as you do it, you are going to, but you can see that yes, you can then pin to this. Yeah, and that's the thing also that allows you, even on the, the size ranges that this goes to, so the one day special is this one here, so that goes dress sizes 8 to 16, bust measurements go 33 to 41, waist goes 26 to 35, and hips go 36 to 44, but you might be thinking, well, um, okay, well I, I might be a size 12, but actually uh, my waist is more than 35 mm -hmm. um, inches, so what do I do then? This won't work for me, but you can make it work for you. Of course you can, because you then can put your pattern pieces on here, and you can see actually where it might need a little bit of adjustment. Yeah. So, you know, maybe it does go in quite a lot, but you don't. Yeah. Then, then it's time then to just ease that out a little bit. Yeah. And it just means it's so very, very useful. The other useful measurement you might find is your front as well. And that's, we tied our tape around our, um, our waist, and you're also going to do that on your mannequin as well, so that you've always got a natural waist for your mannequin too. Uh, Okay. And that's sort of going to stay on there, which means yes. that then you, you can play around with your So waistlines. whatever else you change, you won't adjust that waist. Well, it'll always be that height, won't it? Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. that is your natural waist height. Yes. So how do we actually adjust this? So if you're making very small adjustments, this is starts at around a size 8. If you're a size 10, then you're probably just going to adjust it by turning the dials. If you want to go a little bit larger, maybe you're going to go from an 8 to a 14, mm -hmm. loosen the neck first. So you just, can you see that? You just press that in. Let me do that again. Press that in. Yeah. And that will open it up. And we will adjust the neck back down to your measurement afterwards. Yes. And so all you need to do, you can see how tight it gets. And then just by turning it, you can see how loose it gets. And mm -hmm. that makes it a whole lot easier. Um, just before we start measurement, let me just show you on the side here. These are, this is, we talked about the 11 points of adjustment on here. Yeah. And you've got the little wheels here. So you're going to create it larger, you're going to make it smaller. What Can I just, uh, at this point, tell you that there are a lot of adjustable forms on the market where these points of adjustment are like a little keyhole and they give you a key to put in it to actually turn it around and adjust it. And those keys, you get lots of them because they break all the time and they're a real faff and of course you can lose them. With the wheel, you have no worries about that whatsoever. They stay in place forever. That's right. So you don't have to worry about losing bits. And this is very easy to put together, by the way. This doesn't come fully formed and all made up for you. Uh, it comes to you, and we may show you in the 8 o'clock show, possibly, how we put this together out of the box. It's a very, very simple. But for this first show, I wanted us to kind of go over why we need one and why it's just so darn good. 
because this is such a good price to get one. I mean, you've seen adjustable forms, uh, retailing, you've seen, I'm sure, versions, even on the television, three, four, five hundred pounds for the like professional tailor kind of look. Um, and actually, you're talking about less than a hundred pounds here. You've got it forever. You only ever need to buy it once, and it does such a myriad of different things. Yeah, it certainly does. This, you'll notice, has got little tape towards the sides of the wheels, and that's so that you can personalise it. So let's say that I'm going to create this to fit me, then perhaps I put a little R on one of those sides to say that's for a seller's measurements for this, this and this. Oh, okay. However, maybe Franny, my daughter, she because <laughs> when I made this fruit dress, she says, oh, I'd like one of those. Uh -huh. So maybe I measure Franny and I yep. put F on that side. So yep. I know then that when it's showing that that's actually our personal measurements. That's so that's idea. it's a great idea if you are creating for not only yourself but for someone else as well. So um, let's turn you back round. We need names for all of them as well, don't we? Absolutely need names. For the measuring measuring points. Oh, for the for the for actual the, for forms. The, for the actual forms, yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, should we start with the main one? Should we call her something beginning with an F? F. Should we call her Fenella? Fenella. Fenella form. Fenella. <laughs> there you go. It's got to be one that starts with an F, hasn't it? And then we'll 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 go to the others as we uh, progress through the show. <laughs> so let's measure Fenella's top of form. So we're at 18 there. We need to increase that to 20. So we're then going to, and you can see just how easy it is to actually increase that. Now, you, if you are increasing it by a substantial amount, a bit more. do all of them. So work your way around right. rather than just do one because then you might find that the wheels get a little bit tight because it's like, okay, yes, Superman. But, one of, but also one of the top tips here is um, if you're going to adjust this, so if you're thinking, okay, well, it comes to me and it's all closed up at the beginning and I know I'm not a size 8, you might, you might be saying, well, I'm a 12, so I'm going to open them all up and you'll go to one of the wheels and you'll try and open one wheel completely up. What you need to do is do little by little, work your way around and keep working your way around little by little. Don't try and do one completely and then go to the other side and do that one completely. Do it little by little all of the way around because then you won't stress the joints on the actual workings of the form itself. That's so true. And you can actually see inside, I think we can see through probably because we've opened it up, just exactly how you can see this. So um, I'm going to take just a few moments to do my chest and and start working on this just before I, d I let you go back to Derek I yeah. just want to show you can you see this here where I've got my, my fingers grabbed under there mm -hmm. underneath there's an adjustment to lengthen we talked about having a longer body or a yes. knot yes. Um, so if you are long in the body then you can actually bring the mannequin down as well so this is where again that that measurement back of your neck to the waist front of yeah. your throat to the waist is going to come in there if you do know that you are long bodied and that's really really important as well to get that bit right because if you the body on your on your dressmaking isn't long enough and you've worked out the hem based on the body size of the mannequin as it is right now and that's not you, then your hem's going to fall, maybe yeah. not where you thought it I, was. I, absolutely, yes. And then you, you sort of look at it and you think, oh, because I know that often you'll buy shop bought garments and maybe they've got to gather high up on the bus and you, you put them on and it's like, oh, okay, well, that's an interesting look I hadn't yeah. thought I was going to get. Yeah, yeah, know, no, so. absolutely. <laughs> um, okay, right, let's just do a reminder, shall we then, um, of what we've got on the show. So the one day special is the adjustable dress form. Now this is the small size, so this runs dress size 8 to 16. And again, let me run, run through bust, waist and hips again for you. Uh, so bust 33 to a 41, waist 26 to 35, hips 36 to 44, all in inches of course. Um, and that is our one day special. Now, if I can just talk to you for a second, the price that we should have this on for, and it's a purely, this is a purely a numbers game for this over this 24 hours because the stock we've negotiated here is, is a, a sufficient enough stock quantity wise for us to say not £150 or £149.99. We can actually slash that price by a third, which is very unusual, unheard of, £99.99. But here's the magic of what we can do. Because that $99.99, you can break down into three flexible payments. No long, complicated sign-ups, no credit checks, no hard searches, nothing like that. Interest-free, three payments of 33 and 33, uh, which is really, really good. I have to say, these are absolute 
they are a godsend if you're a dressmaker because they they stand still. You don't need to make them a cup of tea, which is great, which means you can get on and do the dressmaking and everything else. The sizing is accurate. You can make it like a body double to you. It's absolutely phenomenal. It really is. And this is an opportunity for you. Uh, and, and can I say, the fact that we've launched this on a Saturday night and it runs into Sunday, I would say, on television, um, fabric days, always the weekend, but Sunday is always going to be probably the larger of those two days, um, I would say, just on average. So you watching this show right now, Fortune favours the brave, so you can get ahead of what will happen tomorrow, because what will happen tomorrow is there will be a lot more fabric makers' eyes on the screen of the craft store tomorrow confirmed to a Saturday, com opposed to a Saturday night. OK, I've just heard it confirmed that once the stock that we have got of both of the options, so the one-day special and indeed the larger version, which I'll come to in a second, once the quantity has gone, that is absolutely it. Certainly, if it does come back, it probably will have to be at much closer to that £150 mark, which is the price it suggested that we should really be retailing this for. We're doing it today as a one-day special, and we've got to make it special. And there's no point just saying, oh, will you make a £4 saving? Because you'd be like, oh, big deal. Uh, you know, 150 quid saving £4, not really gonna, it's not really going to butter any toast with me. Um, £50 saving, though, because that's £50 to buy fabric. That's £50 to add to your stash in some way. It's brilliant. And breaking it down makes it really, really easy as well. Right, so that's the one-day special. So we have got the larger uh, mannequin as well, and that's this one here. Um, oh, right. Now, we only have, of the, the one-day special stock, we do have... I would say it's a considerable stock. I wouldn't say it was massive. I'd say it was considerable for a one-day special. Um, this, we only have a tenth of in the number, and 40% of that stock... Oh, sorry, I beg your pardon. Approaching 60% of the stock of that has sold out. Gosh, th this won't be around tomorrow, Rosella, then? It won't, will it? This won't be around tomorrow, I don't think, at all. Approaching 60% of the stock already. Now, this run sizes 14 to 20. And let's do the... Um, sorry, Marcus. Let's do the, um, the bust, waist and hips for those as well. So, bust on the larger size, 39 to 47. The waist, 32 to 40. And the hips... 41 to 49. Now, when we give you those numbers, you can add to those numbers. You can on both of the adjustable forms here. What you would actually need to do is actually pin um, some wadding to the extra size that you need to add. You don't necessarily need to do that. I mean, if that was a if that was a waist, for instance, you could you could visually see that there was enough kind of wriggle room. You're at the maximum. You need to go a little bit more. You could see that there was the wriggle room. But you can actually add wadding and padding, particularly if you are heavier busted. And I think that you know that may be that may be one of the main kind of areas where you might need to to add because, uh, as you can see, she's she's quite generously you know pre-gifted. But you might want to you might want to add a bit more. I say I can't believe I'm talking about these kind of things. It's amazing. Anyway, what now we've got Fenella as our first one. What, what, what should we call this one? Have you got any suggestions? Drop them in uh, studio at thecraftstore.com. So we have Fenella, which is our one day special. But we have we have our, our slightly fuller fuller Fenella uh, here, and we'd like to give her a. a Another name. Uh, so 771851 is your item number. Can I just, a uh, quick mention, I know we haven't had time to mention it yet because we only have an, an hour and it's just never long enough for a show like this because really we should dedicate the whole hour to the adjustable form. But we also have machines on the show today as well, which I haven't even mentioned so far. Um, we actually have... Yeah, we've got the T65, uh, the Britannia sewing machine. We've got that in. We won't be using it in this show, but we'll possibly see it in demo either later or tomorrow, I would, I would guess, with, with, with Rosella. So the Britannia T65 uh, is there. It's on Flexi as well. So it is under £500. It has got a range of different... I think there's something like 60, 64, 65 stitches. 65? Uh, the things my brain holds sometimes is, is bizarre. Uh, oh, T65, <laughs> right, okay, maybe that's the clue. <laughs> 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 
that'd, be, that'd be a good reason to call it a T65, wouldn't that'd it, really? Fantastic. <laughs> Pliny, that they know their stuff, Britannia, don't they? Uh, anyway, so that's under £500. It's not the only machine on the show as well, because I also want to show you the cover stitch as well. Now, I have never seen the cover stitch before. I've, I've, we've got it physically in the studio as well. Uh, but for um, finishing your garments, for hemming your gar uh, garments, there's a number of different stitches, isn't there, on the cover stitch machine. Would you just in a nutshell? Yeah, absolutely. Tell me so what it, will do. It, it basically it gives you the perfect hem. If you're stitching jersey, if you are wearing a t-shirt now and yep. you have a look at your cuff, you'll find that it's got this sort of I've worn black to make it really difficult. Yay. You've got this sort of crisscross and it's it's got on the outside you've got two rows of stitching and on the inside it's crisscross so it's actually finished and hemmed at the same time right. and that's using two needles. On this you've actually got the ability to use three needles and it in several different positions. You can't just hem with it. I mean I've actually there's a black and white spotty top behind us a, a Frieda top and I've actually stitched the entire garment on the cover stitch it makes hemming though an absolute dream if like me you are not that's not your favorite yeah. pastime to be fair um it just makes it so easy you fold it over it's finished it's wonderful so if you've not actually used a cover stitch it's worth having a little bit of a google just have a look at it and this one is a cracking price it's great value for money because i did that just that yeah, brilliant. Um, and they're only just back in stock. And there's only such a small number of them, again, in stock as well. There is more detail if you shop the show and have a little look um, on the website as well. There is more sort of background information there as well. Um, right, fabrics next, very, very quickly, before we go back and continue our overview of the adjustable um, form. Oh, the bumblebee fabric in the drape fabric uh, is now a technical sellout. So I'm technically going to remove it, shall I? <laughs> yes. Shall I? Yes. Uh, well done if you managed to get it. It's coming out. It's coming out. Yeah, buzz off you. Buzz off you. Auntie Molly will look after you. Uh, right, we have five other options. I'm not surprised it went straight away uh, because with these you get a three metre length of this beautiful, beautiful um, drape fabric. So this is the white spot fabric, which is uh, beautiful. That's not a sheer fabric either, is it? He says, I've got lots of layers of it here, so let me try and get down to one layer. Oh, no, it's not a shear at all. Look, here's my hand. It's coming. Uh, there you go. So you can't see me through that. No. So there you go. So that'd be perfect for uh, for blouses. And... Oh, but a skirt, it would just hang beautifully, wouldn't it? Can oh, you yes. imagine a gathered skirt yeah, on that? Yeah, something with a nice gather yeah. would be, be beautiful. Uh, then we have got the pink carnation, which is very, very summery. Do you know, actually, this would be lovely just for a nice sort of uh, a throw or a sarong or something like that. Or I maybe we'll design something later with I th it. I think we should play with that. that yeah. Don't you? We could have great fun. But yeah, that's what is perfect. Um, maybe a little shirt just with a pair of jeans, something like that. Mm. It's really going to dress up an outfit. Yeah, beautiful. Um, then we have the navy and pink waves. Again, I'm going to do the uh, I'm going to do the sheer test. <laughs> Hang on, there's a hand coming, Marcus. Hang on. <laughs> there you go. Oh, so that's nice. That's a nice fabric with a gorgeous body to it as well, isn't it? That's pretty cool, isn't it? That's very sophisticated, actually. That is, that, is very is that yeah. skirty fabric. Oh, or... well, I'm thinking actually quite a nice dress, little navy jacket, maybe oh, wedding, something yes. like that. A bit like a sort of Bretony style. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. that could be quite cool. Very nice. Uh, we could do all this designing later. Well, <laughs> actually, I say that we've only got ten minutes of this show left. This one is pink floral and I love this um, it's really nice because it's got that kind of mono finish to it again this is definitely not not uh, not a sheer either but very very lightweight just perfect kind of um, makeup, kimono I'm thinking for that yeah for this time of the year mm. just perfect you know when we're all overheating even I came in today first show and I was overheating and I thought hang on a second I don't I don't think there's such thing as a, a manopause is there I don't think <laughs> Certainly not when you're in your late 20s plus VAT, surely. <laughs> <laughs> Manopause. I mean, I'll just, I'll just get grumpy. That's it, that, that'd be the only thing that happens to me. Just get grumpier, should I say. Grumpier, Molly. Yeah, I knew. I knew that was coming. OK, and then the last option is your white floral. Actually, it's not a white. It's, a, it's, a, a, a very, it's an off-white. It's a creamy white. Again, not sheer. Winter white, I think, isn't it, maybe? Yeah, Something oh, I don't like know. I, I think it I think it'd be very springtime as well, actually, but... Um... Maybe an ecru colour. Yes. Mm -hmm. We're liking that. Yeah, we'll go with that. <laughs> Fabulous. Anyway, three metres of um, either of those. £13.97. Bear in mind, we've sold out of one option as well. When it's gone, it's gone. So everything we have, we have. 
Right, here is your cotton lawn. Oh, possibilities with these. Oh, yes. These are perfect for what we're talking about tonight as well. Um, now, I know that uh, the stock that we have is the stock that we have here, and I know that these two florals, they, they do shade out this fabric a little bit, and I don't want you to disregard this fabric. In fact, I'm going to reorder them because I'm going to put the florals together just because otherwise, yeah, new order time, uh, only because this fabric is so delicious, but it's going to get shaded out by the sheer party that the other two bring. So... We've got a metre of fabric. It's 145 was the width on this, wasn't it? 145 centimetres. It's a very subtle fabric, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I think this is absolutely beautiful, and that's going to create the most lovely dress, Yeah. I, th I think. Do you, Molly? Yeah, yeah, can definitely. You, can you see the waft from a distance? Look, look. Ooh, the one see. thing cotton lawn does is That's hang lovely. absolutely beautifully yeah, when it's yeah. ironed up and it's one that doesn't require a lot of maintenance. I do like a cotton lawn. Um, there's actually this, the sundress behind you. Is, it's not in a, one of these fabrics. It's in a lawn fabric and you can see how it just, once it's got pleats, but then it just drapes down from there and it hangs and it's beautiful to stitch as well. It really is. It's, it's a nice fabric. You'll like it. It's stunning. Um, and let's just, I mean, we can't go without mentioning these two because these are wonderful. I feel like I'm blending in with this one uh, I think I'd actually prefer that blue than this blue to be honest with you I love I'd have a shirt out of this definitely yes. yep that's really nice so it's his fuchsia floral and cobalt blue uh, cobalt floral and fuchsia floral the cobalt's blue and the fuchsia's not uh, so there you go it's a meter and it's 12.99 well done uh, right OK, that's enough of me and fabrics. OK. Uh, so where do we get to? So well, you've matched up your... Oh. We're doing pretty well. Oh, I can but, see a brassiere now. Well, I don't know if I've seen know, it all tonight. I'll tell you now. It's got to be done. Right, go on. We took that underbust measurement, didn't yes. we? Now, when I get the underbust measurement on here, yes. my upper bust doesn't fit. It's too small. So it, there's not enough contrast right. between that and that. So we have to add a little bit of contrast like we do at home. So here it comes. <laughs> so, what so, are you going <laughs> uh, to... Very rarely lost for words. <laughs> very rarely. But I just don't have anything to add. <laughs> and, and, and Marcus has gone for his trade shot, <laughs> MCU shot, which is very close. Um, okay, thank you. So this is now the other thing you do want to do on your mannequin is is stand stand it by side by side. Check your shoulder height. Check your boob height. Okay. So it it needs to be on here. Needs to be about the same height as on here. Okay. So you need to do this. But what you're going to do now, if you're my age, you won't have done this since you're a teenager. You need to put stuffing in there. <laughs> You know, like we did when we used to go into town. So you can either pop a little bit of toy stuffing in there, a little bit of wadding in there. <laughs> I've never known Derek like, lost for words pre before. And you're actually going to pad your mannequin to fit you, because it's really important that this mannequin does actually fit you. So um, you're gonna you're gonna pad that out, and you know this is, this is an underwire bra. Who needs one of those nowadays since lockdown? That's gone out the window, hasn't it? So you're just they're gonna measure it Hayley. again. Hayley, <laughs> Hayley, come help me. It's no good asking for help. Save me. <laughs> Save me. <laughs> So you're just going to check your measurements on that and maybe this is the bra that actually going to wear with the garment that you're actually going to create. You're actually um, telling us that this is your favourite one. I don't even why. I don't even know why I'm asking that. I have no idea. I know you don't want an answer to that. No, though. I don't. No. <laughs> Move the on. The other thing we did talk about is yes. if you've got lumps and bumps that, um, you know, you've got your own particular special lumps and bumps, mm -hmm. little memories that are in there, then what you can do is you can add to your mannequin. So, you know, maybe you have got a high hip bone that is slightly more prominent. Then what you can do is that you can actually then pin wadding to, what do we call her? I forgot, Fenella. Fenella, yeah. So you can actually, I think you had a pin under your bra, dear. Oh, it's yeah, gone. Yeah, she did. So um, you can pin if necessary where exactly you need it and then when you've made up Fenella and she's not looking her best bless her is she what not really what, what I do with my she looks mannequin like she's, she had better nights 
<laughs> if my mummy can at home, because actually, when we make clothes, we got sh that's a little bit of a you, you would actually smooth your wadding in a little bit better, perhaps put a layer over it. Yeah. But then what you want to do is slip something over it. This is actually I took this off my mannequin this morning as we came out, and it's just a little slip then, <laughs> and that just then <laughs> smooths her over. <laughs> You know what I've just noticed as well? Go on. That brassiere that, uh, that Fenella's, Fenella's wearing there, the straps are, are two colours. There's like two tones yes. to the strap. They're partly <laughs> teal blue and partly purple. Is she's, that a thing with she, brass straps? She's a classy girl, Fenella. <laughs> very, very designer. <laughs> so what you would do then That's is better. when she's she's a little bit more modest now, and yeah. Fenella's going to look pretty cool in your craft room and your sewing room, so you want her to look nice, pull that off, dear. Right, and you would then... She's got an awful lump at the bottom. She's doing that thing where, where she's showing her bra straps and... Uh, she's very trendy. Um, but this is, how, this is how then your model is going to look. And so if you have added to it, <laughs> then um, it's going to smooth it all right. You could also perhaps use something like a jersey tube that's a little bit more close fitting. <laughs> <laughs> what did Marcus just call you? <laughs> I don't uh, talking of talking of what we should call things, just just very, very quickly, <laughs> uh, we've had an email from uh, from Jane in Warwick. Oh hi Jane. Hi Jane, thank you for your lovely email. Thank you for making me say all these things I'm about to say. Mind you, I mean, like, any, anything, really, anything goes now. We've got literally a minute and a half. Um, we wanted a name. We've got Fenella, which is the one-day special. We wanted a name for this one. Um, Jane's come up with quite a few, actually. Uh, Bigarella, uh, maybe. Yeah, yep. Yeah. <laughs> Plusarella. <laughs> Chesty Backstitch. <laughs> Madam. <laughs> and... Hugh Chander. Ah. Oh, Hugh. oh, no, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not even going to guess what that could actually be. I'm, uh, yeah, no, I, 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 um, we could, we could, I don't know, could we go with Chesty Backstitch? I think we could. <laughs> Chesty Backstitch. I'm not doing any of these shows tomorrow, am I? <laughs> I can leave you with that name, can't you, for the rest of the 24 hours. <laughs> Chesty Backstitch it is then. Fabulous. Um, OK, just to let you know, by the way, on the uh, larger size, which is the size that sits, uh, fits size 14 to 20, two-thirds of the stock has sold out and gone. I have to say, Rosella, it's been... <laughs> look, oh, my word. Right, listen, thankfully, you're in Haley's safe hands in an hour's time. <laughs> Do enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you so much, Rosella. Right, um, I might just kind of have a little lie down. I'm going to the safe haven of marbling next. Be back with Rosella and Hayley, thankfully, in an hour. So, as I say, whatever's left of me, we'll be uh, going over to 35 Design Space with some marbling now. And then Chesty Backstitch and Fenella and Rosella and Haley back in an hour. Hi everyone, I'm Phil Martin. I've been a paper crafter for well over 20 years now and a designer for just over 10 years. Sentimentally Yours is my multi-award winning brand of clear stamps, rubber stamps. I've now also introduced lots of craft dyes in there, designer papers. I have my mediums where we've introduced the Flawless Media brand into the Sentimentally Yours family. We aim to inspire you to be educational and to teach you how to get the most from the products that we're bringing to you. The Sentimentally Yours family has grown uh, to include my good friend Julia Watts and our new designer Trudy Howard. Hopefully we're all going to bring something different to the show so you're going to be enriched with lots of different ideas and inspiration. I'm Donna and this is my brother Simon and we're Pearly Winks Craft Supplies. We have a good selection of inks. We started with our Winks, which are just a water-based ink, and then went on to the pearls. We've added some chalks, we've got some glitter sprays, and then we've added some beautiful stamps to complement the inks. 
Our pearl sprays and our pearly winks are loaded with mica, so they give you amazing results on your projects. Hiya, I'm Hazel Eaton from Pink Frog. Pink Frog is an established company. You may have seen us in shows up and down the country. We have a wide range of designs and we're particularly known for our flower dyes and flower stamps. On our shows, I hope to bring you many hints and tips and techniques to inspire you, the crafter, at home. Hi, I'm Lou from Studio Light. Studio Light has been around for about 40 years now. They're based in the Netherlands. It's a family-run business with a great heritage. Over the 40 years, Studio Light have evolved. They listen to me, the demonstrator, and you, the customers, and really take our ideas on board. So make sure you don't miss the Studio Light shows. Uh, here we are, welcome back. Yeah, I'm still here. I haven't, I haven't run, I haven't run and left the building because oh, it's another chance to get involved as well. Uh, back with 35 Design Space and Dina, welcome back. Thank you for having me. We had such fun, didn't we, we earlier? We did in the paint pouring hour. With our paint pouring, it was yep. brilliant. You can see the, the fruits of my labour on my Facebook page, Derek Marks on the craft store. Uh, it's brilliant. Mm -hmm. uh, my work of art is drying somewhere. In the, it's in the drying gallery. Uh, here right now. Yeah, I, I might sign it as well because that will increase its value by all pence as the years go by. Um, and I'm going to give that away later in the week in my Facebook page. Now, we did promise that we'd have a different show um, for the seven o'clock hour. And for this hour, we're talking marbling. And this is where, well, uh, my journey with you uh, began yeah. last time, but I didn't get to have a go, but I am going to this time. You're having a go this time. And I can't wait. Excellent. Marbling. Um, it's, it's quite a skill, actually, isn't it? There's quite a lot involved to it. Yeah. But again, you can be just as creative as you want to be. Yeah, it's super creative. You've got a lot of creative freedom. And at the end of it, you make a gorgeous piece of paper or a fabric. So you can then continue your creativity with that. But it's quite a historic craft. Um, there's different ways that you can make it more modern as well. Um, but it is now classed as an endangered craft. So it's a really good one to continue. And we would really like to promote oh, it as well. Turning, we're turning that around show by yeah. show. Um, now... First item, you're probably be thinking, hang on a second, I thought we were marbling. <laughs> this looks like it's been pre-marbled, but yeah. because we're here at the craft store, and this was a, a lovely evolution of Dina being here with us, is um, uh, they were asked, actually, do, do, you have any, do you have any papers that are marbled for us? And so Dina went away and did her magic and lots and lots of hard work and bought the first papers to us the last time around yes. when you were here in yeah. June, was it? Yeah, it was yeah. a month or two ago. In June. And, of course, they've sold out straight away because they're absolutely beautiful. Um, and so we have them back and some new ones today. And which some is new ones. even better. Um, so will you talk me through this, what we've yep. got here? So the um, original paper crafting pack um, was the one that we had last time. Yep. And it is ten different designs you get three different sheets of each design and they're all on 120 GSM uncoated paper so they're great if you want to stamp on top of die cut do all of your paper crafting um, and then the new pack that we have today is the variety pack um, and in there we have all different weights of papers and cards we have um, 250 GSM gloss, we have 250 GSM sil um, silk, 150 GSM silk, same kind of um, thing as last time. We've got three different, sorry, ten different designs and you'll get three sheets of each design. And then there's also the ultimate bundle where you'll get two of the paper packs and one variety pack. And that's the one that we've got on the screen right now. Um, so that's uh, two packs of the original papers, which to you might be brand new as well, by the way. Um, and, well, yeah, producer Ross hasn't seen it, and actually because you're, you're here with us kind of like every other yeah, month. Yeah, it's not that often, moment. so they might still so be So you might not have caught these before. So these are pre-marbled papers, yeah. which is just uh, awesome, and they are beautiful. Now, of course, you can create your own marbling, but if you are a paper crafter and you want to go for it straight away, um, and Dina, you're not a paper crafter, are you? I'm not a paper you? crafter but, at all. bless you, you thought, right, OK, but if I'm bringing papers for the paper crafters, I need to at least sort of get involved to do a bit of die cutting. Look what she did with the papers. 
They look absolutely blooming amazing. I remember showing these the first time and you said, oh yeah, well I just had a go. <laughs> I was like, just had a go. This is uh, amazing. I know people that have crafted for years and not, not created such beautiful uh, looking designs. It's gorgeous and that's just a bit of die cutting, isn't it really? Um, and I love this, all using the marbled papers, uh, which is superb. Look, you've even done, that's really, really clever. You've Christmas. been thinking, haven't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it won't be long. It won't be long, so they lend themselves to all times of the year as well. And I think that's a really nice, bright, modern, vibrant um, twist on Christmas, which can yeah. be very traditional, can't it? Uh, which is lovely. Here's another one. Look, I'm not a paper crafter, she says. <laughs> Butterflies. Yeah, well, it's the universal get out of jail free card, isn't it? But look at that on that background. Just look absolutely amazing, don't they? So if you want those papers, grab them quickly now the ultimate bundle um, really is the way to go because that means that you get absolutely everything it means you get the papers that were launched and sold out on their first showing that will undoubtedly um, sell out again plus the new release as well uh, because these are such a massive 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 uh, demand so let's show you the ultimate pack so that will give you 90 sheets all told, won't it? So 60 of the 120 GSM, and then the mix of um, the mix of varieties in the variety pack. So different weights and uh, different marbling styles as well. Slightly different colour palettes through there. But there's something for everything, all times of the year, all occasions, and they are beautiful. Now, um, if you'd rather go for maybe you've got the, the the first release and maybe you just want to go for the variety pack, which is the new release, then I'll bring you the details for that as well. There it is. So it's 30 sheets there. Uh, some of the um, the paper is is gloss and some is an uncoated um, in this pack as well, and it's fourteen pounds and ninety nine pence. But you can see why the ultimate bundle has been created because the value there um, is awesome. Because actually, this is this is very much for thirty five design space. This is very much just like a little wander down the cul de sac for the mainstay of what they do, which is marbling and paint pouring and candle making physical classes. Actually, if you just want the original papers. We'll bring you the details for those as well, um, because they are absolutely beautiful. If you haven't seen them before, they are exquisite, really, really beautiful. 30 sheets, 120 GSM, there's three, uh, sorry, 10 designs and three sheets of each. I think that's right, isn't it? Yes. Uh, 512162 is your item number. But the saving, of course, in the ultimate bundle. Um, are we going back to that? Shall we? Yeah, come on, let's go back to the ultimate bundle because that's the one because you're saving seven pounds on that one and you're getting um, twice over of the original design. So 60 sheets there plus the new variety pack as well. And there will be more releases There, there will be. I mean, by popular demand, there will be. And, and it is really just a step to the side, isn't it? You never yeah. you never imagined bringing papers to a show like this. Did no, you I mean, um, the paper marbling that we've always done is about creating the papers. But if you don't want to get messy or you really into your paper crafting um, I think they're an amazing pack to have I've really I mean I'm not a paper crafter but I've really enjoyed using them and seeing what I can make with them um, I like to kind of make the simplest things um, but I've really enjoyed using them and the new pack has really nice thicker cards glossier cards and it's got a craft as well in there which is really nice so it's I've really enjoyed using them Love it, love it, love it. Right, let's talk marbling, because we've got the marbled papers, which, again, you're, you're going bonkers for already, which you did last time as well. So while the paper crafters go, ooh, yeah, we'll yeah. have a bit of that, thank you very much. If you want to start marbling, very much along the same kind of veins as we did uh, paper, pour, uh, paper pouring, paint pouring even, <laughs> got paper on the brain now, uh, paint pouring earlier on, um, then we have got a starter kit for you. And actually, when we say starter kit, I guess we've got to say starter kit because it is that kind of first step. But it's very future proof as well, this. It's really, really good. So this is your 35 design space paper marbling starter kit. Now, what I love about this is you get the, uh, the little booklet there, which kind of helps you along and also talks to you about about the history of marbling as well, which is actually quite fascinating. Um, and it is, as Dina said earlier, it is considered and endangered um, crafting. Um, so it does take you through step by step of um, marbling as a skill. Uh, you also get everything else that you need. So you get the little pipettes, you also get um, the comb here. And the comb is very, very crucial in this. And this determines obviously the distance of the lines 
as you're actually creating your marbling, doesn't it? And we'll talk, that will become more clear as we go on a little bit later on. Um, you also have, now, the two components that we have here, it's the carrageenan powder and the alum. Tell me again which way round and, and what it is, because they're all na kind of natural ingredients, yeah. well, aren't they? Yeah, so the carrageenan in particular is um, actually a form of seaweed. Um, historically, they cook up the actual sort of seaweed moss, but we now get it in a very nice powder. It's super easy to use, but that's what I've got in my marbling tray just here. It's what we use to thicken the water, and that's how the paints float on top. Um, so this has been blended just with like a food processor, something, a whisk, whatever you have mm -hmm. that can move quite quickly um, to get that all blended into your water. I've let it sit overnight, and that's what I'm using today. Like you've said, it is a food grade product. It is a natural material. It can go off, but you can use this tray for about sort of three days or so depending on how you keep it um, and then the um, al alum powder that we have um, is what we use on the paper and it's almost like the glue for the paint on top of the paper um, and we pop that onto the paper let it dry for a little bit and then that's what we use to marble with and and you'll see that as we go through now yeah. you also we also get the paper as well um, and what's the makeup of the paper and what type of paper have we got it's 120 good? GSM ivory paper it's a really gorgeous paper to marble with um, white can sometimes be a little bit stark with the colors the mm -hmm. ivory is quite soft um, so it gives you a really lovely finish which is why that's what we've gone for fabulous you also get the gloves included again not not necessarily because there are any nasties in there or whatever it's just about keeping you and the and the product as two different entities keeping you nice and clean as yeah, well actually it's a bit it? messy this can feel a little bit gunky so it's just nice to have yeah, your gloves on absolutely um, and this will all become apparent as we come through and see the demonstrations actually so just make a note of the item number for now 593582 is your item number and that is your marbling starter kit but you might want to hang on, because if you've seen a marbling show before, maybe you've already had a starter kit, and you're thinking, right, yeah, no, I'm, I'm loving this. I'm already on board, Derek, so um, give me everything you've got. Um, we have got a complete kit here for you. So this is kind of like your pro kit, I guess yeah. we could call it, because with this, you've actually got um, the, the tray, which is the right size for the paper. Yeah. You also have your combs, which have the little... Um, the little uh, pins in them so you can remove those and you can add and so you can change the distance between and you get two sets of those of course uh, for either going crossways yep. or, or indeed yeah, lengthways. Right. You also get these fabulous little fan brushes as well which are great for adding the paint uh, to prepare for your um, marbling. Of course the more brushes the more paints you can go for at the same time. More paper in there, again the complete guide for you, uh, the gloves, the little uh, droppers, the little pipettes uh, for you, plus you get the little uh, like like skewer type, like bamboo skewer type tools. What, remind me what they're for again, Dina? Um, so if you want to freestyle rather than using a comb you can use the um, sort of bamboo stylus sticks and you can just freestyle the design rather than using a comb you can use this just to freestyle you can do little circles and little twirls um, and just go wild with them so this is brilliant and, and again with this we get um, it's it's double the the, uh, the quantities isn't it of the carrageenan yeah. and the alum isn't it I always forget the names of them <laughs> uh, they're wonderful we also get fabric pieces in here as well yeah so it's a free gift with today's show we've got oh, hello. Um, yeah Thank so you. Um, if you purchase from today's show we've got um, it's an A4 poly cotton drill that is pre-prepared with alum ready to marble with um, the fabrics work really, really beautifully. This poly cotton drill, you've got a few samples there. We've made a little pouch up with the sample that I actually made last time on the show. Um, and it just mar it marbles beautifully. We've got a really stunning... Oh, wow. Yeah. Lovely. ...selection of pieces that we've made. You've got a couple of little square samples as well. I have. Um, and they marble gorgeously. So with today's um, show, you get three A4 sheets of the poly cotton drill with only with the complete marbling kit. Yeah. Um, and they're pre-prepared with alum. So all you need to do is get get going, get marbling, and you can print onto your fabric without any preparation. Oh, bless you. Yeah. So they're pre-prepared. So yeah. we don't even need to do anything no. to those. We can just... Yeah. Ah, brilliant. Loving you. They're brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Um, £47.99. Most people are going for this complete uh, kit. You can flexi that as well. So two payments of £24. Um, can I just tell you, the mainstay of what 35 Design Space do is face-to-face uh, -face tuition workshops. Um, the, the, the telly was 
like an evolution, yeah. if you like. Of course, you know, lockdown meant that you couldn't have those face-to-face -face things, but they're back on now as well. So if you want to look up 35 Design Space, they're on Facebook and Instagram and everywhere yeah. else. Um, there, there are spaces on some of the courses yeah, in August, I believe. Yeah, we've got a marbling coming up at the beginning of September with spaces on. Oh, brilliant. Um, yeah, so you can book onto that one. And like you said before, we're in Altrincham, south of Manchester, if you did want to pop along. Yeah, so anybody who's in kind of like the northwest Manchester, Cheshire, Merseyside, anywhere in that vicinity, uh, if you want to physically get involved those things are back on now which is really really good uh, okay so that's the complete kit for marbling 190943 is the item number then we've got the polycotton drill uh, bundle again this is pre-prepared that's such a good idea 10 sheets of a4 pre-prepared that's such a good idea, yes. Dina, as well. So if you've had any of the marbling kits from us before, or you're going for the complete kit or the starter kit today, um, it's a really good addition. If you want to have a go on something soft and a fabric, then um, in that kit there's 10 sheets of A4 polycotton drill pre-prepared um, for you to marble straight onto. And you can make some really cute um, little accessories because that piece, it, the little pouch, was an A4 piece. So just because it's not huge, you can still make something really cute out of them. Well, listen, we're, we're, we're talking fabric this weekend. Is it easy to, easy to sew one to another? Yes, and off you of go. course. You could make your own patchwork um, fabric, couldn't you, for a, for a quilt design yeah. or something. Um, I just want to show you some of the, um, some of the results that you can get from marbling as well. Um, because it is, it's incredible, it's mesmerising, you can mix up lots and lots of different colours together, you can get lots and lots of different effects from it as well as Dina will show us uh, very, very shortly. It actually leaves a really lovely feel to the paper yeah. as well, it gives it that really, you can turn an ordinary paper, um, or the paper you supply with the kits, you can turn that into what feels like 100% handmade paper. Yeah, Just it does it. feel really lovely and quite organic -y, Yeah, um, And as well, if you want to marble onto coloured sheets of paper that you have as well, that can work really nicely. 120 GSM is generally what we found works really, really nicely. It's mm -hmm. quite soft um, and easy to put down. I love it. Right, listen, proof of the pudding is in the eating, so we need to start, uh, we need to start getting to it, don't we? Um, and, and I'm ready to get over to my demo space <laughs> as well, get involved in this too. Uh, so, Dina, um, take us through, because there are a few steps that we need to go yeah. through before we can just we'll go We'll start from it. the beginning, just yes. here. And this is my ivory paper that comes in with the um, kits, both the starter kit and the complete kit. Um, in this little bowl, I just have a sponge, and my alum, which is one of the bags um, that comes in both the starter kit and the complete kit and a sponge. So it's a whole packet of the alum that comes in the kit and 100 millilitres of, I generally use warm water, it dissolves really nice in there. And then it's just on a sponge, just spread that over your paper. And if you've got nice lighting, you can actually see really well that you've covered the whole sheet just to make sure that there's no empty gaps. Anywhere that you have an alum on your piece of paper, there is a chance that once you marble, that paint isn't going to stick to the paper because it hasn't really got that glue that's holding it there. Um, this is a little um, paper press that we've made ourselves. It's nothing um, very high tech, but it does a good job of what we kind of ask just to try and keep the paper nice and flat. If you've got anything heavy, um, that can work too, just to try and keep your paper as flat as possible because you can see it rolls up once we've popped some of the alum on. And I'm just going to pop it to the bottom of the pile so that I know that's the one that I did last. So would you pop it maybe between some books or something and maybe protect yeah. that with a layer of cling film yeah. or something like Even that? Even if you've got like one of these plastic chopping boards, something like that, yeah. just as a sort of barrier to whatever yeah. you're putting it between. But yeah. just something heavy is great. Um, if you're ever going to get confused as to which side you've alumed, pop a little pencil X on the back. So when I'm using this press, I always know that the face down is the side that is prepared and ready to be marbled onto. But if you're ever going to get stuck, pop a little pencil X before you alum so that you know which side you can marble onto. Uh -huh. It's very upsetting. If you marble something and it's gorgeous and you go to wash it and because you didn't get the right alum side, it can just wash off. Mm -hmm. um, so moving over to here, this is my marbling tray. Um, this has the carrageenan in it. So this is a pouch of the um, carrageenan powder that has been in both of the starter kits and the complete kits and it's also in your top up supplies. Um, blended, like I said before, food processor or a whisk to get it mixed up. Um, this gets loads and loads of air bubbles in it and just let it sit overnight, six hours or so. Let those air bubbles kind of come to um, surface. the surface, there we go. <laughs> um, and they'll just pop and go and you'll be left with a really nice smooth liquid. It can feel a little bit, I mean, 
it's a thickened water. It does have a kind of residue to it, almost not residue, it's, you'll feel it in a minute. Yeah. Um, it's, it can just, it's thicker water. It can feel a little bit like a sort of slimy... Slimy water. Yeah, like a, yeah. yeah that's that a good pond one. pond water. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's cleaner than pond water, but it's got yeah. that kind of slime to it. Um, and I just take a piece of newspaper before we get started. Actually, before we do that, I'll show you what's in my paints. So these are my paints, and you want them really nice and liquid, pretty much water consistency. Um, if you can kind of see just how loose that is in that jar. The paints that we're using, we've got um, Liquitex Professional Soft Bodied Acrylics. Mm -hmm. um, really gorgeous paints, really great pigments in them, and they marble really, really well. Alternatively, we also use the um, Golden Acrylics. Um, these are the fluid ones. Also really, really lovely. Um, generally, as a bit of a rule with marbling, you want to go for the best paints that you can afford to be using. You want something with a really good quality pigment. Um, these have been diluted about one part paint, four parts water. So you are diluting your paints a lot. And to be able to get a really nice, vibrant print, you want as much pigment in your paints as you possibly can get. Dina, can I, can I just jump in there? Uh -huh. I, I don't know whether this is the right or the wrong question to answer, <laughs> but it's in my head. Because some people would, would have been watching earlier the paint pouring yeah. show, and we have the Pebio acrylic yeah. paints there. Would they be okay for this? Would you need to bring them down? We have used them for this, and you would still need to dilute them. Right. Um, I would say if you could go for something slightly higher quality with more pigmentation in it. Right, it's okay. not that the PBOs aren't good paints, you just want a super, super pigmented paint okay. um, because you're diluting them so much. And the PBOs aren't quite as pigmented as these Liquitex and the Goldens so that we have. So they have to be a water base? Um, you want them to be acrylics. Um, so oil paints won't mix with the water to an extent. Okay, right. Um, try everything. A lot of people um, marble with gouache. Gouache works really well too. Okay. It can be a little more temperamental than acrylics. Yeah, um, okay. I would say if you're having a go for the first time, if you have good quality acrylics, go for those because they'll be the easiest and the best to work with. Okay. So go with those. Um, and you want to make sure that they're mixed in really, really nicely, really nice and smooth. Um, the carrageenan, it can almost just build up a little bit of a surface tension on top, almost like a bit of a skin. You won't ever see it or anything, um, but you always want to wipe that away before you get started so there's no surface tension and that your paints can spread as easily as possible. So to do that, I just have a piece of newspaper. Any newspaper, newsprint, anything like that works really well. And it's just below the surface. And I'm just going to swipe it all the way to one side. It's just like skimming, really. Aren't yeah, you? you just want to take the very surface of that carrageenan off. Do, show us what's on the edge of the newspaper. Is it what's left behind? Is, is there like a something? I left mean, behind? you can maybe see where it's darker from the shine. It's literally just a really thin layer of the carrageenan oh, that okay. I've taken off. Right. Um, just so that if there's any surface tension, any sort of skin or anything forming, that's taken away. So there's no tension on your sort of bed surface, whatever you want yeah. to call it. Some people call it their marbling bed, marbling bath. But on the surface, there's nothing stopping that paint spreading as wildly as it can, because you really want that movement. It gives you a nice fresh canvas, yeah, so to speak. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's easier to see once you've been painting, because you'll see yeah. yourself kind of wiping away the excess leftover paint. Yeah. Um, so when you're ready to go, just make sure that your paint is really nice and well mixed. It can separate quite quickly, so always just give it a stir. And then just... Hat on Jeez, top. That magic, isn't it? And this is why we're using the fan brushes because you hold it up and just tap, and you get a really lovely kind of sprinkle, little splatter of your paint onto your surface. And keep filling that up, and you'll possibly be able to see more in just a moment now that we've got some colour on there. And just keep going. Ooh. Look at the way that, that just forms straight away. Um, we'll just keep adding. All the while your paints are spreading nicely, um, you can keep adding. So if you're ever struggling with vibrancy problems, if it's ever a little bit pale, often is the case that you've not got quite enough paint on there. So keep adding that paint to get it really nice and vibrant. So it's the carrageenan that's, that's kind of resisting the paint and yep. saying, OK, well, you stay up there, but I'm going to spread you around. Exactly. It's the carrageenan that keeps it afloat because mm. it's thicker than water. Yeah. Um, if your paint ever does start to drop through, um, it, this is quite a scientific kind of 
craft but you learn as you go if your paint ever starts to drop through maybe you've added too much on top um, maybe you know if your carrageenan is three days old it's telling you mm. um, it's it's three days old and maybe it's had its best day yeah, yeah. Um, so there's a few different things that you'll learn as you go um, but generally when you're using it all nice and fresh there shouldn't be too many problems you just want to get the paint to that really nice sort of sweet spot consistency where it floats and you get a really lovely um, vibrant finish. So at this point my paint is nearly stopped spreading so I'm going to go in with a little bit more of this pink and I'm just using three colours on this one. You can go in with as many as you like. I quite like the ones that are three or four colours. Um, it gives it a really lovely finish. You've got a nice soft colour palette there and at this point I'll say that looks good as it is and you can pick that up as it is just straight onto a piece of paper and then yep. you'd have what's called a stone pattern. Mm -hmm. um, alternatively you can comb them. So this is one of the combs that comes in the complete kit and you can take these out so that you can make a kind of wider or a narrower um, comb to come mm -hmm. back and forth. Mm -hmm. I'm going to keep it as the narrow one for the moment and I just pull it down this way. And are they at the, the points just on on the surface or just below or how do they're you actually done really nicely so that you can rest um this sort of wooden bar on the side of your tray right, and then yeah. just but, so, but when you're drawing yeah. it across is it to that level or are they right are they right in or are you just they're, they're right in they're kind of oh, beneath okay. the surface right um so generally so long as you've got enough carrageenan in there if you really start to run low then it might not reach the bottom okay. but you sh generally always when you're using your marbling s supplies you want a good level of carrageenan in there okay. um, and you could, should just be able to rest this on your tray and go from there Ooh. so you're not having to worry too much about um, your lines or kind of holding it straight because it can be a lot to think about when you're trying to move it and yeah. hold it at the right height and everything yeah. so if you can rest it on your tray and just pull back and forth. Okay. Um, one of my favourite things to do is a little wavy design. So I'm going the other way. Ooh, I'm going the other cool. way and I kind of waved it as my way down. Yeah. This is another of the, this is the kind of shorter comb that comes in the complete kit. And you can see I've taken out the nail that was here, 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 here. Yeah. And these two on the end so that it's really wide. Um, and it's given me that space so that I can go back and forth in the tray. So that you can use to either freestyle or it fits just nicely to run yeah. along the length of the uh, exactly. tray. Exactly. Yeah. So that is hopefully lovely as it is. I'm very pleased with that one. It's gorgeous. And at that point, you can take your paper. I'm going to go for one of these plain pieces. And then I kind of take it by the two corners. Mm -hmm. So that it's draping like so. Yeah. And then we're going to pop that one in. And just lower those two corners down. And then I just tap the edges. And at that point, my stick on. I normally have a little stick so that I can pop it across the, the top. And then that so you don't is have what we made. Touch the surface. Yeah, I try and kind of peel it back onto a little stick. I have got one. Yeah. Um, I've just popped it to one side. Um, but that is what we've just made. And then from there, just try not to touch what you've printed too much. It's very, very delicate at this stage. Yeah. Um, so then I normally have a bucket, or in this case, a box, just with plenty of water in, and just wet that. You want to rinse off as much of the carrageenan as you can. You don't need to be too aggressive with it. Just be quite gentle. Um, if there's excess carrageenan left over on your paper, it can take longer to dry and just affect the kind of surface texture, texture when it's finished. Yeah. You want it to be yeah. nice and smooth and as papery as possible. Yes. Um, so just a nice rinse. Um, you can do a little bit more than that, but generally just a nice rinse. Make sure to wet the front and the back so that it dries at the same, con same constant sort of yeah. rate front to back and then it yeah. won't wrinkle too much. And then that is your beautiful marble. And then you put it on your, your little homemade yep, washing I'll hang it to dry on, and it'll take one side there. Yep, I'll hang it to dry and it'll take um, you know an hour, maybe two, three, um, depending how warm your space is, how much carrageenan you've washed off. Um, but then that one's good to use from there. Isn't it amazing what you can do? I mean, I just, I, I honestly, I think it's so so clever. I really really do. Um, I'm I'm going to come over and have a go. Um, in, in a bit as well but let me show you some of the effects uh, that you can get from marbling because uh, you know you, get, you can follow using the combs as, as Dina has just done 
Um, or you can go a, a little bit freestyle with this and create some... I mean, you are essentially creating your own custom, individual, no one has another one like it in the world, papers. Imagine that for your background grounds, for your... Um, why am I taking those over? Because they're blank on the other side. But it just shows you how very, very different you create as a look. But imagine these as your backgrounds for your cards. You can have exactly the colour that you want, exactly the colour blends that you want. Um, and basically, any acrylic ink that you have, the better quality, the higher pigment level it is, the better it will perform, because the magic is in the alum and in the carrageenan um, that you're using, the alum going onto the paper, the carrageenan going into the, uh, the water to create that surface tension um, for the acrylic paint, paint to actually float upon. Isn't it amazing? Look at how detailed you can go. I mean, that's really, that's a lot of, that must be all of the, um, all of the, the prongs on the comb. Yeah, so we've yeah. got some super fine combs and you, they're not that super fine in the complete kit um, combs but what you can do is you can kind of hold them together so I've just um, popped that other one to one side yeah. but you can pop them together so if you hold the two combs together you'll get like one pin here one there one almost zigzag them and then you get that super fine finish. It's stunning absolutely stunning what you what you can create with this it's just superb and of course you can you can do it on all kinds of different papers um, try it on all kinds of different cards as well the card stock that you have uh, Dina says you know so far they've seen the best results at about 120 GSM but you can certainly go beyond that as well yeah. if you if you wanted Definitely. to of course it's all about time and patience patience as well um, and, and how long it, it may take. But look at that as a design, like a feather design. Of course, you can turn it around in lots and lots of different ways. It's just beautiful, isn't it? Really, really nice. And again, I said earlier when we were talking um, paint pouring, we're at that stage of the summer holidays where um, I think things are starting to get a little bit, you know. When I've been out and about the last few days, I've just noticed that people are ever so, They're at that point of the summer holidays if you've got kids that you're... Ooh, you've just about had enough of them uh, but you know that there's still another half of the summer holidays to go and you're looking for things to do that can kind of you know keep them occupied or you can do together with them which kind of you know just takes the takes the heat out of some of the situations um, this is so so popular the ultimate bundle um, it really is fantastic now with this remember you get the tray you get your um, your two lots of the carrageen and um, powder and the alum as well how many how many lots of water again per so the they're pre-packaged for you yeah um you've got the two packets of carrageenan and two packets of alum yeah what i use in one tray is generally one packet of carrageenan okay and i'll use about the one packet of alum for the yeah. paper okay. um so you've generally kind of got two goes but when we say two goes this can last for about three days at a time okay. so you've got a good length of time in your usage with them. Okay, so when you say two goes, it's not two papers. No. It's two lots of three days worth. Yeah, so okay. when um, it's two goes, it's two trays worth like this. Uh, and okay. I'm using the same tray. Do you know for... what? I, I don't think I'd, I'd quite understood that <laughs> the first time we did a show yeah. together. But now you say, actually, you can leave your carrageenan in yeah. the water for up to three days. Of course, the more you use it, yeah. you know, the, the less effective it is going to be. Yeah. If so you, you can't can... do like 50 sheets, can you? And you might expect... be able to. Oh, really? So, yeah, you definitely could. But you, there's just different things to have a go with. If you can keep this right. really nice and clean, yeah. you can use it as more and more and more. If you end up experimenting loads and you drop quite a bit of paint through if you're struggling to get that consistency just a little bit and you lose a lot of paint in here you can get a little bit murky almost and that's, that's the point it'll go going to go off sooner right yeah. okay so that'll affect the the quality of future prints let's call them shall we yeah oh i get it now right i get it i so get it. i don't think i got that first time around <laughs> on the show and that was two months ago now it's funny this old brain things uh, things come to me like you know far after the the moment you get the full guide as well by the way so you do get your tray to sit your water in uh, which matches and marries beautifully with the size of the combs you get the two combs so that's the one that of course goes along lengthwise you can take the pins out and and uh, lengthen the gaps between the pins then you've got the one that goes across there as well you have your is it three a4 sheets of the pre alumed yep. The poly cotton drill, yeah, the free gift today. There's three sheets of them. It's amazing. That's lovely. That, and you get your um, your sheets of paper as well, which is the 
120 GSM ivory paper. Thank you, bless Perfect. you. Uh, <laughs> plus you get obviously your brushes, they're your, they're your paint scatter brushes, because generally it's three or four colours, isn't it, in each marbling session. So you want the, to have those to hand, because you want to do them all at the, pretty much yeah. the same time, and you don't want to contaminate two paints on one yeah. brush, because you'll get a dirty mix then yeah. as well, won't you? So that's really good to have those. You've got the little droppers as well, I take it that's if you want to drop the paint in. Yep. Which I guess you're going to do on I'll your show second. you one okay, in a minute. Right, okay. um, uh, when Ross lets me over there, I'll have a go as well. Uh, he's not going to let me go yet. <laughs> um, this is really, really good. So the whole bundle there is beyond, I mean, it is your ultimate. Let's call that your pro set, shall we? Because that's giving you pretty much everything you need. You will be able to, as well, be able to buy, I don't know whether they're on the show as well, but you have had in previous shows, haven't you, the top-ups of more of the Carrageenan and the Allen. Have yes, we got that you on have the that show? at the end. Just, is it, is it there? Just there. It's hidden behind oh, the canvas. Oh, sorry, we hadn't got that far, had we? <laughs> yeah, so you can get more of the Carrageenan and the Allen there as well. Sorry, Ross, I didn't realise I jumped the gun then. Um, so for each, so 75 grams there, so for each 10 grams dilute in 100 millilitres of uh, warm water and you've got the instructions there for the carrageenan as well. So that's going to give you many more goes yep. beyond either the ultimate bundle or the starter bundle that you yep. went for as well. Right, okay, I get this now. So actually, oh my word, right, so it's just occurred to me, if you can do lots and lots on the bounce, one after another, you don't mind if we make to sell. Yeah. So if we if we made our own papers yeah. and we wanted to sell those on because yeah. they're our creations. Uh, yeah, what you've made is is yours to do, do do as you please. You can sell if you papercraft that, do whatever you want. At that at that point you've made those papers. Um, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, you could batch make and sell your own papers or just batch make and enjoy them. They are unique to you. You could be where Dina is right now, <laughs> in a year's time, saying, actually, do you know how my business started? I watched your 35 Design Space show, and I saw how you did the marbling, and how Dina had designed the papers and brought them to the show as well, which never intended to happen at all, but because you're in a paper crafting world yeah. here at the craft store, and of course we do many other crafts as well, but paper crafters said, oh, you don't do papers, do you? And that's how that started, and now they sell out all the yeah. time not surprised at all but that could be you in a year's time standing in this studio talking to us about your papers and this is how it started i'm just saying um, and it could have started with an initial investment your business of what 47.99 less than 50 pounds could have started your business brain going i could do that i could do that um and then you're you'll end up having a trade account <laughs> with 35 design space. Oh, I tell you what, never say never, absolutely never say never. I'm sure the last year and a half has taught everyone, take nothing for granted, don't chart your journey, don't think you know what's coming, because you have no idea. Uh, 190943 is your item number. Now, we've had a couple of questions, Dina. Okay. First one's from Janet, mm -hmm. and she's saying, can we use metallic paint to marble? Yes. Um, I would say do your experimentation though um, and go for a good quality paint. So I've had some really great results again with the golden fluid acrylics, their metallics work really really nicely. Um, just be careful, some metallics if the sparkle pigment that's in them is quite large, it's, it needs to be super fine, if it's quite large it can just sometimes interfere with the top of your marbling bath, sometimes the paper can't pick it up so then it's left on the surface and that's when it can cause problems go for again a really high quality metallic the golden fluid one does work really nicely so give that a go if you want to I've, go for I've just got another question <laughs> this question is from Derek at the craft store um could I do something like have you seen gilding flakes I have so if you had those extremely fine yeah. I mean like milled to almost like a ground pepper kind of milling, <laughs> yeah. Could you, because that would sit on the surface, because it's as light as, well, yeah. it's, you know it's as yeah. light as nothing, really, is it? Could, would that work on that, do you think? Um, oh, we've got to try it, haven't we? You'd have to try it. It's not okay. something that I've tried, so I couldn't, I didn't, wouldn't want to give you a wonder, have we got any gilding flakes in here? Okay, uh, do you think we've got any in here, Lewis? Okay, Lewis, because I'm having a go in a moment, and, and Lewis, our floor manager, is going to see if we can find some. It might struggle to pick it up, just because the alum isn't necessarily made for picking up the gilding. Ah. If that makes sense, you're not putting down any gilding glue to pick up the foil. But it's but it's floating on top, so the natural water tension should pick it up. Well, listen, <laughs> we'll have a go, shall we? There's nothing like trying yeah. on the hoof, is there? I've had another question as well from Jane. 
and Jane is asking, what's the best way of disposing of the carrageenan uh, when you've finished with it? Generally, loads of warm water down a sink and okay. just pour it in slowly. It's a liquid and it generally goes thinner as it goes off. Okay. Um, it's a natural material. I just it, it's not going to go solid and clog up the okay. sink, but loads and loads of water and, down and just, with it. And just again to point out, its, it's derivative is what again? Seaweed. Um, right. It's um, um, sea, seaweed moss. Um, it shouldn't be causing you any problems. Yeah. It won't so, go solid. Yeah, absolutely. So it should be absolutely fine. Going off to the water treatment work, yeah. I'm sure they can absolutely deal with that whatsoever. Right. Ultimate paper crafting bundle. Let's have another look at this as well because it's brand new today as well. So you've got the brand new papers. So uh, the papers that you bought to us and launched in June that sold out on the first showing, not surprised at all, they're absolutely beautiful. Um, plus, you've got the new variety pack in this bundle as well, haven't you? And that's got the different weights and finishes of cards. Yeah, that's correct. So in the um, original paper pack, it's all... Um, 120 GSM uncoated papers, um, so they're all the same, really nice, um, quite a standard weight of paper, they're quite a nice thick paper, mm -hmm. but they've not got any coating, they feel like a good standard-ish paper kind of thing. Yeah. Um, this variety pack has a really gorgeous mix of um, silks, we've got some gloss in there, we've got different weights, so you've got the 100 and 20 GSM mm -hmm. papers, and then that goes up to 150 GSM silks, 250 silk, 250 gloss, um, and then there's also a, I can't give you the completely correct micron, but there's a 400 and something micron craft card as well, which is really lovely. 457 apparently, so our there loss tells go. me. There you go. Wow. Um, it's really, really fantastic, and you'll love the finishing on all of those. I mean, they're brilliant. I mean, it's a great price tag as well. You can buy um, the papers in smaller bundles or the individually, just the new set if you have the original as well. Uh, but the Ultimate Bundle has the £7 savings, so again, we know. We're all, we're all thrifty crafters. Um, OK, right, now, this is the bit where I get involved now. Hooray, the gloves <laughs> are back on. This is my last show, so it can be as messy as you like, so it's <laughs> fine. And I've got the gilding flakes, but I think, actually, if I'm going to use the gilding flakes, I'm just yeah. going to use a tiny amount in one corner, but do yes. that first. Do you think? I'd say the pop them on over. at the end, maybe. Uh, oh, gosh. Just oh. You have to try so do, it. I'll do both. Do some at the beginning, some at the end. I'll Go do one corner at the beginning, one at the end. Yeah. Right. So you've got a piece of the polycotton drill there, which oh. is the free gift um, with the um, complete Ultimate kit. Bundle. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you've got a little A5 tray there. So it's just a smaller size to what you'd get in the complete. It's a good little practice um, tray. I am um, smaller, that's fine. <laughs> um, you've also just got a piece of newspaper to your left. Oh, yes, right. Um, just pop that. Just below the surface, I kind of hold it with my thumbs against the edges and just drag to one edge. Just take the very top surface of that to one side. That's it. All the way to the end. And then just press against the end and just drag that little top layer away and up. There you go. Oh gosh, you were watching me on that, <laughs> weren't you? Oh, pressure. Okay, good. And then pop that to one side and yep. just give all of your paints um, a really good kind of stir before you get started and then they're good to go. I've got lovely colours here actually, got a lovely sort of uh, peachy pink. I've got the most vibrant orange and I'm sorry because we pre we pre discussed the ones I would yeah. have and you couldn't use them in your first demo no. and, they're, and they're just the brightest and the most beautiful colours. I'm sorry, I feel you like I've hogged them. Just give your blue a little bit of a mix. If you pick up the jar you can see that there's white pigment towards the base. You just want oh, it to be nice and smooth. Right. Yep. It can separate quite quickly, so always stir nicely, nice okay. and quite sort of thoroughly before you get started. But then you're good to go. Is it all gone, everyone? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, cool. I'm going to start with a little bit of gilding, go just while it. my gloves are still dry. And I'm, I'm going to make sure it's dead, dead tiny particles as well. Just, just going to see. It might be the sort of thing that works better after the fact, but always, you know, give something a go. Yeah, of course. Why not? Oh, I've put quite a lot of actually in there. But actually, there's, there's a bit of fine bits in the lid and the air conditioning's blowing it all on me actually but hey never mind right there you go that will do for that so that's experiment right on we go <laughs> what so happens next choose a color okay and just take your brush would you go light or dark first does it matter um historically it was dark but you can do whatever you like okay, there's so, no rules okay so dark first i'm gonna go with the orange go for first. the orange just, and then just, just sort of press your brush just against the side just like yep, yep. and then up nice and high and tap from there. Tap 
quite hard. That's oh, there it. it is. And keep going, keep adding. And then pop it back into your paint, get a bit more paint on your brush. <laughs> Are you looking to see if the tongue comes out in concentration? <laughs> is that what you're looking at? Now, I'm not sure. Oh, right, okay, now, now we've got somewhere. Keep going, you'll That's see it start it. to build up in just I a minute. I was being too... You want quite a lot, so if you watch me just pop my paint down, I'm really going for it. Yeah. Hit it quite hard and you'll see all of that paint come through. Yeah, I think I'm go I was going too high as well, I think. <laughs> right, I'm with you now. And then once you've got quite a nice kind of orangey coating on your tray, yeah. move on to one of your next colours. Okay. I'm going to go pink. I'm going to go right the other end of the scale. I'm going to go with the pink. Peachy pink thing. So you want probably less to you of this. Just keep going the same as you were. Oh, okay. um, because you'll probably go through the orange and then the pink and then the blue and then ah. you might want to go through the orange the pink and the blue a second time ah. depending on how it's spreading and how it's looking okay oh i see now see the way it's forming yeah it looks a mess i know from that angle because <laughs> it's not quite the overhead angle you're seeing dina's in but believe you me from my point of view it looks amazing and then go in with your blue i'm sure it does they always do <laughs> oh that's um i'm just filling mine up with black and i'm going to show you a little trick on you're going mine dark and moody the there um, I'm just going all black and I'm going to show you a little trick in a minute oh, if you okay. go, want to go for the complete kit and a paper pack something that you might want to have a go at it's oh. very fun so okay, I'm just well. filling mine up with black for the moment I love this blue it's kind of slightly turquoise. really gorgeous blue yeah it is lovely isn't it yeah, I'm right in now <laughs> right okay so all three done go me. in with a little bit more orange a bit more orange you want it really nice and saturated to get that vibrancy if you ever find that you're struggling with your prints not being particularly vibrant you want to go in with more paint because that's going to be what's stopping you getting that vibrancy i mean that's no stopping me now that's it I'll, there I'll, we go and which i'm right on top of it now aren't i I'm basically in it <laughs> and which do you prefer out of your pink and your blue if you uh, had to choose the... the blue but i feel like it needs more pink than blue go in with a little bit more pink then okay and you should be, I think, nearly there. Yeah, I think I think I'm. I think I maybe I may have a lonely corner over here, which <laughs> I just want to, because I, I I'm just aware of trying not to cover myself in it. It doesn't really matter because I've 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 finished school after this. <laughs> yeah, you won't there you won't see go. with this shirt anyway. It's covered <laughs> in paint anyway, won't you? Right, I'm. I th I feel like I've been a bit stingy, mingy down there. You can start to see those things, and it really helps. If you can hold it up high and really hit, it really helps spread that paint out really evenly because you're holding it up from a height. Ah, okay. But it can be a little bit more difficult to hit the paintbrush a bit harder to get it down in the first place. You kind of learn what technique works for you, whether it's moving around or holding your brush up high. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> And then I think you look pretty good there. Okay. So you have a little mini comb there that should fit your tray um, sort of landscape wise. Yep. So you can go back and forth. Um, okay. And then you also have your bamboo stylus stick there to freestyle a little bit if you want to as well. Okay. Right. So right in. Yep. And then. All the way down. Can I, can I curve yeah, as I go? Yeah, wave. Oh, I like that. So that's created that almost that like kind of feathery effect that you did yeah. you did earlier. And going kind of back and forth can really help build up the sort of more super super fine detail like the one that I did just before. Because at the minute you've got what's technically called a stone pattern, so you've got a really nice kind of fine stony kind of circular finish. If that makes uh, sense. Okay. Yeah. So, so now. now if I'm going to freestyle, uh -huh. can I flip in any direction? Any direction. Because go... I'm thinking I've got four channels here. Yeah. So could I do like a... Yeah, 100%. Okay. Just go fairly slowly. Okay. That's the only guide. Oh. Oh, yes, I see what you mean. Yes, because otherwise you lose the consistency yeah. of the... If you go too fast, you'll often see everything else around you Gets moving. Along. Yeah, yes. and then you'll kind of just pull yes. your design into ways that you maybe didn't want to. It, so just do it really slowly. It'll become a bit too subtle as well. Won't it? Yeah. I'll try a different. Try just a. 
diagonally across. I'm getting more like a snake skin or an animal skin <laughs> now by doing this. I'm loving this. Whilst you comb yours, yes. I'm just going to show you what I've prepared. Yeah, go on. So I've just put down loads of black onto my marbling bath. Uh -huh. And in this jar here, we have what is in the marbling world called wool, um, W-U-L. It stands for washing up liquid. Uh -huh. um, and you use it super, super, super diluted in water to give you open spaces. It works like a clear paint. So if you want to see paper, then that's what you would use because it will push the paint away and give you kind of empty areas so I've got this super diluted again on another fan brush and I'm just gonna spatter this in exact same way as I would a paint and the reason I love to do it like this we can now see all these kind of empty areas where it's not black and that black has gone into a really super fine vein um, if I was to pick this up as it is just now it would look something along the lines of this if you can see that one so this was, the blue was marbled onto a green paper. So we've oh. got a super fine black vein at the minute. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to comb it just as I did before. And back. If, if you need me, just give me a shout, by the way. <laughs> you take it, sorry, I'll just be just a second and then we'll be able to show you what I've created. And then I'm going to go in with a little bit more just to add a little bit of definition on top. And... I'm going to go in with a paper, which I have alumed, and this was from the original paper crafting pack, and we're going to marble onto this. So this is called an over marble, and it's a really great technique. I absolutely love it, but if you've made a, a piece of paper and you're a bit nervous to marble on top of it, it's quite a commitment, you yeah. know, if, it's, if you're not sure, go for the paper crafting pack, because then you can use those papers, and there's three of each, so if anything goes wrong, you've always got, got more. Yeah. And same as I did before. Because you Just can make so many in. papers in the one go as well. Exactly. Because you you're never going to stop at one, are you? No, you always want to do a, a, a good bundle. So... And that is what I've just made. Look how cool that is. That's really lovely. So we've it's got a nice the, colour palette yeah, as well, isn't Yeah, we've got it? the print underneath, which yeah, was from you, the paper crafting pack. That's it, pointed it. That way, can you see? To, there we go. Yeah, that's it. So we've got that the print beautiful. underneath from the paper pack, and I've just added all of that black on top. Yeah. Really, really cool finish. <laughs> Webster, our director, just said, can you make your own <laughs> wallpaper? I think that <laughs> might take some time, though, hey? Um, and then, when, how are you getting on there? Uh, all right, now I'm going to try my second part of the experiment, which is adding um, gilding flakes after okay. to see if they are picked Give up. It a go. I didn't realise that we were going onto fabric and not and not paper, which is why I thought of the gilding flakes idea. But so we will see. Yeah, we'll we'll absolutely see. I I could have made a complete dog's breakfast. No, I'm sure the marble will look great, even if the gilding doesn't want to yeah, stick. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, it's just a, such an experimental craft, similar to the paper mark, the, sorry, the paint pouring that we were doing mm. earlier. Yeah. It, it always just have a go. It might work, it might not, but you'll never know if you don't give it a try. Is it uh, the same technique then with the fabric as it is yep, the paper? Yeah, exactly so the same. So hold the... The corners. Hold each corner. Uh, and kind of drape then, it in there. And then... And then lower your corners in. So just... Oh. Yeah, just let go. Okay. So don't, yeah. And okay. then just tap the corners. The fabric, I think, works beautifully. Because it's got air in there, you're never going to get stuck with an air bubble. Sorry, there's, sorry, I completely got that wrong. Go on. Because it's a fabric, yeah. the air can travel through. So you're never going to end up with an air bubble, which you might with paper. So if you ever get an air bubble, you'll end up with like a little ring of paper that just hasn't been printed on, which is, it happens all the time and it can be really frustrating. But with the fabric, because it can breathe the paper kind of Sorry, it can breathe the air yes. out from underneath your mouth. Do you know what I mean? Yes, yes, yeah, absolutely, um, yeah. So you won't be left with air bubbles. I love the fabric. It's quite, it's quite foolproof. I don't think you can go too far wrong. You just want to put it down nice and smooth. Well, I, I, maybe you should, uh, <laughs> maybe you should reserve that sentence until I've revealed. Go how on then, pick it up as soon as you're ready. Um, and you have a tray just on the oh, yeah. shelf below and you can pop it onto there and I can wash it for you and get it hung okay, up. Okay, so how, how do I get it out again? Just pick up from one end and peel back. So I pick it up with a stick? You can do. Right. So from one end? Uh-huh. Mmm. <gasps> oh, I'm going to let you wash No, I'm going to let you wash it first. No, I'm not going <laughs> to no, show you straight away. I'm going to pass, pass it. Oh, 
look at that. That's all right, actually, That's isn't it? That's lovely. Derek Mark's fabric designer so, now. Oh, Rosella, look. get ready. There's some fabric. The Derek Mark's fabric range is on the way. Gorgeous. Look at that. Let me just hold that one up. Question is, did the gilding just wash away into the water? Um, I'm going to say the gilding maybe didn't okay. quite make it onto the fabric. All right, well, there you go. But that is your fabric. Can you see? Hello. Gorgeous. Really nice vibrancy as well. I'm going to call it Fenella Ripple. Because <laughs> that ties the last show and this show together just beautifully. Gorgeous. Oh, and all I need to do is wait for that to, uh, to dry. dry now. And that's mine forever and ever and ever. Exactly. And then once you let this dry, if you then iron that, because we've used acrylics, it should be fairly colour fast. That paint shouldn't be going anywhere. You've got a really nice permanently printed piece of fabric just there. And you can then wash that and iron it and it should feel lovely. I love it. Beautiful. I love it, love it, love it. Um, that's I'm going to keep that one because I'm giving away my um, paint pouring yeah. one. But I'm going to do something crafty um, with that as well, something multimedia y, because I've got, I've got a nice idea for that. Well, listen, uh, that could be you. I've never done that before. You know I've never done that before. We've done one show before, and, and I, I didn't do any doing last time. So that's the first time that I've ever done it. Um, let's show you the complete marbling kit, and I will whiz back over to yonder uh, to run through all of that. Oh, I love, 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 love. Honestly, I love these. I think they're absolutely brilliant. Um, it's great fun. And again, now I understand completely that every time you use the carrageenan in the water, you can use that same bath, let's call it, for multiple prints again and again and again. So it's not just one go as in, um, as in one go, as in, OK, I've made one paper, that's it. You can make two and then on you go. Um, so that's the complete kit. Now, uh, Two flexi buys there as well on that one of £24, which is brilliant. The papers are going crazy as well, I'm not surprised. The ultimate bundle. Um, so the returning papers that sold out last time, two packs of those, of the 30 sheets of those. So 10 designs, three of each, times two. And then the brand new um, variety pack as well, which is different finishes of card. It's different weights of card as well. And, of course, it's new prints there as well. So if you want that ultimate bundle, there it is at £31.97. You can break it down into just the two packs of the returning or just the variety pack you'll find all of the options on the website i can't believe we're nearly running out of time would you believe that um right dina yes so we can make our own papers we can design our own fabrics we can print over and over and over again and you do uh, marbling face-to-face -face workshops as well, don't you, yes. where you're based in South Manchester? We do. So at 35 Design Space, our studio where we run the workshops, which we've been really excited to get back to doing now that um, the restrictions are easing and everything. And um, we do marbling workshops. They're normally about four hours. You've got all of the materials pre-prepared for you. All you need to do is come along with some excitement and some ideas, not even some ideas, we'll help you out on the day if you need. Um, and the workshops are about four hours and you can make as many pieces of paper as you can do in that four hours. And you can find out more on their Facebook page and on their website as well. When are you coming back to see us again? Hopefully soon, I have no idea just yet. Okay, great. Yeah. Well, listen, I hope it's me and I hope I get to have another go as well. And let us know how you get on and share your makes with us. If you've got anything in your basket, check it out and stick around because there's still more on the way. Right, OK, now we're going back to the one-day special. I, I say this in the loveliest way, thankfully not with me, as you'll see after the break uh, with Hayley and Rosella. See you later. Exciting news! For the fifth year in a row, the craft store has been awarded the top accolade of the Platinum Trusted Service Award from FIFO. These awards recognise businesses that deliver exceptional experiences, as rated by you, our customers, and we are honoured to have been selected. The Trusted Service Award means you can shop with confidence, based on the reviews from over 60,000 The Craft Store customer experiences. Thank you for your independent reviews. It means a lot to us. Hello, I'm Sue Trangmar and I started Daisy Chain Designs 20 years ago. 
Back in the day, there were very few quilt patterns in the marketplace. And so uh, I started to bring patterns into the UK from America and Australia. And along the way, I've been lucky enough to work with some fantastic British designers. And that is what really the essence of daisy chain designs are. At Daisy Chain Designs, we're passionate about sewing and quilting. We design projects that hopefully will inspire you to pick up your needle and thread and have a go. Uh, we have great fun in designing things from the very start, and then the end product is always very exciting when you actually see it made. So don't miss the Daisy Chain Design shows. Hi, I'm Emma. I work with Cricut to help you get the best out of your machines. Cricut is a range of tools, machines and accessories that allow you to work with hundreds of materials. I love Cricut because it allows me to take craft projects I have in my head and make them a reality. You can customise and personalise your paper craft projects, your home decor, clothing. You can work with iron on vinyl, paper, card, wood fabrics, the possibilities are endless. On the shows, I hope I can inspire you with ideas to help you become your creative best with Cricut. So make sure you don't miss the Cricut shows. Well, hello there and welcome back. Well, it's eight o'clock, so of course it's an ad that's dedicated to our one day special and it is a cracking deal. Especially if you've been considering dressmaking, maybe creating your own clothes, maybe making sure that you've got clothes that fit your kind of shape more so than what you're just kind of creating from a pattern off the peg. Well, the thing is, patterns are very adjustable. That's kind of one side of it, but then actually being able to lay them out and kind of almost have a double of yourself, so to speak to see and make sure that those fit is the key thing and that's what we've got with the one day special now of course I am not here by myself I don't mean my fabulous friend here I mean my fabulous friend over there <laughs> <laughs> hello darling nice to be together Hayley isn't it, it? Is. I don't think we've done a show together yet have we or oh, it was a many moons ago, ago I think maybe ago. yes <laughs> now obviously you're here and I know in the six o'clock show you were covering so much detail with regard to a little bit of fun as well so uh, of course with Derek's bound to be isn't it so of course you can go back and watch that show one thing I will mention is we've got two kind of sizes with regards to the one day special and one of these um, options we've got the one day special that we're featuring here but then we've got another deal should I say if you're confusing the issue there this particular one goes from size 8 through to 16 but we have got another version which goes from 16 up to size 20 I think it is yeah. yeah. Now, if that's the one that you're considering, maybe you watched at six o'clock, please be aware we ha only have a handful left. And I mentioned that nice and early because I've got a feeling that by the time we actually get to it, we may struggle and it may well sell out. So I'm just warning you that that one is available. But kind of the fundamentals are going to be the same with both of these. Yeah, that, that's right. So as you mentioned, it's a body double. And that's the point of this is that actually it's an adjustable mannequin. And we're going to adjust that to your body shape. So that's all the beauty of it all the bumps the lumps the curves all of that we can add in there so that it's actually a true representation so that when you make your own clothes maybe when you alter clothes as yes, well maybe you point, bought yeah. something from the shop and actually could do with a little bit of a take in mm -hmm. there then you're going to be able to use this mannequin to do that as well and of course it looks very cool in the craft room but well you it know. does but it really does make the difference if you've ever had the situation where you've got another half who's been helping you out with regards to uh, fitting clothes and when I say helping you out I mean kind of inverted um, commas with this one because it's usually you get the oh, okay where have I got a mirror where have I got to hold the tape measure where have I got to look this is the thing with this you have got the perfect uh, mannequin that you can come to time and time again with regards to getting those adjustments right now look at the price on your screen there a phenomenal saving 50 pounds saving that is incredible with regards to this but you know what gets even better is you can spread the cost not only over a couple of payments but three payments so for a little over 30 pounds 33 pounds and 33 pence to be precise that is what you'll be paying today along with your post and packing if you're not a freedom member but you will get your mannequin now the fact that you can make this um, payment on three interest-free payments 
I think is phenomenal. I don't think I've ever seen that anywhere else. I, I, I just think this is just such an integral part of creating your own clothes, mm -hmm. of, of fitting your own clothes and feeling really proud of what you've made, yes. knowing that actually it shows you off to your best advantage. And it, it is a great mannequin. It is so adjustable. We've got 11 points of adjustment. We've got height adjustment on this. We've got the hem adjustment on this as mm -hmm. well. This is set quite low because that's actually set to me because in the last show we measured <laughs> me. <laughs> Um, in great detail, okay, <laughs> absolutely enough. great detail. So if you need to know in detail, then you know go back to the six o'clock show. And it does take quite a while. We're not yes. going to cover that during this show because otherwise we'll never make any progress, absolutely. will we? So yeah. That show is a one that you definitely need to go back and review. But we will be talking about all the different elements with regard to this one. Now the details are on your screen for your one day special. Rosella's going to go through all uh, the kind of the dials and give us a rough overview with regard to this one. But as I mentioned, this particular one, the details are on your screen. If you want to go for your size 8 through to your 16 then the details are there 074395 now of course with regard to this one you've got lots of different features on here now the feature is going to mean that you're going to get those perfect sizing in all the different fundamental areas including your height and also there's a hem adjustment with regards to these ones as well so the key thing is get hold of the one that suits you best now 8 to 16 the details are on your screen looking at 99 pounds and 99 pence but as I mentioned, we do have a handful of the other size, which is kind of like a crossover. And the details popping up on your screen here, as you can see. So size 14 through to 20. I think I said size 16 to start with, so I apologise for that. So 14 and 16 crossing over between the two different mannequins. But this one takes you through to a size 20. Now, the details on your screen, if you want to get involved with this one, I'm going to step back in a moment and let Rosella come forward and actually tell you what all the different dials and gadgets and gizmos um, relate to. Because there's a a lot of different elements with these not just those dials that you can see down at the front you've got dials at the side dials at the back and of course as I mentioned that hem adjuster as well so if you're wanting your 771851 but rapidly approaching limited stock with regards to this one once it's gone it's gone we've already made those phone calls to see whether we can get any more and we can't so 771851 if you wanted to take advantage now Rosella please by all means the stage is yours tell us yep. what we need to know okay so um, really important this is a foam backed pinnable mannequin which means that you can then put your fabric on there you can drape it on there you can pin it to there you've got so many areas of adjustment on these if I just turn this you'll see exactly how now this is for your large adjustments on there and that's that's broadening the chest as you can see that um, you've also got a, a waist adjustment on both of these as well this line here and I, I will show you how to do that when we get down onto the floor to show the hem as well okay but you can see on the side you've also then got dials which are also going to increase the size and you've got so on the side, if we turn it, you've also then got three so at the back. So have they got numbers on there, or how do you know where you set them? Right, well, this is great, because let me just turn that round. Can you see the little white tapes there? Oh, yes, yeah. So if I'm actually going to size this mannequin for Rosella, I'm going to size it, and then I'm going to write an R on there so that when you adjust that when it gets to the r you know it's my size oh, okay. if i'm going to make something for you Haley, also i can do that so when i get to your size i'm going to put a h on there oh, okay. so when they all line up h's i know that it's your size as well so if you're regularly making yeah. for yourself and someone else it means that actually it's really really easy that to adjust clever. if i just spin around again now, if you're going to make any large adjustments on this, you want to alter the neck first. And you just want to press down and open that neck. And you can see how far oh, it yes. opens. And that just makes it easier then to adjust the dials as we go along. If you are making a large adjustment, do it in little stages. So open the bust, open the, the tummy there, and then go back and do it again, back and do it again. Just a quick brief on terms of measuring. Um, I say we did it earlier in, in full, but um, you, when you're measuring your bust, yeah. You're not going to measure all the way around because okay. that's great because that's your bust measurement and your back measurement. Yes. But actually, what you want to measure is from your side seams because we've all got side seams it's somewhere. It's kind of like the equivalent of the yep. mannequin. Yeah. Forwards, 
and that's going to give you more of a bust measurement. Okay. Backwards is going to give you more of a back measurement, and nice. you're going to be, spin round again. Okay. <laughs> and you're going to be able to then measure there, which means that when you make your clothes, they are really, really baggy at the back. I love it. Um, now, just to very quickly mention, we're down to single figures with regards to this particular mannequin. If you want the one that size 14 through to 20, you're going to have to be quick. You can see it's green on your screen. I didn't have the opportunity to confirm that, but we are literally down to the last couple of these. So both, both of them work exactly the same way. So everything that Rosella has explained to you and will explain will resonate with the other model as well. But it's down to purely down to the size of the mannequin that you're going to need. 771851. Sorry, Rosella. No, that's Please fine. But on. actually on that, if you are on the cusp, if you are a sort of a 14 to 16, you need to size down. Oh, okay. Because we can add padding too, but we can't take away from that's the body. That's a really when it's at good its, point. It's the smallest limit, then that's it. It's, it's as small as it will go. Okay. So um, that's what you want to consider when you are buying it as well, if you are in that area that you're... Just so if you're kind of like a 14 bordering on 16, you better go off down. going down. Yeah, down. yeah right. most definitely. Okay. And then we can, because we will naturally, unless you have this figure, and I don't know actually anybody who's got a figure like <laughs> this, maybe, you know, well, nobody our age anyway, Hayley, maybe. <laughs> um, so it, we're going to add little bits. Okay. You know, perhaps we've got a little bit of a, you know, yeah. roll here. Then we're going to add stuffing really and good wadding know. on that. Now, on that point, I'm just going to mention the details on your screen. So if you are going for that larger mannequin, then sadly it has sold out now you may well have it in your basket which if you have brilliant check your basket out but make sure you do it quickly there are people that have missed out on that particular one but as Rosella's just mentioned there if you um, are on the cusp maybe you are at 14 going on 16 maybe a little further on then of course as um, Rosella said you can add padding to different areas that you might need and we'll be chatting about that as the hour progresses she covered it in a lot of detail at six o'clock and I know she's going to kind of be going around the edges of that so as we can move on with regards to some of the other things that we've got with you as well but I'm going to tell you about the fabrics while we've got these fabrics here because I know we've had sellouts of these as well because we've got some beautiful fabrics that you're going to be used naturally for your dressmaking if you've got a wonderful mannequin you don't want fabric straight away aren't you and these are brilliant value for money we are looking at three meters for £13.97. pence, Phenomenal value for money. Now we did have six options with regards to these originally. One of those has sold out but the good news is we still have five of those available and they are absolutely beautiful. Now the white spots that we saw first of all, that one half the stock has gone and it's kind of got a crinkle feel to that one. So if you do like that kind of crinkle look um, then uh, yeah, very forgiving fabric as you can see they're beautiful if you want in that particular one. Next one I think is gorgeous and they are called drape and drape for a reason because they're absolutely gorgeous to drape and going to make some fabulous garments next one that you've got I love these solid blocks of color um, and again navy a lovely one to work with so here if you want in this particular one this one's your navy and pink wave um, and then the next oh my goodness look at this absolutely beautiful as you can see that gorgeous dusky pink coming through and this one is your pink floral you're liking this one as well um, with regards to that one 30 percent of the stock has gone and then the next one that we've got here that lovely white floral as you can see there with those gorgeous kind of antique almost looking flowers on there beautiful design but again brilliant value for money now as i said, mentioned it's called drape. Drape fabric and drape for a reason because when you actually see this it will naturally find its own place to sit and that's the beauty of this. So when you're gathering these fabrics, when you're using them in a whole host of different ways, I mean you can imagine creating a garment maybe where like almost like empire line where you've got that drape below the bust area, then this is going to find its natural form. It's absolutely beautiful and very forgiving and with three meters of fabric you can be able to create something absolutely incredible. So bear that in mind with any of those fabrics beautiful to go for a phenomenal price 13 pounds and 97 pence being the price so if you're wanting those 473045 but before you check out your basket do consider the cotton fabrics that we've got for you now these ones are beautiful little ditzy bins with regards to these ones and cotton lawn you regularly hear us talk about cotton lawn here at the craft store because it is such a beautiful fabric to work with it's one that gives you that classic style it's beautiful to press and you will get some absolutely gorgeous results with this one so again a lovely one um, with regards to dresses and um, blouses and things like that if you're wanting to as well now with these you're going to choose your option you've got your fuchsia floral you've got your cobalt floral and you've got that gorgeous pink floral now if you wanted to go for multiples you can do and I'm assuming that if we do go for multiples 
multiples, they will be in a cut length. So if you go for increased quantities, Fabric Freedom tend to do that, to be honest. The only time that they tend to have pre-cuts is when we're talking about things like your strip rolls and things like your fat quarters. So I think with regards to these, you, you will. We'll say, just err on the side of caution, we'll say that they don't, but they usually do. <laughs> so just to let you know with those. So 465 um, 882 if you fancy get hold of any of these, and you're paying 12 99 with regards to each meter of those. But it's all well and good having your fabric, but having the fundamentals for you to actually create your garments, the tools, the things to get those precise results and those professional looking results are key. And this is a fabulous little bundle. Now, Rosella, I'm going to bring you in at this stage because you've got everything you need in here. This is a classic bundle. Yeah, it's an absolutely super bundle. I mean, one or two of my favourite things within it Ooh, are... Is that our seven day saving work? I, I have. Do you love it? Do you love it? Love it? <laughs> Just, just look at that. Isn't that just the so cutest? Cute. And it's a good size, this as well. You yeah. know, often, because I'm sure it, pretty sure it says something like small on the website. I'm sorry, that is not small at all. That's a really, a really good size, good size that, isn't yeah. it? Um, but what is in my Scotty dog at the moment? Um, dressmaking pins. Really, really important. You don't want pins that are going to snag your clothing, especially on that drape. You want some nice, the, and these are sort of a high carbon steel proper dressmaking pins so that's within the bundle you've got um, marking pencils now we're going to be looking at a pattern in a moment and we're going to be looking at marking so you've got blue and white on there with a little brush as well to get it's a chalk pencil this one um, what we've also got in here now and this is really important as well and is it's really important expensive tracing paper oh gosh yes, um, yes so you're getting tracing paper in here and you're getting a huge amount of tracing paper in here and <laughs> And they're good sized pieces as well, that's the key thing, because your pattern pieces, they are big pieces. Well, I, I, that's absolutely yeah. true, and I, I'll ex when I cut the pattern, I'll explain to you why you need the tracing paper out of it. I can't fold that up, right? <laughs> why you need the tracing paper? It's a bit paper. like a map, isn't it? It's never going to go back into the same as it was before. <laughs> <laughs> but one of the really great ones is this. You've got a three metre tape measure. Three so metres? Three metres. So if you're doing curtains, and you've all, we've all been there, haven't we? We'll measure this and you go, right, put your finger on that one and then that, you run off yes, to the next yeah. bit. Put your finger on that. So you've got a three metre tape measure. So that is just going to last that you, last easy, you, so. last you. And you keep your tape measures forever, don't you? Oh, gosh, yes, yeah. Um, so it was available individually, incidentally, but no longer. The bundle's the only way you can get hold of those. Same goes for those chalk pencils as well. And, of course, you've got your blue for your lighter fabrics, your um, white for your darker fabrics feature in there as well. So, um, And then you've got your needles as well. And these are something that, that people don't think about. I mean, sewing machine needles. Sewing machine needles. I mean, theoretically, and actually I do do this, um, change your needle for every single project. Change your rotary cutter blade, change your needle. Yes. Because um, I, I was actually doing some sewing the other day. Um, prepping for later in the week and my machine had a hissy fit and uh, because his needle was blunt and, and it didn't that, like it. You don't realise how it can affect well, your absolutely. sewing. Absolutely, yeah, you, you don't realise that. Stitches and it, all exactly, sorts. and yeah. you're there thinking, oh, my tension's wrong, my tension's wrong, how's that going to happen? And it's not, it's actually because your needle's blunt. So, and you know, they they just change them, just yep. get a new one and it makes such a difference and just keep your machine happy. Definitely. Um, brilliant bundle, um, very affordable. Fifteen ninety nine. Many of these items are gonna be kind of like a one time purchase because you'll go on and use them over and over again. Things like your pins as you can see there. Other elements in there like your shearing elastic, brilliant when you're looking for different effects with regards to your fabric. But that tape measure I think is a phenomenal idea. Three meters in length very unusual to get hold of those now the details on your screen for your bundle 38843 um, 83 if you're wanting those the um, box that we we're talking about at the bottom of your screen just to let you know that is one of our seven day savers sadly it's one of our outgoing seven day savers which means that at eight o'clock tomorrow morning it will no longer be at that phenomenal price of 11.99 it will go up in price so it means that you'll be paying an extra four pounds on that particular one taking the price up to 19.99 it's worth every single penny of that don't get me wrong but i would certainly rather be paying a four pounds lower price than that higher price so if you're wanting yours 388483 being your item number so of course you've got all the information that you need on the screen there as you can see we're going to talk about patterns in the next few moments so popping the details up on the screen for you straight away so you can see we've got all sorts of different titles with regard to these so you don't have to choose you are going to get all of these so with these you have got your trousers your alice trousers with these you've got your
cassie dress classic styles and look at the sizing of these going from size 8 on some of them right the way through to 20 size 6 to 24 and the beauty is because of the way patterns work you can be an in-betweeny you might be a 16 bus you might be um not a 16 bus a 16 bust <laughs> i need to enunciate better don't i if you're in number 16 bus you probably don't need these patterns to be fair but if you've got a 16 bus a bust and then you've got a 12 inch and uh, a 12 inch waist a 12 size 12 waist then the patterns that go from all these different sizes mean that you can adjust the patterns that's where that tape um the uh, tracing paper comes into place as well so you can see here all of these i mean rosella help me out and get me to wrap around words <laughs> here i'm just enjoying it <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to pop out to the bus stop now. <laughs> I know, 16, number 16 bus. Every 16 bus should have a pair of trousers. Well, they should, and actually, I was wearing those trousers earlier. I've oh, taken okay. them off now. They're actually over there. Um, they were my lockdown trousers, Hayley. Okay. They have walked miles and miles okay. and miles because they are so comfortable and so simple to sew as well. These patterns, if you are a complete beginner, great go for it because actually you're going to be able to stitch these patterns and you're also getting great backup as well from emporia on this yes, you're not yeah. left on your own just find them on facebook and instagram and claire's there to help you and i just love the fact that not only are they really on trend patterns yes. they're they're really useful patterns yes yeah and i think the thing is and i've certainly found this and i'm sure um, many dressmakers out there will resonate with this once you've found a pattern that you can work with that gives you the style that you like you can use them in all sorts of different scenarios different fabrics different results summer um, projects winter projects spring autumn they all come into it but once you've got a pattern that you know is going to give you the right look and fits well then you will go back to it time and time again and it makes life so much easier brilliant set of patterns you can see you've got everything you've got your trousers with these you've got your dresses with these of course you can adapt them as well so if you like the top of that dress and you don't necessarily want to make it as a dress then you can adapt it you can make it into a blouse again with that lovely dress that you've got there if you want it to go down as a maxi dress then you will learn as time goes on how to make these adjustments to these basic patterns but having the patterns there the basic fundamentals again to get you started is key and this is a wonderful set for a very very affordable price two flexi buys on these if you want to go for them all together they are available individually you probably notice them at the bottom of the screen but you won't get that saving you're saving a pound on each one of those but not only that you're saving on your post and packing because of course each one has got a different item number and when you are changing and adding additional items in then you will have more post and packing added on which is why it's best to go for it as a bundle 559-417 if you're wanting to take advantage of those but we've got lots more to share with you again we've been talking about different tools um, and this is something that when you get into dressmaking you're going to need your fusible interfacing this can add body to certain elements of your clothing things like collars cuffs waistbands all of those need reinforcing and this is how you can do it with this fabulous um, interfacing you've got 10 meter bolt there you're saving 10 pounds on this one and you're paying just 19 pounds and 99 pence 612150 now of course we have been talking about um, our one day special those fabulous mannequins and as i say go back to six o'clock you'll be able to learn more about those mannequins but i know rosella wants us to move forward in our dressmaking journey so in this hour we're going to be looking at patterns and how you get started with your patterns so rosella i'm going to let you take over please Thank carry you, on Hayley. okay so i'm going to look at the emporia patterns first um this particular one is the sienna top and it's just lovely isn't it you've got a little tight top there and it's it's just really easy to make you can see exactly sort of where it's heading etc and the great thing about emporia patterns you can see that you've got it in a gusseted envelope so if you are a dressmaker and you you have packets and packets of dressmaking patterns like i do and you can't ever get them back in once you you've cut them so they're theoretically they're smaller than you started <laughs> aren't they? but they don't go back in your packet you can forget that um great thing that, that you've got on this as well is that you've actually got a little booklet saying everything that you need to know so you've got your layout in there as well so your layout and i'm going to go through that now this is where you're going to place your pattern pieces on the fabric depending on how wide your fabric is and all of these pattern pieces are numbered you've got a little glossary of terms there so things like notches what's the seam allowance what what on earth is stitch in the ditch all of that sort of thing is in there you've got stay stitch on there um, then what you've got 
is again a further layout that you might need depending on how wide your fabric is and then you've got full instructions and these are really really comprehensive instructions as well and you can see that actually these instructions were only up to page seven and it's complete so that sort of gives you a bit of an idea then of just how achievable making this top is so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you where we would start on something like this so this one is Sienna and you'll find that on your patterns, let me just take them out. <laughs> it's quite hefty. Good paper though. It's proper paper, yeah. it's not yeah. tissue. So that's really, really important. So you can see then we've got a colour code of what size it is. Now oh, you've got okay. the measurements here as well. So you need to check your measurements. You'll find on patterns, I found these are fairly true to size to our, our UK sizes. Often you'll find patterns and you'll think, okay, so I'm a size 14 and you make a size 14. You think, okay, well, what was the slip of the thing who wore that then? Because it's yeah. never going to fit me in a million years because it's the, si it's the size you need to go for, not not your dress size, your size. So when, and we've measured ourselves, we've all got a note of my sizes. <laughs> and so <laughs> here we go on the packet. So the size that, this is their reference, so it's, let's say a size 12, it's saying we've got a bust measurement there of 39 inches. So actually, if your bust is 40 inches, then you might need to be looking at the 14. Okay. You might get size 12 on a high street, you might wear size 10 on the high street, you might wear say, a size 16. That's not necessarily, all it is is a point of reference. It's not saying, oh, you know, you're, you're a size 10, you're a size 18. It's just a point of reference so that we can actually cut out the pattern to, to suit us. So Hayley, I'm going to just go into the Cassie pattern next. Okay. Um, I, just before I pass over, you mentioned about adapting. This yes. is one of the Cassie patterns. We've okay. got a full length maxi dress there. Ooh, I like that. It's got tears in it. It's, yes. It's, so it's his really, really yeah. on trend. As soon as Franny, who's 23, saw this, she said, Mommy, can I have one of those, please? So yes, you can. You can have this after the weekend. <laughs> um, and behind you, we've got a pink one, which is just the two tears. But it's, you mentioned about just how versatile it is. So you could create a little top with this you could end it here yes. and you could have almost a little peplum top yeah, on there nice. as well you could because we've got a mannequin we could extend that down oh, so we so could like a drop wave. absolutely oh. so very very versatile patterns I love it and of course you can see how over here, different fabrics being used as well and this is the thing that we're talking about depending on the drape the look that you're wanting depends on the fabric that you're going to invest in so this one's a lovely one those gorgeous cotton fabrics that we were talking about earlier on absolutely perfect it would look just like this one, but as uh, Rosella has said there, two tiers on this one. Whereas that gorgeous fabric that's got the drape on it would be absolutely perfect for a maxi dress. Um, again, same pattern, just adapted. And that is the thing. Once you've got the base pattern, you can go on and adapt it over and, all, um, over, and over. If you've ever gone shopping for clothes and you found the perfect dress, but you just wish it was shorter or you wish it was longer, this is where you have the ability and you'll learn the know-how as time goes on. We're not saying that the first dress you're going to make is a, a, a wedding dress with three bridesmaids and two maids of honour. You're not going to take on a challenge like that. You're going to be making a basic garment and learn the fundamentals. And that garment may only have three pieces in it because I'll tell you, I'll let you into a secret. I'm sure Rosella will stick by me with on this one. It's not as complicated as it looks. It doesn't have to be. It can be very, very simple and you'll gain your confidence if you've got the simplicity of a fabulous pattern to help you on your way. Yeah, absolutely. And it's those all important instructions and that backup as well. So yeah. actually, you know, if you're reading this, you think, oh, I've absolutely no idea what that meant. Um, then get in touch. Get in touch with me. Get in touch with Emporia and just put the question to it because actually somebody else will have also wanted to know the answer to that question and we'll tell you the answers. I love it. And now, of course, we are talking about a pack of four fabulous fab um, fabrics, fabulous patterns. No, it's the matter with my teeth today. And these are going to cover kind of all those wardrobe essentials. You've got trousers in there, you've got um, tops in there, you've got dresses, and of course they're all coming to you for a phenomenal price. You can see the fabulous top there, a lovely little summer top there, but that again could be made longer in the body if you wanted to. Um, as time goes on, you will adapt these patterns. Then of course you've got the lovely dress that you can see here, again knee length, but you could make it going right the way down. 
down to um, the ankles. It might be that you prefer the sleeves to be more three-quarters length. Perhaps you don't like the top of your arms. You want to cover them up. Well, you can adjust your dresses, your clothes to suit. And again, another beautiful dress, as you can see with this one, with the tiers again in there. And again, you can add tiers in if you want to. If you're feeling rather sore, you can go even shorter with that one if you wanted to. And then the trousers as well, a very flattering style. And um, they've almost got a flat front to these, but you can see they're very comfortable leisure trousers there. But again, depends on the fabric. Maybe I'm not a big fan of kind of um, the, the cuff type ankles on trousers. But you don't have to. You don't have to run that elastic through there if you don't want to. You can leave them as a more open um, hemline with regards to your trousers. You're making garments that you want and you like. The pattern is a starting point. And as uh, Rosella said there as well, the support with the pattern is key because you're not left on your own. And if you're getting started, of course, that can be a bit of a scary area to be in. So 559-417, two flexi buyers are £27.98 if you're wanting to get hold of these. Now, with regards to these, the dresses especially would look beautiful with these great fabrics. Now, some of these, Rosella, they're, they're a little bit kind of racy with regards to the opacity of them, shall we say. So how do we get around that with a garment? Well, you've got a choice. You can either line it. Um, I'm not a huge fan of lining mm -hmm. things. I often think, especially on a drape, that it, that it takes away a little bit of the swish because yes. we like to swish, don't we? We do. Um, so what I tend to do is it's your foundation wear, which we talked about earlier. Um, <laughs> get yourself a petticoat, basically. Get yourself a skin-coloured petticoat of a length that's going to be suitable. And, you know, if I just... This this is a crepe, so this is a sheer fabric, as you can see. So I'm not meaning a, a petticoat that goes all the way down here. Um, just that covers just the essentials. And actually, I mean, I've got several skirts where the, the underskirt is actually to there. But then it means that the bottom does swish a yeah. little bit and you get a little yeah. bit of a, a see-through on there. And that's really it. nice. And these would be beautiful fabrics to replicate those dresses in. Um, again, we had six options of these. We're down to five now because one of them has sold out. But you can see here, each one of these, you're going to get three metres of fabric, dependent on the choice you make. But £13.97. Now, the pink floor that we've just gone past that particular one as well oh oh this one here sorry the pink and gray one there you go that particular one 60 percent of the stock has gone of that one so if you like the look of that one please be aware that you're going to need to be quick because potentially we could be losing that one as our next sell out um, but to be honest whichever you go for you are investing in beautiful fabrics they are absolutely gorgeous so 473045 if you're wanting to go for any one of those so Rosella, patterns. We've chosen our patterns. So we've we chosen our size. We know our size, and we've cut it out with paper scissors, not our fabric scissors. Um, and so I've got the little bodice top here. Now, the reason that you need tracing paper, can you see this? Now, this is a feature of all of my patterns, and that is where, because I cut out with a rotary cutter, I miss basically. Yes. Um, so it would be really, really useful to trace this off in your size on the tracing paper. What that means then is that actually your pattern will be complete. So when your daughter says, oh, I'd quite like one of those and she's a down here size, then trace one off for her as well. It just means that your pattern's staying pristine mm -hmm. um, and you've got the tracing paper in that bundle anyway. Now, the other thing you'll notice both with the tracing paper and with my pattern is that it's creased up because it comes in a packet. So the first thing you're going to do is you're actually going to iron your pattern. <laughs> so um, whilst, whilst your fabric is being washed, because you do need to pre-wash your fabric, um, the cotton lawn doesn't tend to shrink an awful lot, but you, you never really know how no you... no guarantee. No, that's it. How, yeah. And almost, you know, if you're steaming your fabric whilst you're making your dress, there's every chance that that's going to make your fabric shrink. Mm -hmm. if it's a shrinkable fabric because you're adding moisture to it so wash and dry your fabric to start with um, I think on a lawn they actually quite like a low tumble dryer but I don't use my tumble dryer so there you go so you're gonna you're gonna iron your your pattern I've made this pattern so many times I really have the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna iron that fabric now oh let me talk about this this is an ironing mat um, I don't have an ironing board in my sewing room. I have a table, but it's only this big. But you need a cover on it. What it means is if this is your pattern cutting out table, like mine today, it means that actually you're doing your ironing straight onto the table and it's just really, really useful thing to have. So if you haven't got an ironing mat, consider that. Um, 
So let me just pop that out the I've way. I've got one of those. It's brilliant. It's, it's got one that got magnets in the corners because one of the ones that I've got has got magnets. Oh no, it's, it looks very similar to the one that I've got. Oh. It's a, yeah, it's it's a good kind of spongibility to it. It is, and it's double sided. Yeah. Some I've got one at home that's got cotton on the back side, oh. and which was no good because I ironed it. I put a hole in it. So there you go. <laughs> um, we have got that um, pressing mat or that ironing mat on your screen there, eleven ninety nine. It's brilliant if you're going on your holidays as well, to be honest. You can pack it and do your ironing when you're away. Not that you're going to do your ironing, but you know how things get crumpled. Zero seven six eight eight four if you fancy getting hold of that. Okay, sorry, let's put my iron out of the way. So you're gonna get your fabric home. Now, if you this is the lawn. What I tend to I tend to buy fabric on impulse. I buy yeah. fabric because I love fabric. <laughs> I really love fabric. So I tend to buy three meters okay. because I find that three meters you can make pretty you much can, anything exactly. Yeah. And you've got a bit left over, and you're going to use that for something else, and that's fine. What it does mean, and this isn't even the full three meters, is that actually it's there's quite a lot of this to deal with isn't there so when you're laying it out it's fantastic if you've got a long table that's even longer than this a three meter long table <laughs> but it's not very practical so what i would do is pop a little chair on the end so that you're it's not on the floor and then i've got right sides together here and you'll see on your fabric that you've got your selvage this is how we establish how wide the fabric is and this is where it is on the loom so you'll see that it's at potentially a white line as it is on this side or a series of dots if i show you the back it might be better it's almost like perforation that's right it? and you don't want that in your garment but that's helping you to line up your fabric so that when you cut it out you get any grain line nice and neat so when we buy fabric and there's a fold in it we can't assume that that is the center no, then. not in the slightest and often it's folded maybe wrong sides together and you want it right or there's mm -hmm. vice, vice, vice versa even so what I would do is lay out as much as you're comfortable with. You can say I've got a fold there and that is not in the centre. Um, at home I would iron this flat but it's travelled with me today. so it's. And I suppose also as well you need to be careful because the, the cut line where your fabric's been chopped up that's not necessarily straight either, is it? No, it isn't, and that's really important. With the cotton lawn, you should be able to give it a bit of a, a straighten up yourself. <laughs> she says, have you seen the tablecloth trick that the magicians do? <laughs> and it goes wrong. Well, I'm going to recreate that probably, but if you just cut into your selvage, you should be able to rip down and give yourself more of a straight edge because it's running down. And it on its, its own grain It's quite there. a nervy thing to do because, dare I say it, fabrics of a lesser quality, you can't assume that that grain is going to go straight across. I've done that in the past sometimes. This is what's quality fabric that you've got to make sure you're doing this with. You can go off on the diagonal, oh, can't you? you and you that can be if the fabric has been woven but it's been printed kind of incorrectly so to speak so just be mindful of it but yeah if you've got quality fabric like this then you don't have to worry now we've had a question come through asking about the the was it the navy fabric okay somebody's asking it what was it that you're asking sorry kirsty oh so somebody's thinking about making a dress with vertical rather than horizontal stripes on this one okay let's have a little look at the fabric and we can decide that one for you so with regards to this one your selvage edges actually mean that the fabric itself does run vertically i look like i've got a beach towel here don't i you do actually yes <laughs> so with regards to this one your selvage edges mean that naturally i'm not sure the name of the person that's emailed in but this fabric does naturally go north to south more so than east to west so usually if the fabric was going from selvage to selvage and the stripes are going across then you'd have more of an issue because you're kind of cutting it on the opposite of the grain but with this one you'll be you'll be fine so whoever you are whoever you are who emailed in um and uh, oh how are you spelling the name sorry um harry harry and i do apo i apologize if i have um, mispronunciated you know i probably have to be honest so i do apologize but in answer to your question yes you can you can make those stripes vertical that's going to look amazing actually quite kind of uh, forgiving vertical stripes as well well i think and it's really really stylish because it's not 
total stripe. Yes. So if you've got a natural curve, yeah. then it's going to fit nicely. And I, I was saying to Derek, I think like the little navy jacket is going to nice, look perfect. Yeah, is it yeah. some nude shoes? Definitely. I'm there. Uh, invite me to the wedding. I'm ready. I'm dressed. <laughs> <laughs> and to be honest, sometimes stripes can be a little bit unforgiving when you're working with fabrics because these have got that wave. It's going to let you get away with all sorts of different things. So yeah, good choice. Okay, so, back over to you, Rosella. Yeah, pinning our pattern. So what you might want to do is with your, your pins is actually pin those selvages together. Okay. Just to um, make sure that actually when you're popping your pattern on there that this fabric isn't going to move at all. Probably on the drape I would do that as well because the drape's okay. slightly more tricky because obviously it's going everywhere. Yes. And then what you're going to do is you're going to look at your pattern. So on this particular one, I've got the fold line and that's naturally where my fold is what i've also got on this is i've got the line of the grain so that so that's the um the parallel line on there but what i've also got on here importantly is darts as well so this is the top so we're actually going to do some stitching for darts tomorrow so look out for that if you if you want to, to know that but what a dart does e essentially is it gives form so we're not a 2d person we are a 3d person and so we when we want our fabric to fit us in in bits then we're going to create a dart and they sort of tend to point to the larger parts of your body <laughs> <laughs> and they're, they're going to help you to create that form and that's what's going to make things look really really professional as well is some darts so what you're going to do is you're going to place your pattern piece on there and you're going to pin it in place and you're going to cut it out now one thing to consider on this that's my fold line however look at all this fabric mm. now on your pattern you might find that you've got individual pattern pieces where they none of them want to go on a fold if you've got pieces like that then you can put them there but what Emporia do and I'm just trying to find my layout is they show you exactly where to put here we go where to put your pattern pieces to get the most out of your fabric ah, so, so it's does really this all to depend on the width of your fabric all dependent ah, on the width okay. of your fabric as well and on this now this is the cassie dress that i'm making and looking at these pieces you can see just how easy it is these are skirt ruffles so you've got two of the longer ones front and back you've got two of the middle ones front and back and two of the smaller ones front ah, and back okay. these are your neck facings which is where your interfacing comes in that bolt of interfacing this is the piece we're talking at the moment this is the back piece so that's how you would lay your patterns out okay um, because i'm not going to cut it all out tonight so i'm not going to lay my patterns out like that but pretend i'm doing this one pretend i'm, la I'm laying them all out like that <laughs> no problem at all i've got okay. my imagination going. you've got I've your got imagination so what we would do is we would pin and when you're pinning what you want to do is you want to pin ideally within the selvage if you pin within the body of your fabric and you've got a fine fabric there's a chance you might snag it so when you're pinning it down pin it in what you know is going to be the seam allowance did i say selvage i meant seam allowance sorry okay so on these you've got um, i think it's a one centimeter seam allowance it tells you in the pattern and you're just going to pin around on that seam allowance you're going to make sure it all lines up if you get round and it doesn't line up unpin it it's really important to get the pinning right the cutting right and the rest just comes together love it so there you go yes. following that guide within the pattern it shows you where all those pattern pieces go so um of course um during the course of the hour we're not going to manage to make a garment she's good <laughs> but she's not that good um, and it's one of those things that you kind of do over time you don't want a prize for doing it sooner rather than later it's about getting it right and about following those fi fundamental rules i love the fabric that rosella's chosen it's a brilliant one especially if it's the first time that you've made a garment the reason being is because you haven't got to worry about any pattern matching with regard to this particular fabric that she's working with so that is the key thing if you're getting started with your fabric if i can make a suggestion if you've never stitched before then do consider these fabrics that we've got over here the reason being they're not as slippy and slidey as the three meters although that is brilliant value for money and i'd certainly take advantage of that deal but your first ever gime, um, garment go for your cotton lawn it's incredibly easy to stitch with a small repeated pattern you don't have to worry about lining up and pattern matching 
knitting and it's a, a kind of uh, fabric that um, it's not directional by directional we mean that things are going in a straight direction so imagine arrows all going upwards you need to make sure that each part of that garment has got the arrows going in the same direction with a fabric like this a small repeat very forgiving very easy for you to sew with so if I can make a suggestion to you if you think you were making a garment maybe starting off with a little top then go for a couple of meters of the cotton lawn and you will have these beautiful fabrics that you can work with Rosella I mean is that something that you would yeah, resonate with? Yeah. the cotton yeah. lawn is this is actually cotton lawn beautiful, and you yeah. can see that it drapes this is the Frida pattern just um, one thing I should have mentioned actually we're talking about fitting with a mannequin. We've got one next to us, haven't we? Um, I'm not sure whether that's still... To, no, it's not to my them, size, because actually I'm around. the smaller one. <laughs> would, would you mind swapping me for the smaller one, please? Yeah, I will. I'll <laughs> pop you out. Um, and it is pretty much to my size. Um, it's not wearing... It's Fenella, this. She's not wearing the underwear she was wearing earlier. But... Um, this particular piece, this is the back bodies because I've got the front bodies here. But then what you can do is, sorry, Marcus, come with me. Sorry, <laughs> I'm off. I'm getting all over excited and I'm on my own. But <laughs> There's a lot of moving about on this show. <laughs> there is an awful lot of moving about on this show. And of course, we've got the details back on the screen now because, of course, we're talking about the Millward adjustable dress form. We have sold out of the larger size that we were chatting about, but don't forget, if you are a larger size, maybe you're 16 boarding on 18, then don't worry. As we spoke of, you can add to your form, so you can make it larger, but you can't take it away, which is why, if you are kind of on the cusp of several sizes, then this one is a good one to go for. So yeah, okay, there is just whilst yeah, just whilst we're doing this. So what you can do, we were talking about sort of your design as well, is because you can pin to your mannequin. Oh, okay, right. You can have a look at where each piece is going. So you can see that this is quite a high-waisted dress, and my waist, I was going to tie some ribbon round, is about here. So at this stage, if you think, oh, actually, you know what, I don't really want it to hit there. Mm. What I'd like is a little bit, maybe a 20s style or something with yeah. a slightly lower drop waist. This would be the time to then think, OK, I'm going to add to this. How much am I going to add? OK, I'm going to go down a couple of inches. And then you could then extend this pattern. And, and the way I would do it on this one, because this is such a simple pattern, is add some paper to the bottom. Is it always that way? Do you just add to the length of these? Um, well, you've got to take into consideration things like your hips. Okay. So if it's more fitted, just adding to the length might mean that it goes all the way down there and then goes somewhere down here somewhere and there's a bit of you at the side. So okay. you might want to then extend the hips. Okay. But th at this point, it's where you can sort of lay this on and think, oh, okay, you know, is this what I want? Do I want to be a little bit creative here? So just bear in mind, you've got Fenella here. And Fenella? Okay. Fenella's going to Help because mine's called Doris. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I've got Annie at home. But she changes her name, but this one's Fenella. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so it, it just means that actually, as you're making it, and pattern cutting and your fabric cutting, that's all part of it. It's not all the sewing. Yes. That's not all of it. Yeah. It's all of it is really, really enjoyable. So bear in mind when you're doing it, have a look at it. Perhaps pop your pattern on here. It's easier to see on a 3D form than yeah. flat on the table, isn't so. it? Yeah. yeah. I'm going back again now. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Slowly. Um, and of course you can see obviously with the mannequin as we've been chatting there, you've got all those adjustable dials. Now the adjustable dials mean you can alter it in eleven different areas. And these are quite fundamental because you may be a size fourteen, or so you think you are, but when you start taking your personal measurements as Rosella went through at six o'clock, you might find that you need to alter that mannequin to the right sizing. The neck may need to be a different size, might not be kind of fitting into boxes as patterns often. Uh, may look to do dresses when you're out on the high street you might find in one store that you're size 14 in another store you might be a 12 and then in another store you're actually a size 16 with a mannequin you can actually set it up with your own personal sizes as um, Rosella was saying there where your waist sits in relation to your bust area and all those different elements that you need but it's not just for yours because as Rosella mentioned at the top of the hour you've got markings on there so you can set this up for multiple people so if you are making garments for different people then absolutely perfect you don't need them there every single time and you can see here it's a beautiful mannequin with the dials are very easily adjustable it's going to adjust at the sides as well here so if I just turn this around you can see that you've got your side adjustment 
here. So it means that you can separate these out to get the size. Rosella mentioned taking your measurements across the front. Obviously, when you take your measurements, if you would naturally put that tape measure right the way around, you don't know how much of that is your front measurement and how much is your back measurement. With this, you will take your measurement, as Rosella explained it in the six o'clock show, your front measurement, you will take your back measurement and you will alter that accordingly. Um, and then, of course, you've got your waist that we mentioned you can alter that. You can alter the, your, your hips. And also on this particular mannequin, I don't know if we've touched on this, but you have actually got a hemline adjuster as well. So this is perfect if you're wanting to get a nice, even hem. So around here, I mean, Rosella, this is something that's very useful to have as well, isn't it? It is. Can I, can I quickly show us this? And okay. tomorrow I will put a dress on here and, and I will show it. But yeah, it is. So you're measuring up from the floor. But what I would do is I'd try on a dress that you like the hem of, the okay. length of the hem. That's to, the, to me the easiest thing. So pop your dress on and actually, okay, the, that hem is going to come in here and this is the length or actually I'm going to so adjust it. So slide your fabric into that yes. little area. That's okay. right. And actually, if that's your favourite hem length, then when you're making, because hemming is pretty much the last thing you're going to do, when you're making it, you're going to then adjust the dress that you're making to that exact hem. And what you can do is you can move it round and then you can actually mark on there and you've got the um, the chalk pencils in the dressmakers essential oh, of bundle course, yeah. yeah so you're going to be able to then mark as you go around where your hem should be that's and that's going to be it's so useful yeah, it really yeah. is yeah and I can see we've got that adjuster just a little bit ahead so is that to do with your height that's the height so if we just loosen that now Oh, there we go. She's down. She's down. <laughs> she shrunk a few inches. And then the other thing that's actually inside here, and it's a little dial. Okay. If I just loosen it, can you see that her waist is lengthening? Oh, we see. So, yes, the halfway. Yeah. yeah. Just, we just, so if you are just seeing that now, yes. long, a long waisted then that's fine because actually this is going to adjust to your waistline as well and i know you know i've got a couple of friends who are long waisted and yes. it's so fitting clothes is really difficult yeah. because it, the waist is not on your natural waist so yeah some great features on here it's Hayley. brilliant it really is and it's a fabulous deal it's our one day special got three flexi buys on this one as you can see it's a very affordable way for you to get hold of this one and it's one of those things that once you've invested in it that's it you don't need to buy another one which is going to last you for years and years and the beauty you can adjust it as your size changes over time it certainly does um, you can bring it in you can let it out you can add to it if you want to and that's the beauty of having that form it will replicate your body shape to mean that you are getting absolute perfection when you are working with your fabrics and your dressmaking patterns something else that's going to help you get perfection is having the right tools now this is a fabulous bundle it's been put together with everything that you need in there so here you've got your tracing paper now I know some people don't necessarily like to cut into their patterns to start with what you might do is you might take your pattern and you might think to yourself right okay with the, my measurements my top area I need a size 16 so you'll trace out that pattern to the size 16 it might be that the bottom part of your garment you can do to a size 14 well having the tracing paper there in such a large size as we saw Rosella showing us means that you are pretty much making your own version of that pattern to fit you and that's the thing rather than chopping into your pattern you might want to do it that particular way equally so it might be a case that you're cutting out your pattern and you're wanting to alter it you might need to add on little areas you might need to take little areas away and you can do it that way within this bundle as well you've also got that tape measure now the tape measure is key it's one of those things that we need both in imperial and in metric and you've got both of these you've also got a three meter length and this is brilliant because as Rosella quite rightly said you're not just going to be using your tape measure for your garments you're going to be using it for things like your home decor um, creating curtains all sorts of different pieces even just measuring out your fabric um, needing to know how long that piece of fabric is then this is going to help you do that rather than you kind of doing it in pieces and then moving your tape along and moving it along with this you can go from beginning right the way to end You've got your tracing pencils the Rosello spoke of those with regards to the mannequin and lining up your um, hemline um, an unpicker invaluable because there are going to be times when you can make a seam that you need to undo and everything in here uh, is something that you're going to need you will need them you might not necessarily need them in the first garment that you're making but as time goes on you will need them all and at 15.99 it's a very affordable bundle 388 483 do pop that one into your basket and of course if it's going in the long 
alongside your Rondo special, you can spread the cost of that one too as well. So I'm going to come back over to Rosella. Okay. Time-wise, what have we got time-wise? Because look, I'm looking at the clock. We've not got a huge amount of time. So just under six minutes, Rosella. Well, that's absolutely fine. So I've just been cutting the bodice out so I know that we, are, we can't do a whole dress and I would love to. One of the things that, to me, is really important. So you've got choice. When you're cutting out, you can use dressmaker shears and we've got dressmaker shears on the show. Um, I think we've got the Fiskars ones. Um, you need to keep your dressmaking shears for dressmaking. Don't let anybody use them upon pain of death for anything else at all. If you are going to use scissors, then um, that's absolutely fine. Try and keep a long, straight stroke with your scissors. So not so lots of little chopping. Okay. Nice, long, straight stroke. But then the other thing, and actually this is my preferred method, is a rotary cutter. Um, if, you, if you're using shears, you need to keep your fabric and your scissors as flat to the table as possible. With a rotary cutter, it's naturally flat to the table. You do need a mat, and you need a big mat. So if you don't have a big mat, it means that when you cut in, if you've got, say, you've got a, I don't know, an A3 size mat, it means that you cut in a bit, and then you move in your mat, and then you yeah. cut in a bit more, then you move in your mat, and you cut in a bit more. Get the biggest mat that you possibly can, because then it just means that you're not moving it around. So rotary cutter and mat really important um, just to go back to the rotary cutter this is um, a Fiskars one it's nicely in your hand <laughs> well it, and it's, it's adjustable <laughs> it's, it's a lot of fun you've got a little bo button on the top okay. which means that actually you can turn it oh, okay. yeah I know so that actually then you can see and you can turn it the other way as well oh, wow. so if you're left-handed it means that it might be more comfortable to cut yeah. that way what you can also do is turn it like that. Now that's where you're going to get most oomph on it. Okay. That's a technical term. <laughs> so if you're cutting a really thick fabric, then that's going to be the way that you're going to hold it okay. or w whatever's most comfortable to you. But that's actually, I'm looking at it in front of me um, and you know, that's, that's a fairly comfortable way to cut pull it back take the guard off and then you're good to go and it's good because you're making all of those adjustments without the guard needing to be off the blade because of course the last thing you want to be doing is getting your fingers anywhere near that cutting area absolutely now i've just oh actually it has got a new blade in it uh, so i've just picked this up and i uh, i didn't want to do too much just in case it hadn't um but it has do invest in lots of blades and change your blade for each new project because actually you think you're going to manage, but oh my goodness, it is so frustrating. And then just whilst we're going back to our pattern here, so a couple of the notations on the pattern, you've got little notches within this pattern. And so um, this is really important because this is where you're going to line up um, your pieces. So you've got a little notch there, you've got a little notch there. Now you've got a choice. You could either put a little slit in there. Okay. You could cut out the notch in full. Right. You've got to be really careful that you don't cut into your seam allowance. So make sure that it's not a huge notch because okay. otherwise it's going to go into your seam. Yep. What you could also do is you could mark it. Now this is quite a dark fabric so I'm not sure whether I'd mark this or not. But you need to make sure that all of these areas are marked. Now I'm not sure whether it's the avid seamstress, it may well be the patterns where the notches actually come the other way, which is very practical. Isn't I've it? Seen that. And I've yeah. there's nothing stopping you doing that when you're nothing cutting out the pattern if you want to. That's yeah. right. If you think that actually, you know what, I, I'm I'm gonna do a bit of a scant seam on there because mm -hmm. you know, then do not cut into it. The other really important part of this is the dart and marking the dart. And that's where you do need your chalk pencils. So just go for the one. Um, and I'm just going to mark this dart and then we'll stitch this dart up tomorrow. Wonderful. Now don't forget Rosella's going to be back with us bright and early at 8 o'clock. That's an hour that's dedicated to our one day special again. So we will be featuring the mannequin. Um, so if you wanted to get a hold of yours beforehand, then of course you can do. It's our one day special. Phenomenal deal. And Rosella will be using it throughout. So over the course of the day, we're going to be making a garment. Well, we're going to do, in fact, we, I'll, do, I'll do this tomorrow in, in more detail. We're going to do darts. We're going to do facings. We're going to do gatherings. So things that I think that maybe are not so intuitive. Okay.
fabulous look forward to it um, so yeah make sure that you do kind of record each of those shows um, you can go back and watch on rewind of course but the key thing is your one day special is the main focus of the shows because without that form then it's going to make life so tricky for you to get the perfect measurements um, relating to your garment to make that garment fit you as an individual so the details are on your screen there don't forget we have sold out of the larger size with regards to this one so with this particular one we're looking at sizes 8 through to 16 but there is a certain amount of give with that one as Rosella quite rightly said if you need to add a little bit of padding in certain areas then you can do you can't take the padding away so you wouldn't necessarily want a larger size if you're wanting to make it a little smaller Rosella thank you so thank much you, Hayley. look forward to seeing the shows tomorrow check out your baskets with anything that you've got in there and I will see you the other side of the break see you later So it's nine o'clock and it's our last live craft along course of this week. Um, episode one of your trilogy of how to knit a hat. And then, of course, we're over to our nighttime hours. I'll see you in a moment. Hi, I'm Sarah from White Gecko Craft Lounge. We have a little shop in Dinners Powers, which is between Cardiff and Barry, so right by the seaside. And we were established six years ago. The aims of White Gecko is to really inspire you to start sewing. We'd like to uh, get people crafting and start that sewing process. A lot of patterns and kits are perfect for beginners to use. It's a real wonderful, mindful way to start that journey into sewing. So don't miss the White Gecko shows. Hi, I'm Katrina from Rowan Dean. We're a small family business that design embroidery kits. Embroidery has always been my passion and I'd love to show you how to do some of the stitches and some of the kits. We're based in Derbyshire and I'm really inspired by the landscape and flora of Derbyshire and I think other people will be too. Our kits are really easy and I hope they inspire you to have a go at stitching. great time. Everybody's been really friendly and really good. We've met loads of people all around the country who watch and find it really inspiring. Don't forget to join me on my own Dean shows. Hi, I'm Ali Reeve. I'm from the company Stamps Away. Stamps Away is a family-run company with my husband and I. We create all things crafty, especially with a passion for mixed media. So I hope you won't miss the shows with Stamps Away. Hi, my name's Barbara Gray from Clarity Stamp. And uh, how did I get here? Well, when my children, Grace and Mark, were born, I left the corporate world and I took up crafting full time. If you like my style and you like what I do, then please join me, Barbara Gray. Hello there and welcome back. Well, of course, our live craft alongs are continuing this evening. It's Saturday night and we've got the last of our series that we've been looking at. And this is the first instalment of a three week course. And of course, you may well already be getting involved. You may already have your kit. You may have your needles at the ready for you to create your fabulous hat. But we're going to learn from the lovely Katie. Katie, welcome. Hello. <laughs> now, I have to say, this is a fabulous design. This is your own pattern. Yes, it's my own pattern. I've tried to make it as easy as possible so it's perfect for the beginner. I love it. So I can see I'm looking at these. We've got that kind of ribbed area, so that's one area that we're going to learn. Yeah. Then you've got your main body, we've got pom poms. Fabulous design. Yeah, so we'll, make, we'll work up the hat week on week. So we're going to start with the rib this week. Okay. And then next week we'll move on to the stockinette stitch. And which that's is the, the main, main body that we've got at the top here. Yep. Yeah. 
and then we'll decrease to create the little bit of shaping at the top which is, sounds a lot more scarier than it is but it's really easy and then sewing up and obviously creating my favourite bit which is the pom-pom on yeah, that, top. That's the bit isn't it? That's the bit that we all yeah, want to achieve. Love a pom-pom. Absolutely amazing. Hat. <laughs> now if you've got involved already you can go over to Katie in a little while but let me show you what you will have in your kit. Now I say what you will have in your kit but it might be a case if you're not invested in your kit yet. Now the beauty of the craft alongs is you can get involved even though we've started the course because of course we bring you those fabulous shows on rewind which means you can go back and watch them so you might be watching with a cup of tea or something it's a saturday night so you can uh, have whatever you like to drink and join us but with this one you're going to have everything that you need so you're going to have your yarn beautiful yarn to start with so this is the key thing now i'm looking at this yarn we're looking at double knit yarn with this one katie yes it's dk knit which again i think is perfect for the beginner it's so versatile it's used in a lot of patterns so if you are wanting to then take this further after you've made the hat i think dk is or double knit <laughs> <laughs> okay. it's the way to go and it's a nice one because it's got a reasonable thickness to it so straight away um, I think one of the things with knitting is you want instant gratification you want to see that work grow and because you've got your four millimeter needles in these and your double knit yarn you will see it grow very very quickly so of course you've got your two colors there because of course you've got your two different designs so are we going to choose when we actually get our kit home as to which way we're going to uh, knit these the, the pattern I've designed is for the block hat okay but so in week one? two I'm going to show you if you're feeling a little bit more adventurous in week two how you can then add a striping if you want to or do different colors so it'll be something you'll be able to experiment with more yourself if, I you, love it. if you're feeling confident uh, <laughs> of course you're going to get our confidence it's going to be sky high by the time we're finished now the details are on your screen so if you are joining us from home I would love to know about it so do email in um, and you can be with us for the whole course now it's over three different weeks sadly I'm not going to be here for all three of the weeks so I'll be handing on the craft along baton next week to another presenter who will be getting involved but I'm certainly going to get involved this week so details on your screen if you've not got your kit already then those are the details that you're going to need and of course the beauty is if you've got your kit then you can work alongside us so Katie what do we need to do to get started so we're going to start off with the cast on which is where you're going to start every knitting project you ever do um, so it's going to get our pattern out to begin with now I've tried to make the pattern as simple as possible so if you open your pattern at the start you'll see I'll have written the abbreviations down you'll see abbreviations like this in any knitting pattern so if you're going to move on and do more knitting in the future most patterns have those abbreviations at the top so don't worry if you lose a pattern or you forget it that you get in any pattern then? yes they okay. are they may vary very very slightly but your knit and your purl are the same if you're okay. going to knit a stitch you'll always see a k if you're going to purl a stitch you'll always see a p and that's universal that Fabulous. doesn't ever change so to start off with we're going to take our needles so okay. it's a great place to start and these are nice needles yes i love pony needles they're one of my go-to's um actually these are the first knit needles i ever bought okay. the first ones i ever used were my nana's but the first ones i ever bought were actually Aww these pony ones here which okay. are four millimeter as well which I think is quite nice <laughs> <laughs> anyway so we're going to start off um, obviously with the yarn we're using the Millwood spinning yarn holder as well which okay is a lot of fun wonderful so I'm going to work I've got slightly different colorways to yours so I'm going to start off with my pink is that okay that's fine if you can start off in whatever way you want to start it's completely up to you in the pattern I'm starting off with purple um, just because I like the big contrast purple pom pom so on the top. So I can see you've slipped something onto your needle there. So how have you created that? Yes, I've just <laughs> I've just gone straight like, into it. <laughs> you can't wait to get Relax started. Relax too much. That's the problem. <laughs> Let me start again. Okay. <laughs> just pretend that didn't happen. Okay. Right. So to start off with, I literally just wrap my yarn around my needle and loop it back through, almost just like a little knot. You just oh, okay. literally tying your. Oh, um, that's yarn onto the needle. Okay, right. So Super wrapping simple. it around and then feeding the tail through. Yeah, and then just pulling it tight so it's there on your needle. Lovely. Um, and then we're going to start casting on. In the pattern, it says to cast on 110 stitches. Unfortunately, I don't think we're going to have time that's to cast a lot of on stitches for class all 110 one. stitches. So there's <laughs> going to be some homework. I'm very sorry about that. And when you say cast on, that's for us, we're creating our stitches. Yes. Okay. You're creating the foundation line and then we'll work up from there. So in knitting, you always work from the bottom to the top. Okay. So to start off with, so obviously we've got our first loop on our needle. This will class as our first stitch. 
So with the needle in the left hand, with the stitch on, we're going to take our right hand needle, and I'm very sorry if I get those confused at some point as well, because I'm very bad with my left and my right. <laughs> going to thread your, um, just put your needle behind the first loop or the first stitch. So is it going through the loop that we've just made? No. Or not? It's just sitting behind Just it? sitting okay. behind. Yeah. And then you're just going to wrap the yarn around the right hand needle. So that's the one that's sitting at the back, yeah? Yeah. And then pull it through. Mm -hmm. So you've now got a stitch on each needle. Okay. And then you're just going to take that stitch in your right hand needle and place it on the left hand needle and you've cast on your first stitch. So we now okay. have two stitches. Would you mind if we did that again? Yeah. Just to show, just in case anybody didn't catch that, because uh, it's, it's kind of a, yeah, it's important getting that first stitch yes. going, isn't it? Yeah. Fabulous, okay. You can't, you can't start in until you've ca <laughs> cast it on, unfortunately. <laughs> so, yeah, so we're just going to place our right hand needle behind the stitch okay. on our left hand needle. Got that. And then wrap the yarn round, mm -hmm. and then pull it through. Oh, I got it, yeah. And then place that stitch back on the left hand needle. And okay. that's the first two stitches. Fabulous. Now Thank we you. move on to the next stitch. You, when you're casting on, you always work behind the last stitch on the needles. Okay. So for this next stitch, we're just going to place it in between the first two stitches. Again, completely behind. Yeah. So it's going to that gap that we've got between the exactly, two stitches. Exactly, yeah. Okay, yeah. Not going through the loop quite yet. We'll get onto that in okay. a minute. Okay. And then it's the same again, so you wrap your yarn round. Okay. Oh, yeah. sorry about that, everyone. Just a little bit nervous. <laughs> don't you do brilliantly. Wrap the yarn round. Yeah. Pull it through. Okay. And then slip it onto the needle. Onto so the it's very needle. similar to the first one that we did, but obviously you've got the extra stitch on there and you're going in between. Almost exactly the same. The only difference is you've now got more stitches on your needles. It's like magic. Yes. <laughs> I think so anyway. The magic of knitting. <laughs> so you're going to do the same thing again. So okay. on the third stitch. So you're going to go between number two and number three. Exactly. Wrap the yarn around the right hand needle. Okay. Pull it through. Yeah. And then loop it back on to the left hand needle. So this is quite repetitive. So once you've done the, f I mean, now that we've done four, you kind of get into the swing of it. Exactly. The more you do, the easier it gets as well. People see knitting and they terrified, but as soon as you get started, it's so simple. Now, is there anything that we need to consider about getting it even? I mean, at the moment, mine doesn't look too bad, but I mean, is it something that will naturally form so they'll all sit nice and neatly in a row? Exactly. It will naturally form when we get knitting, and it may be a bit wavy to start off with, but the more you knit the easier it gets and you get a better, you then move on to tensions and things like that and you, okay. that comes with time and it comes with practice. So I'm guessing that once you get started, if you want to, you can kind of unravel it and then do it again if you want exactly. to. Exactly, there's absolutely no harm in taking it all back and starting again. Okay. I think the first piece I ever knitted was, was full of holes and I must have re-knitted it God knows how many times. <laughs> <laughs> so again, so this time we're going between the third and the fourth stitches with our right hand needle. Placing it through, looping the yarn round, pulling it through, and then slipping it back onto the needle. Okie dokie. And then again, but this time between the fourth and the fifth, so you're always going behind that so last stitch on the between, needle. So it's the between, and then the yarns come in round the back, yes. through the middle, and you kind of hook it through. Exactly. So you're going to loop so it round the needle. It pulls it through. Okay. And slip and it back on. on. I always find it helps to do it in little steps as well. So I always go, you're going behind the loop, round the needle, pull it through, slip it on. I'm, I'm chanting to myself now. Yes. So I'm going, I'm going in, yep. round, through, and off. Exactly. Okay. That's good. It's more. In, in, in round, round, through. through. And off. Is that yeah. right? That's that that's right? exactly it. Brilliant. Perfect. Oh, I'll have a, a, a whole cardigan done by the end of the year. I tend to find that sometimes I zone out as well and I just get lost in knitting. <laughs> now, I know you said the pattern needs 110 stitches, but how many are we doing for this session just to get us started? So I'm just going to cast on 20 to start off with, okay. and then you'll be able to see it grow a little bit quicker. Just while you're getting the hang of it, it'll be easier to follow. Okay. And then 
the homework will be to take it back and then do the 110 stitches in the pattern. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go behind that loop again, round the needle, through the loop, and on. I've lost count. I'm going to have to count mine now. Yeah, I do, <laughs> do that all the time. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So I've got to do another four. Oh, you're ahead of me. You're winning there. <laughs> I'm only on twelve. <laughs> so going behind three, and I've lost count again. So the, you count every single stitch, because I know sometimes, I know some of our viewers will have done the crocheted um, craft alongs, and that is slightly different with regards to crochet, because I think the first one, you don't count the first stitch, but with knitting, we count every single loop that was created. Exactly, yes, okay. every loop. I know crochet and knitting are very similar and often confused, but quite different at the same time. Okay, okay. Now, I, um, I'm a, a right-handed knitter, um, and I think Katie is as well. So, yeah. um, do you, have you ever encountered anybody that's left-handed with regards to knitting? No, I actually haven't. It's not okay. something that I've... Have you? Well, I have. And some people will say, oh, watch somebody in a mirror, because it's kind of like the reverse of what we're doing. But I know, although some people are left-handed, they do knit right-handed, because yeah. they've been taught by um, somebody who's right-handed. So, yeah, I suppose it's... There's different ways of doing it, I suppose. Exactly. It's whatever you find most comfortable. So if you find just the process is still exactly the still same. Still in, in, round, through and off, whichever exactly. way you want to do it. Yeah. So yeah. if you find just swapping your needles round and doing it the opposite way, you, okay. you do what? you. Everyone finds a way that works best That's for them. That's a fair point. I'm going to count mine again because I'm not entirely sure I've done And I've done one too many. There we go. <laughs> Don't worry if you have miscounted a little bit, um, it's fine just while you're, you're practicing. But I would make sure that you have an even number, otherwise, the next bit we're going to do will get a little bit confused. Okay. Right, so I'm just um, going to move this. But of course, side. in the pattern, you need 110. Anyway, but if you're a practice piece, you're going to need um, even numbers. Yes. I've, I've got halfway and then I lost count. Otherwise, you're Excuse like. Excuse me a moment. <laughs> you'll turn the rib into moss stitch by accident. <laughs> <laughs> right, I've got 20. Okay. Yeah, me too. Right. Okay. Fabulous. The next bit, the exciting bit. We're going to okay. actually start the knitted piece now. So casting on for me is always my least favourite part. It's always the part that seems to take the longest. But when I get but knitting, you have to concentrate. Yes, <laughs> you have to really count. <laughs> but don't worry if you do get it a bit. If you do get the stitch when you do actually start the pattern, and if you get 108 rather than 110, as long as it's an even number, it's not going to okay. upset your so knitting too much. So that that we've done is our cast on row. It's not row one. Is no, right? this is our cast on. Yeah, our cast on row. Now we're going to start row one. Okay. So obviously we've got our stitches in our left hand needle mm -hmm. told, sorry I told you I'd get those a little bit confused okay. and we always have the, em or the empty needle first and then the work stitches in the right obviously if you're left handed and you're doing it the opposite way it would be the reverse okay so to knit the first stitch um, because it, for this section of the pattern we're going to do a knit one per one okay so in all knitting you have just different combinations of knit and purl everything is a version oh of, so if you can knit and you can purl you've got knit and purl exactly if oh, you can wow. knit and you can purl you can basically knit anything okay because i think people are a bit scared you see complicated patterns but all they are is different combinations of these two stitches okay. which will master during this capital wonderful one. so which one are we going to do first so we're going to do the knit one first okay. as it says because i've got k1 written in the pattern so that means knit one stitch okay so to knit we're going to put our right hand needle through the loop this time so whereas we cast it on we went behind the first stitch yeah this time we're going to go through the first stitch. Oh, right, yeah. Okay. And then the process is almost exactly the same. So okay. this time we wrap it around the needle again. Right. Pull it through. Yeah. And then this is the scary bit. Instead okay. of putting it back on the left hand needle, yeah. we're just going to slip it off. Oh, so you kind of use you, you, well, I'm using my left finger to almost flick it off that left needle. Yeah, you're just okay. pulling. Just be careful. I like to hold on to the, um, the other stitches with my, 
with my finger just so you're not accidentally slipping a stitch oh, yes, that's off a good the point. needle. Okay. Which isn't a problem, we can always go back and fix it, but yeah, just keep those other ones safely on the on the, le the left hand needle. Now, is there any way that we can see that again, um, yeah. Katie? Is that okay? So let's do that again. So the last stitch on the needle, we're going to go through the loop. Okay. Take the yarn around the needle. Yeah. Through the loop, and yeah. then the scary bit, flick it off the needle. Fabulous. So that's a knit stitch. And that's your knit stitch. And then the next one's a purl, so the, the next, next one will be different. Exactly. So for the purl stitch, whereas we're working in the front of the stitch, basically, okay. rather than behind with a knit stitch. Okay. So for this, we're going to have to bring our working yarn, which is at the moment behind the right hand needle. Okay, yeah. We're just going to have to bring that forward. So it's coming like through so. the gap between the two needles the, and, and it's closer to me now. Exactly, okay. yeah. So it's pointing down towards you almost. Okay, yeah. So we're going to place that like that. Mm -hmm. And then this time we're going to go through the front of the loop. So whereas with the knit we went like front to back. Yeah. This one we're going. Oh, so it's crossing them in the opposite. Exactly. Okay, so yeah. you're creating a cross stitch yes. with your needles. Got you. You can see like that. And then the process again is exactly the same. So we're going to wrap the yarn so around the, the needle. The yarn's going between the needles again. Yep. Right. And does it come to the front or does it go to the back? It goes to the back. So you're pushing it backwards. Okay. So you're taking that yarn back to see, and you've created your loop here okay. on your second needle. And then you're just flicking it off. Okay. Could you show us that again? Katie? I think we could manage that. Oh, thank you. I'm just going to do another knit stitch, otherwise I'm going to. We'll only get as start. far as two stitches. Yeah, that's I'll a good point, in. actually. Yes. <laughs> I'll start losing my stitches as well, so it won't look like it's meant to at all. <laughs> okay, so it's, we're doing pearl again. So the, the the yarn is coming forward. Forward. Okay. So it's down. Pointing towards me. Exactly. And then we're going to go through the front of the loop to so create a cross with our needles. Okay, yeah. Like a big X. Yeah. And then take the yarn behind. So it's kind of going through in the opposite direction to the knit stitch, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah, you. Okay, it's, yeah. In theory, it's mm -hmm. exactly the same stitch, just worked in reverse. In reverse, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you're going yeah. behind the needle. And then push it down towards the table and then off. Off. Brilliant. Thank you for that. That's okay. And no, the next stitch we're going to work is a knit stitch. So again, because it's knit one, purl one, so we're going to be knitting one, then purling one right till the end of the row. So we okay. can't, we've completely run out of stitches. So the cross this time, the needle is going to go behind. Yep. So we're going to take the yarn back behind to do our knit stitch. Okay, yeah. And then we're going to take our left hand needle. Yeah. Take it th through, through behind, the loop. Yeah. Round the needle. Yeah. Back up through the loop and off. Off. Brilliant. And then because I'm doing a purl, I'm bringing the yarn through that gap towards me. Yep. Brilliant. Okay. Then creating then them again. Exactly. Back round the needle down towards the floor and off. Okay. So mm. cross behind. Yep. Yarn round the back and through. And then pull the stitch through. And then off. And then bring the yarn towards me. Exactly. Then through the front of through the loop. Through the front. Down through behind. the middle. Pull it through and then off. Exactly. Okay. It's as simple as that. And now you can knit and purl, you can do anything. <laughs> wow. It's amazing to think that those two stitches create all sorts of knitted garments. They are the foundation to everything. I think people look at knitting and they think, oh, it's so scary, it's so difficult, I can't possibly do that. I love it. But as soon as you get started, you realise actually it's, it's quite simple. <laughs> now I'm going to let Katie carry on um, with the end of that uh, that row because I'm guessing we get to the end of the row and we need to come back. So we need to learn about that now. Of course, exactly. we're learning how to create a fabulous hat during this um, craft along. It's um, over three weeks, as you can see. So this week is week one. 
Um, so it's your first class. So if you've never knitted before, then this is brilliant. Um, you've got your kit, the details of which are on your screen. So within your kit, you're going to get everything that you need. You've got your pattern. You've got your two colour balls of yarn, as you can see. It's a double knit yarn, so it's going to work together very, very quickly. Um, you've got your knitting needles, uh, your pony knitting needles. So very, very good quality with regard to your needles. And of course, you've got that all important pattern, and that's the key thing. This is a pattern that Katie has put together um, for us. So thank Thank you so much for that, Katie. And it's one of those ones that Katie, being the author behind the pattern, means that she has got the answer to the questions if you've got them. So if you've got any questions, please do email in studio at um, thecraftstore.com if you want to get involved. If you are crafting alongside us and you're knitting along, how are you getting on? Let us know how you're getting on. How are you getting on over there, Katie? Okay, so I've now reached the end of my row. Okay. Now this is the bit you've got to remember. This is why it's important that you've cast on an even number of stitches because each row, We'll start with a knit stitch and end in a purl stitch. If you've ended in a knit stitch, you've got an odd number of stitches and it's going to throw off the other pattern. So, so it's a good way of checking at this stage that you, you've got an even exactly. number. Exactly. Okay, so the last stitch needs to be a purl. Stitch. The last stitch needs to be a purl stitch. So okay. this time, so now we're going to swap our needles over, just like that. And you'll always know you're working the right side because you can't take it off the other end so it's fine um, so now we're going to start the next row now it's exactly the same as the row before I've tried to make the pattern as easy as I possibly can just to make it that little bit easier for you Okay, so. Katie, one thing I've just noticed, I'm looking at my, my stitches sitting on my left hand needle some of them have got like a little horizontal bar going across ah so this is where can where I just you show you there I've just noticed that the can you see how they like alternate is that because one is a knit and one's a pearl that's exactly it so if you turn your work over you'll see that it's exactly the same the other side oh okay yes yeah, so but it it'll is. be the other stitches got you yes so, so it's like a front and a back stitch exactly ah, so the pearl right side wrong side as we'll discover later on in the pattern um is the back of your stitch is basically the back looking at us and the knit is the front looking oh, at okay. us. It's like a little V isn't it? The, exactly the and the more you get into it you'll learn how to then count you'll be able to count back your rows because each time you see a little V like that that's a new row. Okay. So if you ever get stuck you can always go back and if you count your V's you can count your rows. Perfect. Thank you. So we've slipped um, we've got our needles in the other hands now. So Sorry, I completely lost my words the there. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Um, so we always, the stitches were always, we've just worked, always on the right hand, left hand needle. Okay, so your full needle is the left hand needle. Yes, and the ones you're working is the, the right hand needle. empty needles in the, on the right side. Okay. Sorry, I am very sorry. Not at left, all. Left and right is not my strong suit. Have you done any, any classes like this before on, on TV or, or videos or anything like that? This is my first one. Well, you're doing an absolute <laughs> sterling job, I have to say. You're very good with me. Thank you very much. Nothing like throwing somebody in at the deep end. No. Just, uh, getting them to teach as a class the first time. <laughs> you've done it. You're doing a brilliant job. <laughs> okay, so second row. What do we need to know? So basically we're working the first row again and we're going to keep doing this until we've got 18 rows. Now don't worry if you can't keep track of your rows um, because you can measure as well. It's okay. whatever works best for you. So 18 rows should equate to 6 centimetres. So right. you can then, I've put both in so you can choose which you prefer. How so you prefer. again am I doing knit one and purl one till I get to the end again? Exactly, so it's oh, exactly okay. the same for those 18 rows. So we're going to start with our knit stitch again. So we're just okay. going to place the, yarn, uh, uh, place the needle through that first loop, round the needle, pull it through and slip it off. And then we're going to do the a purl stitch. So we have to bring the yarn forward, go through the front of the loop so we create that X, round the needle, back through the loop and slip it off. And then the same again. So the yarn behind, through the loop to do our knit stitch, round the needle, and off. Forward to do the purl. It's very repetitive, isn't it? Once you get into the swing of it. Exactly. It, it will become almost second nature. It's 
It's very relaxing, I find. It's my, my way so, to switch off at the so end of the day. So who taught you to knit then, Katie? Where so my nana taught Aww. me how to knit. Um, will she be watching? Uh, no, I don't think she will be today. I've not told many people. Oh, bless you. <laughs> oh, well, she'll be incredibly proud of you. I know that much. Oh, yes, yeah, she definitely is. My, my mum definitely is watching now. I know Aww. she'll be very excited. So, so we're just repeating those stitches. Uh, second row. Now, dare I ask, I mean, if you accidentally, I hear the phrase, drop a stitch... So is there anything that we need to know if it doesn't go quite according to plan, Katie? So if you do drop a stitch, so let me let me drop one now. So here, oh, but it's try, when you try and purposefully drop a stitch, it's very difficult. So here I've lost oh, okay, yeah. that stitch now. Oh, I've lost two. There we go. So the one I didn't try and drop is the <laughs> one I dropped. This is always away. So all you have to do is if you just take either of your needles, whichever is easier, I always just pick it up and then place it back on. So if it just falls off, you just need to take the needle. So just hook it back in. And hook it back in. Oh, it's okay. that simple. simple as that. Exactly. And then... Oh, now we've had a lovely email in from Angela, and Angela's um, crafting alongside us, um, <laughs> and she's saying, Evening, ladies. <laughs> You're doing a splendid job. Uh, unfortunately, I'm still trying to cast on. It just looks a mess. Um, we'll keep trying. I think the beauty is, Angela, that you can, because, of course, you've got rewind. So although you might not be at the same point that um, Katie's at during this particular class, doesn't mean that you have to worry, because you can go back and watch on rewind over and over again again that's the key thing of course if you recorded the show as well you do have the opportunity to do that as well so that is the beauty of this um obviously katie's working uh, along there now um i have done a little bit of knitting myself um in the past um so um i don't know whether we it's difficult to go back to casting on once you've done it i suppose with this isn't it it's a bit of a, a tricky one to kind of recap anything well but, we uh, can if we we can recap that's i've got an extra ball of wool so what i can do is i can just Slip this down. Okay. And then well, we've actually got a spare set of needles oh, here, haven't we? That so would maybe be easier than that. Should I pass those down to you, Katie? Okay, okay just so we can help Angela out, because uh, I think if Angela's emailed in, I'm sure she's not going to be the only person. And of course, I mean, I can sit here. I'm quite happy sitting here, merrily doing min minutes and my min pearls <laughs> as we're going. If that's okay, Katie, that's shall not I carry a problem. On? Yeah. And then, um, you can go through that casting on again. Yeah, show so, the yeah. um, just to, to reiterate it, I mean, we're at the halfway point of the show, so it might make sense for us to do that for anybody that has just joined us. We are doing the craft along, and we're starting off with this fabulous um, garment that we're going to be creating, this wonderful hat. And Angela's emailed in. Um, she's joined us. She's actually got her kit. She's ready to go, and she's um, having a go at casting on. And I think it's important because... I'm, I'm used to knitting, so when I'm seeing Katie doing this, I kind of almost know where I'm going with this. But if you are completely new, then I think it's a good idea if we do revisit that and get started again. So if you don't mind, Katie, No, not a problem. And practice does make perfect. So if you're not getting it this time, if you just practice throughout the week, you'll soon, soon pick it up. Okay. So I've got my handy spare set of needles. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just going to create a loop again, almost like a little slip knot, like that place it on my needle and then just pull it tight so it's not going to slip off so easy. And then to do the cast on, we're just going to take our needle oh, without the stitch on, place it behind the loop, just move that to this side, sorry. Take our yarn round the needle Pull it through so we have a stitch on both needles now and then we're just going to take the stitch and slip it back on the needle. And this time we're going to work between, you always work between the last stitch on your needles. So, so the last one you've created. Exactly, right, so we're working okay. between the first and the second this time to create our third stitch. So you go behind the loop, round the needle, through and slip it back on. So we're going to go this time between the second and the third. Behind the loop, so you can see that I'm in between the second and the third stitch. Take our yarn, take it round the needle, pull it through, 
and then slip it back on. Okay, and then between the third and the fourth, behind the loop, round the needle, through, so we've got, and then slip it back onto that needle. So we've now cast on five stitches. So I'm just going to show you that again. Behind the loop, round the needle, through the loop, and slip it onto the needle. And as you see there, it, it's kind of a very repetitive, isn't it? Once you do a few of them, um, hopefully, Angela, hopefully that's helping you with regards to this one. Um, if you are able to email back in, Angela, if we've helped you with that, then by all means, please do so. But I think as Katie said there, just persevere. That's the key thing, isn't it? Just keep going. Don't give up. Exactly. It's, it's never perfect first time. <laughs> it just takes a little bit of practice. And it's kind of the ultimate in recycling knitting, really, because you can unravel it and start again. Exactly. You? There is many half a finished project that I've unraveled <laughs> and knitted <laughs> into something else. <laughs> And of course, what we're doing here, we're creating the rib being the, the fa kind of first part of um, the hat. And uh, you were saying about our homework being to cast on 110 stitches yep. as per the pattern and, and to do that rib. Exactly. So I've got the finished, what you will have by the air, by hopefully by next Saturday, if you've done your homework, um, is your rib knitted. So this is one I did earlier. Are you... you your stitches will gather up a bit on the needles, but that's fine, don't worry. But you will have your 18 rows or 6 centimetres of rib. And it, it should hopefully look like that. That looks fabulous. Now, I don't know if the, this family name rings anything to you. The Burns family? Yes. <laughs> OK, well, the Burns family. I don't know whether I should read this out, really, because you're probably going to go all nervous. That, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, but um, we've got a lovely email. Um, Evening, ladies. Loving this craft along. You're doing great, Katie, with an exclamation mark. Isn't she just? She's doing an amazing <laughs> job. That's lovely. That's my, my fiance's. Oh, <laughs> fabulous. Oh, you're going to make me cry. <laughs> oh, no. You are. You, I mean, this is brilliant because um, Katie's very much involved with us here at the craft store, and the, the, you put this show together and this, this project yes. um, for anybody who's wanting to learn knitting. And this is something that I hear from people say over and over that they'd love to learn how to knit. So I hope we've got lots of people that have got involved with this particular one. That, that's what means a lot. It's nice to see people knitting. I'm obsessive about knitting i do it all the time <laughs> and so it's always lovely to get other people into the craft that you Very love so much, much. So it means so Very much to you can i show you my rib can i show you my rib that i've been doing now i know um, obviously katie's showing you on her uh, knitting needles the, the actual rib that she's done for the the garment but here you go this is my little piece my 20 stitches so you can see there it gives you the opportunity to try it out that is the beauty of this and this is creating that rib but if i bring the hat in just so as i can show you so what we're doing is creating this piece here so the rib part of the garment what what's the reason for having that rib there so rib, as you'll see when you start knitting it, it has that bit of stretch. So it, it helps to take in the hat, basically, and okay. keep it on your head. It gives you that extra bit of security, whereas the stockinette stitch you'll discover um, is a lot flatter. It doesn't have that stretch. It's almost like you're making knitted fabric with that part, isn't it? Yeah. That's exactly it, It's almost yeah. like elasticated that bit, the way that the rib works. That, that's exactly it. You're almost creating the elasticated part of... The garment yeah. without wearing sewing you'd put a strip of elastic in yes, there yes yeah here we we sort of, we knit, make knit it into the fabric <laughs> i love it such a brilliant way of doing it um but of course the beauty is that you can just literally take the knitting needle out unravel it and start again if you're wanting to um angela thank you so much angela's emailed back in she says i think i've got it now oh brilliant so <laughs> it is literally for anybody that like angela you've been watching and it, it all looks fingers and thumbs and you can't quite get it Please do not beat yourself up about it. There'll be a lot of people that will have had go at knitting previously and struggled with it. But it's perseverance. That's the key thing. But take that knitting needle out, unravel that yarn, cast those stitches on again. Even if it's only 10 stitches that you're putting on, just to get to grips with the casting on and your knit and your purl, then do that. And then you, as time goes on, you'll be able to do your 110 that you're going to need for your garment as well. So how are you getting on over there? Because, of course, we're doing the casting on, but it's knit and purl that we need to know after this, isn't it? Yes. So let's go back to the knit and purl again. Let's recap that. With my, I'm getting all tangled up. I'm this sorry, is what I'm happens. Making you jump backwards and forwards. If you it's like been at home. It's nice. <laughs> if you get through this hour, Katie, you can take on anything. Honestly. Exactly. <laughs> oh. 
Okay, so we're going back to, you see I've got my, my first two rows here of ribs, so I'm going to go back in. So, so if you've put this down and you've gone and done dinner or you, you've answered the doorbell or taken a phone call, how do you know which stitch to start with? How do you know whether it's a knit or a pearl? Um, cause you, so basically, as you'll see here, you have what you were saying earlier about your little V and then the little almost like line or bump. Oh, the little bar going, oh, of course, so yes, yes. if you see a V... Mm -hmm. that's a knit stitch yep. if you see a bar that's a pearl stitch right so if you get halfway through and like say you've completely forgotten where you've gone you'll be able to see because all your v's should line up in a row and all your little bumps should line up and you do in a get row that as well. that's kind of like where you've got your rib isn't it because you've got them all all like little columns exactly i can show you what if you ha do get them muddled i can show you what it would look like if oh, okay. you think that would be Thank helpful you. So if you do get them muddled, um, it will look more what we call moss stitch. So I'll just do a, a, a little bit here so you can see. Because I think sometimes it's helpful to see what it looks like when it is wrong as, as well as what it looks like when it is right. Could you also show us how to kind of undo it? So if you do do it wrong, like you're showing us now, yes. how you can get back to the, the position where you're getting it right. Yeah, so I'll just do Thank a few you. stitches here. I mean, obviously, if you like the moss stitch and you want to keep it, that, that's perfectly fine. Um, so your moss stitch, or I think some people call it seed stitch. Am I right oh, in I thinking? I don't know. I don't know. It's I could have completely made stitch. that up. I know I always refer to it as moss stitch. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So here you'll see that you've got a V and then a bump and then a bump and then a V. So you're almost putting them off. Like they're, they're off put, if that makes sense. Um, or oh, misaligned, that was the word I was looking for. Go. So you'll see straight away if it's gone wrong, as you see here, it, it yeah, just doesn't look quite not, right. You've not got your little columns there. Yeah. Exactly. It looks a lot, when you're doing uni rib right, it looks a lot more uniformed. So to take it back, you look for that. So you can see here, this is on a new loop, on new stitch, and this is the stitch on the row below. So you'll just take your needle. Okay. And Oh, so that's like the row below, the, yes, the stitch below it, right? Exactly, you're threading it through the loop below, and then if you take this needle out... You're kind of doing it in reverse now, isn't it? Like the it, rewind button. <laughs> exactly, it's exactly like that. And then you just take it through and pull and it through. Just, brilliant, thank you. So it's so easy. And again, don't. this is why it's good to practice on a little bit as well. Because if it does go a bit wrong, you're not having to take back all your knitting to start again. You've, you can sort of master it before you mm -hmm. venture into the... And the yarn that we're knitting with, it's a lovely yarn. So uh, I'm guessing that because of it, uh, I mean, it's an acrylic-based yarn, so it's, uh, it's going to have that durability. So if you do need to yes. knit and undo it, you don't have to worry. Exactly. Or if, if you need to wash it as well. I'm always very careful when washing knits. I like to place, I, I'll put them in the washing machine, but I like to place them in like a pillowcase or something. Okay. Just because it's handmade, you just want to protect it that, that little bit more. But because it's acrylic, you don't have to worry so much about it. Baby shrinking baby into baby. a making an adult's garment into a baby garment <laughs> <laughs> i've done that before now. Yeah. <laughs> so again carrying on with your knits and your pearls so this week we're learning how to do the rib is it next week we're going to be learning about doing the main body of the hat exactly so next week will be what we call stockingette stitch which is the main body and it gives you that whereas here we've got a bit of texture in our knitting next week you get that flat that flat knitting that you see in a lot of garments, which is what we call stockinette stitch. So we're, we're learning quite a lot this week. I mean, we've learned two stitches. Well, we've learned how to cast on. We've learned how to do a knit stitch and a purl stitch. So I'm guessing that once we've kind of cracked this, as you said before, those are the, the basic ingredients of knitting, your knit stitch and your purl stitch. So everything else is going to be easy when we get to it. Exactly. I think actually this rib stitch, obviously you have to start with the rib, otherwise your hat would look a, a little bit backwards. You're baggy around your head. Yes, <laughs> so it wouldn't quite fit right. It's actually quite a complicated place, I think, to start. But like so you say, it's where you've got to start, yeah. Exactly. If you can master this, then knitting up the rest of the hat will be easy. Get the difficult bit out of the way first. <laughs> That's a good idea. And it's working as well. So again, now you're doing so the thread to the front, sorry, the yarn to the front. So that's a pearl. Yeah. 
Okay, so a knit again, let's just see in case anybody's joined us. So we're going in from the front to the back with the cross, bringing the yarn through the middle and then hooking it through. And slipping it off, yeah. Okay. So bringing the yarn forward again. And this is your pearl. Through the loop, which we can see because we've got that little bump in front of us. Oh, yes. Looping the yarn round, behind and off. So, so once you start doing a, a couple of rows, you can start kind of start seeing it settle down. Exactly. You can see it coming together quite quickly as well. Like as soon as you've done a couple of rows, you'll be able to see it instantly if you are going a little bit wrong, because the pattern be almost becomes clearer. So I'm doing my pearl stitch. So I'm coming to the front through the loop round, down and off, behind, through the loop, off. So when we get to the point where we're following the pattern, we can just see the pattern in the backdrop there where you've got your 110 stitches that you're casting on. So we do you knit the pearl, you knit your pearl. Is there a specific number of rows that we have to do or do we do it to, so as it measures a certain thickness? Yeah, so um, you can do either. So okay. I put both, because um, I know it's sometimes when you first start knitting, it can sometimes be difficult to keep count of your stitches as well. So I've put 18 rows or if you lose track of what row number you are on, you can just measure it quickly and it should be six centimetres and that way you don't have to then take it back because you think, oh, then you can't remember what number yes. you were on. Yeah, because yeah, that's the. I know we've got additional bits and pieces that you can get on the website, things like yes. stitch um, row counters and things like that. And when you're talking about measuring it, it being six, um, six centimetres, so that's going from your cast on stitch, so that's your edge. Yes. Where do we measure to with that? So I'll show you on this piece I completed earlier. Okay. So we've got our yarn flat there in front of us. Um, I tend to use a tape measure, but any a ruler or anything will do. Um, so I take it, obviously, to this cast-on row here, so literally right where the, the knitting ends, to just below those loops on the needle. Oh, so it's the bottom, so it's where the little bars are. You exactly. Right. So if, you, okay. if it's easy for you, if you line it up with one of those pearl stitches, which is your handy little bar oh, your there, little bar going across, yes. and then measure it down and then you'll know exactly how many. And will that vary from person to person? I mean, it, it, obviously when we're looking at this, it might, I mean, I'm not, I'm not sure, I haven't been counting my rows here, but say if it works out at say, I don't know, 20 rows for one person, will it always be 20 rows? No, tension will vary between, um, between person to person. I found when I first started knitting, I did tend to knit a little tighter. Okay. Um, and it's got looser with more practice. That's not a problem. So that's how tight you're holding everything together or exactly. how loose it is, right. So okay. if you find when you've got your, your finished piece and it's a, a bit too small, it feels a bit too tight, mm -hmm. you can you could knit it again on larger needles, which okay. will give you a loose attention. So it makes your stitch bigger. Exactly. Right. Or if it's too big, you can take a smaller pair of needles to, which will help make your loops a little bit smaller. So I suppose that's more important if you're going onto a garment or exactly. something like that. Exactly. something like a hat, then I'm guessing it's, it's not so fundamental. No, exactly. And that's again why I've chosen a hat, because it, it doesn't matter too much if it's a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller. If you are finding it is too big, then when you can, there's plenty of yarn to knit another one. Or you could grow your hair. Ex oh, exactly. That's it. Grow, grow your hair. hair. Or shave <laughs> your head if it's too tight. This is very simple. <laughs> And again, I mean, it's, it's such a, a, a kind of thing. I mean, I'm sitting here and, and I'm thinking about knitting, and literally all you need is your yarn and your knitting needles and a pattern. But uh, that's it. Exactly. It's so easy to take with you, to, to do anywhere, sit on the sofa. It's, that's why I like knitting so much, because it is so versatile. Exactly. And you've been such a brilliant teacher um, during this hour, I have to say. Can I just ask again? Um, <coughs> well, excuse me, a little tickle there. Um, if you drop a stitch um, or you notice you made a mistake, can we, can we perhaps go back and look at what happens if you drop a stitch and how you pick yeah. it back up again? No worries. So if I, you watch me drop too many off more than I intended now. <laughs> yeah. So if I'm just 
say I've just dropped that last stitch off there, you'll see that my loop is just hanging here. I've actually, no, I've only dropped the one. Um, you just take either one of your needles and just pick it up again. And then here, you'll know um, if it's unworked, your yarn will be... You can see the, the working yarn is in the wrong place. Exactly. Yeah. So then you'll know that you just need to slip it back on. Right. Got you. And then you'll be able to knit that stitch again. So it's yeah. easy enough to pick it back up, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's so easy. And the thing is as well, if you're just getting started, I mean, don't be in too much of a hurry to, to kind of do your rib ready for next week. Don't worry if you haven't got your rib all together for when we're doing the class next week. You can go back and watch the show. Of course, on Rewind, you've got months that you can go back and watch these. So just get comfortable, I think, with the stitches. That's the key thing. So if you have to do your, your 20 stitches and you, you're doing your rows and it all looks as if it's gone a bit awry, then undo it. Unravel it. Um, start again. Start at your cast on. And then just do, your, again, your 20 stitches or your, uh, your 10 stitches, potentially, just to try and form those stitches and see that pattern go. I think that's the thing. Don't expect to cre create your hat straight away. It's going to be a bit of a learning curve. That's the thing with knitting as well. It does take time. It's, yes. It is a slow process because, unlike when you're sewing, you're 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 making the fabric. You are, yeah, indeed, yeah. yeah. So it does take time, and it's it's a labour of love. I think I, I I like thinking that a piece of yarn can be made into an object. This is I it. find that it's, quite amazing. It is. You literally, as you say, you're weaving the fabric, aren't yeah. you? You're making it yourself, which uh, is quite an achievement because you could take that same ball of yarn, give it to somebody else, and they could make something completely different with the same ball of yarn, exactly. which is yeah, quite amazing. I love it. Now, I know lots of you have been watching and you've been enjoying the show. We've had loads of emails, and we're going to share some of those emails with the lovely Katie as well. We're not going to give them to her now because we, she's... We don't want to make her too nervous. <laughs> she's doing a fabulous job. It's the first time that she's ever bought us a craft along. First time on air to boost as well. So, I mean, that's nerve-wracking enough as it is. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think that she's doing an absolutely brilliant job. So, uh, thank you for joining us uh, during this craft along. Don't forget, Class 2 will be this time next week on Saturday night. So, make sure you do tune in for that one. Um, now, we have had a little email. So, let's have a little look. Um, this has come from, where am I? Diane. Um, I see when you purl you pass your yarn clockwise I do mine anti-clockwise does it matter and is there a reason for going clockwise oh but think about that now um no I, I don't think it makes any difference you're just creating it's whatever is more most comfortable for you um, it's not something I, I tend to just do it automatically. So if I go I the think other I way, I do mine actually um, anti-clockwise. I'm just I'm just looking now at doing it because yeah. I was copying you to start with, but I did notice I did notice what Diane was referring to, and I think it is it is personal preference. So I think um, both of them form the stitch. To be honest, it just yeah. So That's the crucial bit is just forming the stitch. So I think either way you're you're looping it round. So you're doing a purl stitch there, aren't you? Yes. Yeah. And I, I'm, say, I'm looking at the way that I'm doing mine, and I, I'm doing mine anti-clockwise, which but it's still making a, a, a pearl stitch, still working the same way. Yeah, that's so, not something yeah. I'd ever thought of before, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I think in answer to your question, Diane, no, it doesn't make a difference. It doesn't make a difference at all. So uh, yeah, um, whichever you feel comfortable with, I suppose. But yeah, I've just noticed that I'm, I'm doing mine automatically, and I'm doing mine in the same way. So I don't know whether. Um, I haven't got a camera over the top, but yeah, it is a case that I'm doing it exactly the same. So if I turn it around this way, hopefully, this is, I think this is what you're referring to. So when you bring your yarn to the front, like so, you're going through um, and then um, bringing it round anti-clockwise like that and pulling it through. Whereas Katie is taking hers in and doing it that way. So it's still forming that bar. It just, it doesn't really matter which way around it goes, to be honest. But well spotted, I have to say. I haven't even noticed. Yeah, it's quite fascinating as well, actually. It's not, it's not because you get in such a rhythm with doing it. You yeah, don't it's think. It's kind of re repetitive. Like, yeah. It probably all starts with whoever taught you in the first place, exactly. I suppose, isn't it? I think we were having a conversation before the show started it because there's quite a few different ways of casting on as well, isn't yes. there? I do like your your method though because it's a nice even cast on. Yeah, that was always the way my, my nana taught me to, oh. to cast on. <laughs> well, she did a so very good job. <laughs> yes. She did a very good job, I have to say. I love it. 
knit, purl, knit, purl, keep going. And that's the beauty of this one. It's quite a repetitive nature. And I know that so many people um, do take pleasure from knitting. I mean, whether it's knitting garments or whether it's knitting blankets or whichever way or whatever you're creating. You're creating it, as we spoke of earlier on, with regards to um, yarn. You're taking a ball of yarn. And can I just mention as well, I think this is the, the best invention ever. I've not worked with one of these before. I'm going to move all these, this pile of emails we've got. I've got loads of emails here, I have to say. It's brilliant. This is ingenious. This yarn spinner, I've not come across this before. No, this was um, something we added a while ago to shows, and it makes it so much easier. You don't have to worry about your yarn rolling around the floor, and it's really satisfying as well, actually, it the way brilliant. it pulls off. Um, and it, it, I mean, if you've got a cat or anything like that, sometimes knitting can be a little bit of a, um, an issue because they like playing with the, the, the yeah. border. But I think this is brilliant. And it doesn't twist either when you're bringing your yarn off. Um, it, it kind of follows that flow, as you can see there. Absolutely love it. Brilliant. Now, if you do want to get hold of one of these, incidentally, the details are on your screen. They're £10.49. Um, we've been doing the craft one during this hour. We've only got about five minutes left. Can you big leave that, Katie? No. <laughs> <laughs> I told you to go quickly. It is, is there anything by... else that you wanted to cover um, before we, we kind of get to the end of the show? Because, of course, we were talking about homework and catting on our 110 stitches. But is there anything else that we need to do? or you wanted to share with us? Uh, no, I think by this point, hopefully we've got, we understand the difference between the knit and the purl and we can knit, purl and cast on. So just by next week, so we can move on to the next section and then we'll be working on the hat. Um, you create your knit section, which can either be 18 rows or six centimetres long. And just remember that each row, you should be starting on a knit row, mm -hmm. a knit stitch, sorry, and a purl stitch each row. So if you get to the end of the row and you've got an, yeah, last stitch is a knit stitch, then you've not got enough stitches. And you can see there with Katie's piece of work there, they're all neatly lined up. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean yours will be all exactly the same tension or the right tension. If you're just getting started, you might find that they are different sizes. But you can quite clearly see where you've got those stitches in vertical columns as you work your way along. That's the thing that you're trying to achieve with your rib stitch there. And that's where you've got your knit stitch and your purl stitch. And as Katie said, according to your pattern, you need 110 of those stitches. And you're going to work your rib until you've got about six, seven, centimetres worth of um, stitches um, going from your raw edge to the base of your um, stitch that's sitting on your knitting needle basically so uh, then you're ready for stage two which will be next week next uh, uh, Saturday night at nine o'clock now if you have been watching us and thinking oh what wish I'd got involved well don't worry you can do the details are on your screen for your kit now if you are getting involved at this stage you'll need those item numbers that's up on the screen there you're going to need your two balls of yarn which are included within your kit you're going to get your pattern in there and you are going to get your knitting needles as well. 337959, that's the all important item number. It's a brilliant value bundle. You're only paying £7 for this. And that is more than, uh, I mean, you'd be paying double that because you've got your yarn, you've got your knitting needles in there. I don't know how we've managed to do it for this price. But of course, we've got the lovely Katie joining us, giving you that live tuition for each of those three weeks, starting with this week's. Um, Katie, I have to say thank you so much. You've been absolutely amazing. You really have. No, thank you. I've had a I great time. <laughs> <laughs> Should I do it again? Well, I can't do it next week. No. But um, would you like to come back and join yeah, us? Yeah, I think week? I'll be here next Saturday. <laughs> I don't know who we've got joining you next week. I'm not sure how the schedule pans out, but uh, I'll be patting on my knitting yeah. um, to whoever's going to be joining us. Now, I have to say, we've had some lovely emails in, and of course, we were chatting about um, viewers, and I have to say, I need to go back to one of these um, emails here. So, um, and uh, I haven't read this one out, and it says, um, hello, I can confirm that the Barber family are watching. They're at home watching and knitting along, and I think we've got some evidence of this as well. Oh, we can't show you because we need a signed, a signed authority, but we oh, will no. share the picture with you <laughs> afterwards, of course, I forgot about that. We have to get you to sign all sorts of things, because you could basically sue us if we show you photograph and you haven't given us authority, so there we go, we can't afford it, but we will pass it on, so thank you to your family for watching, I have to say. 
Thank you. And, and thank you, Katie. You've been absolutely brilliant. Now, during this hour, obviously, we've been talking about the kits, but we've been talking about some additional bits and pieces. Now, you may be a seasoned knitter, and these are going to be things that are going to be very useful to you. I love that spinning yarn holder that you can see there. That is something worth them getting hold of. Um, and then, of course, you have got all the different pieces that you can see there. You've got, obviously, things like your, your um, needles, which we've been talking about. You're also going to have your pom-pom maker, which, of course, you can take advantage of if you're wanting to. And the beauty is they are all there ready for you to add into your basket. You can even add them in alongside your craft along kit if you're wanting to. That is the beauty. You can get everything together. Now, if you are a seasoned knitter and you want inspiration, we've got some fabulous patterns there, as you can see. Um, some wonderful books as well to help you. So if you've been watching and you maybe can already knit and you want a little bit more of a, something to get your teeth stuck into, then we've got some fabulous projects there, as you can see. And I think it's the passion that will get you through your project. That's the key thing if you like the look of something then it's um, that passion that will get you right the way through and i have to say katie you have inspired so many people to get involved with this one so thank you again i'm so glad thank you for having me <laughs> <laughs> now we're going to be saying goodbye to you in the next few seconds i can't believe where that arrow has gone of course you kit the details are on your screen there you're going to get your two balls of double knit yarn you're going to get your knitting needles and of course you're going to get your pattern so if you've not got involved during this week then why not get hold of the kit you can catch up on rewind and then you can join us next week at nine o'clock for the next stage. Hope you do. I'll see you soon. So we're going over to our nighttime repeats now, starting with the one day special. Then we're looking at repeats of All and Create, Pink Pig Journaling, and then we're back with you live tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. See you tomorrow. Did you know you can watch The Craft Store 24 hours a day, seven days a week, using the Craft Store app on your Amazon Fire Stick for free? Just